Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Critical Role. I know we missed you guys last week. We had crazy E3 coverage, and the stream was fantastic in getting all that to you and to me because I couldn't be there. So, uh, so thank you to the stream team for uh, making all that happen last week. But we return, nevertheless, to the wondrous realm of Exandria and the uh, the adventures that happen in this wonderful world of Critical Role. And it's been a week. <laughs> a little crazed right now, so be prepared for Crazy Mercer today. Yeah, Crazy Mercer. Uh, yeah. What could possibly go wrong? All right, so um, so uh, before we get started here, a couple few uh, few quick things, cool things. Um, first off, guys, uh, our first winner for our, our subscriber giveaway is uh, Val Ninsen. Congratulations. Val yeah. uh, Congratulations. You're, you're going to win a, a signed player's handbook and a signed cast photo, so congrats to you. And we'll be giving those away for every 50 subscribers we get throughout the show tonight. So uh, remember, in order to be part of these giveaways, you have to be active in the chat room. So, uh, so every 50 subscribers, at 3750 will be our next one, and every 50 thereafter. So we'll be giving away signed player's handbooks and signed photos of the cast. Um, also, um, Facebook initiative we're putting out there now. Uh, for all you guys out there could, go to the... Uh, Hello, Sam. Hi. <laughs> Uh, if, you, if you have an opportunity, go to the Geek and Sundry Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash geek and sundry, and um, share on there both uh, hashtag critical role and a reason why you think people should watch the show. And uh, we'll be doing uh, a giveaway for all the folks that do that, so that'll include the signed player's handbook, a signed photo, and this fantastic D&D Attack Wing Green Dragon expansion pack, which is just a cool looking mini in general. Uh, well, too bad. They're going to get it. You guys, one of you magical people are going to get this. So uh, so go to the Facebook of Geek and Sundry, share your best reasoning to the world on there why people should check us out, and uh, maybe you'll win that. It should be cool. Uh, also, as a heads up, um, let's see, we have a new shirt up. I'm sure you've seen uh, a fantastic new Critical Role shirt. It's only a two-week limited run again. Uh, this was designed by one of our awesome fans, Matt Abernathy. Well done, Yay! and thank you. Matt uh, Abernathy. Did I say it right? You did. I believe so. If not, yes. you're welcome Thanks, to get angry Matt. at us on the internet. Um, but that just went up. It has our little awesome uh, eight Is there bit. a time limit on those, Matt? Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks? Bit. You mean the people two out there have only weeks. two weeks to get this t-shirt? <laughs> this is true. Weeks. Tell me this. Is it, a, is it made of fine material? Is it a handcrafted t-shirt? The finest. If there were a t-shirt to gird your loins with, this is the one to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you heard the yeah. man. Two weeks is ticking now. Gird, it's gird slightly loins. less. And to be fair, girding your loins does actually involve cloth. Look it up on Google. It's an interesting process. I yes. think more people could do it. It helps area the <laughs> Anyway. Anyway. Um, <laughs> And last thing, there's a, a, a cool uh, RPG app game that launched today called Soul Hunters uh, uh, on app stores, or iOS and Android, I think, uh, that I did some voiceover for. Uh, a few of the characters in the game. It's, it's a fun project, you should check it out. It just launched today, but uh, for the next 24 hours, anyone who downloads the game and puts in the promo code Critical Role will get uh, a free champion that I voiced, uh, an awesome tank fellow uh, who's a lot of fun. So That's awesome. Go check that out. And uh, get a free tank. And also, for every 10 subs, we have 10 key giveaways for the game uh, that are, I think it's upwards close to $100 worth of in game uh, giveaway material and, and free money and, and, and stuff in the actual app itself. So, every 10 subscribers will be putting out a special key to that winner for use in the Soul Hunters game. So, check that out. Good times. Um, uh, and yeah. Wait, uh, uh, Marisha, say thank you for that thing. Thank you to. Whomever got us this amazing, <gasps> super cool looking bottle of scotch. What? What? I know, what? man. What? Check it's that magic. out. It's Who Torres. Is this from? Torres Brandy. Yeah. Is that wait, for wait, me? There was a card on the box. Oh, there was yeah. a card on the box. The, that we, would be over there somewhere. We sort of wanted it now, so we sort of jumped the gun. Where's the card I in the box? I blame Sam. I it threw the card me. on the floor and took the scotch. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you you guys, there was a card with stuff on there. Oh, oh it's, it's, oh, nice. it's Oh, sorry. Do it mine. Go ahead. Hi, Geek and Sundry crew. Uh, this pack with. Ugh. So while this package is actually mainly for the Critical Role cast, I hope that they share it with you guys too. Well, oh, that's oh, not gonna I happen. I guess that means these guys. Well, uh, oh, it's my small, small way of thanking you for my all your hard work. Drink on the job. Bringing us Critical Role every week and making my life just a bit more bearable. I would so appreciate if you could ho hold off on giving this to the cast until the entire party is there. Sorry, Liam. 
I should have also sent you a note for the cast through Twitch to go along with the package. It would be amazing if you could ensure that they get it at the same time. Keep being awesome, Prometheus Theus. See, Thank that's you, Prometheus why you Theus. Read before you open the box. <laughs> yeah, but thanks, Prometheus. Hey, where's, where's Thank you, Prometheus. Tal's in here shortly. He's, shortly. he's, he's wearing a little behind. In, in right. Right. Yeah, the problem with uh, having this at 7 p.m. on Thursday in Los Angeles is, depending on where you're coming from, you may not get here by 7 p.m. Uh, but he'll be here shortly. That's true, yeah, Talos uh, is coming. Yeah, thank yes. you, that's that's amazing. And whenever that is done, that bottle's gonna be repurposed for some sort of potion. What do we do? It's oh. happening. Oh, we could make it a, we could make it a candle. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. cool. Ashley, that's right. Ashley makes awesome candles out of... Not one like You just put the lighter fluid in a rope and then the... the so we're doing that, right? Yeah. Oh, right, All right. it's not the lighter. So that, All right. that lives now as an alcoholic uh, <laughs> container, will lighter eventually fluid. become an awesome so on-set candle. So thank you so much. Prometheus, that's amazing. Yes, thank you, uh, Prometheus. Also, we have a couple other gifts to give out. Um, they weren't here last week, so we couldn't give them away yet, but we have a couple gifts over there for, I believe, uh, Laura and Travis, or more specifically, <laughs> Vex and Grog. To give those away? We have a ton of stuff to give you. Oh, really? really? Are we waiting until the end? Then let's yeah. wait. Oh, okay. Yeah, we have a lot of prizes. Okay. Oh. I have Liam on oh, okay. Uh, well, then oh, we shall Liam's wait. on the iPad if we want to. Yeah. We miss you so much. I know, I wish I was there. Hi. How is New York? It's buggy and hot. Yay. Have you better speak? Are you we'll in, are you speak. doing a, a Broadway are you in a Broadway play? He's got he is gone. in a Broadway play. Yeah. Are you seeing Greece? Is that what's going on? Where should I Where should be? Put See? All right, so we're, we're getting better speakers oh. for Liam here, but he'll be actually joining us via Skype oh, and Talos. Cool. Are there actually are there speakers? Okay. Put me in Tramis, what do we got to do? Should we play the game? I think we're going to jump in here. Okay, yeah. everyone, settle, settle. Let's should play the game. play the game. All right, uh, we're going to go get a speaker set up for Liam, but nevertheless, we shall hop in here it's and chaos start playing. Oh, yeah. Today. And I would like to recommend also that we try and prevent crosstalk. Um, so beware. Um, You'll get caught up in the crosstalk. crosstalk. You fucking right up in there. Oh, sorry. Oh, crossfire. Sorry. You never go away. Um, all <laughs> right. So, um, for those of you who are joining us for our first time, welcome. Uh, for those who have been with us the entire journey, welcome as well. A uh, bunch of crazy voice actors here playing D&D. The party had just recently completed uh, an extensive quest through the Underdark, Underdark, Underdark beneath the dwarven city of Craghammer, in which they battled with Mind Flayers and Durgar, and uh, eventually a, a giant crazed beholder that was possessed by an ancient artifact called the Horn of Orcus. Upon defeating the Mind Flayer and making a dramatic escape, thanks to Tiberius, uh, back to their hometown of Iman, they met with the Council of Tal'Dorei, which they're a part of, to discuss what they should do with this great ancient evil artifact, the Horn of Orcus. Uh, the Council discussed it. Most of the knowledge seemed to be that it could not, or there is no known way to destroy it, and uh, the best means of dealing with it would be to reseal it in a place where it would be safe, forgotten, and hopefully never rediscovered. Uh, it was decided amongst the council that the safest place to do that is on the distant land of Othanzia, uh, where there is a capital city known as Vasselheim. There, supposedly, is the, uh, the most well-known and holiest and oldest place of, uh, of Kima's order of worship of the Paladin of Bahamut, the, Paladin, uh, the great Platinum Dragon Bahamut, of which she is a paladin, and supposedly they have a facility or means of sealing it away. And so it was decided that they would send away for a holy container that could contain this evil uh, without any worry of corruption or escape, uh, carry it then via skyship over the ocean to the distant land of Othanzia to Vasselheim, the capital city, and seal it away. After which they went on a shopping spree to uh, Gilmore's Glorious Goods, uh, met everyone's favorite mage, uh, Gilmore. Item creator extraordinaire and... We got... Uh, oh, oh picture. that's right, I want some no. stuff. No, no, no. Give me stuff. Yeah, you yeah. guys have to figure out who gets what, by the way. Well, we have to do this quickly. <laughs> um, so bringing us back now, you've completed your purchases, now as a party, decide how to disseminate the items that you've uh, purchased. And uh, once you guys are ready, okay. we'll take it from there. How many, wait, items, wait, wait, how wait. many items do we have? Um, well, uh, they're a bit divvied up right now. I, I believe Pike is holding on to the sword, correct? And I also have Pearl, a uh, Pearl of Power. Ooh, what is That's that? That's up for grabs. Let she me see. Let me see. Um, I am that holding was... on to a Ring of Protection oh. plus two, and a Belt of Dwarven Kind. Hello, Percy. Oh, oh, hello, hello. Hi. Hello, Good Percy. Good to join us. Thank you. I just got off an airplane. Hi. Oh, yes. Oh. How was their flight? An airplane. The flight was like. it was oh, it was slightly shorter than the drive here. Hi. <laughs> 
Oh my god. <laughs> that sounds oh, about right. This looks good. Yeah. Uh, please. <laughs> Oh, look, look, look what we got. This is a gift from, from, oh. what's his, oh. from, what's his butt has something. It's good. It's brandy. Max has something. It's a really good brandy. Max, I thought it was beer. Yeah, yeah, sorry, talking. carry on. Just kidding, I'm uh, back. I have a anger <laughs> of life stealing plus one. I'd also like to say how much I enjoy being in Travis's stomach like Kuatu. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hey. Love it. I think. Um, I have a, a ring of protection plus two and a what, belt what of dwarven. What is that? What does that do? Um, it, I, it, gave, it gives you a plus two bonus to AC and saving throws while wearing this ring. I need that. And then I also have the belt of dwarven Can kind. Can you say the most amazing thing about it? Which, which the belt of dwarven kind? Yeah, you guys remember this? Mm -hmm. um, it gives you a plus two to your constitution modifier. Um, you have advantage on charisma persuasion checks with Ooh. dwarves. And you have a 50% chance each day at dawn of growing a full beard. <gasps> what? Yeah. I know. If that's you are amazing. Capable, yeah. If you are capable of growing. Oh, oh, that's right. You guys, you guys tuned out. Yeah. You guys tuned we out. Um, yeah, we realized this at the end of the stream. Uh, yes, at the top of the day, you have a 50% chance each day <gasps> at dawn ever. of growing a full thick, if you're cap a full thick beard if you're capable of growing one, or a visibly thicker beard if you already have one. <gasps> like, Tiberius is the only one that couldn't grow a beard, right? Right? We could all grow a beard, technically. Like, ladies, oh, can you can grow a beard? Can the ladies grow a beard? Cool. Yeah. 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 Why not? Like, if our hormones were a little different. Yeah, I've seen some massive no, she could... beards out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, grow we could find him a nice lady to date. That point of figure. I... And if you aren't a dwarf, on top of this, if you aren't a dwarf, you gain the following additional benefits while wearing this belt. You have advantage on saving throws against poison, uh, resistance against poison damage, dark vision up to 60 feet, and you can speak, read, and write dwarvish. That's pretty. Oh, what are you doing? Be quiet. I, I got one too. Hey. So, I got the manual of quickness so of action. Sorcerers can wear leather armor. Keep. I'm keeping this one. Sorcerers can wear leather armor? I, I think, I mean, I, I, I just... Do you guys have a problem if I keep the Pearl of Power? Leather, what does it do? Leather and cloth. It only, it lets you use a, yeah. another third spell slot, third level spell. And I figure you guys all have better spells than third level, but I only have up to third level. So it just gives you one more third of level Of my most spell? powerful spell, which is my third level. Oh, it shows a lot of damage. It and they do me. usually do a lot of damage with the third level. That's fine with me. I'm generally, I generally have enough spells. <laughs> you got that ring of protection, <laughs> or you could have the beardy thing. <laughs> Napkin. <laughs> um. So yes, I, we also got the cold snap leather armor plus two, which I was originally thinking for myself, but then I realized I actually have decent leather armor that gives me spell advantage, so oh. I'm good on leather armor. Nice. Um. I, I I could stand to wear it. I have no torso armor. I thought, this, are you sure sorcerers can wear? I'm definitely I checking they, out. Cloth, ropes. cloth and, and leather. Okay. I, do, I mean, I just looked it up right here. I don't know. See? Still, sorcerers can wear no armor. You are wrong. I can wear no armor. None. I have this thing that you know, somebody can use. <laughs> <laughs> um. And Wait, I would just cloth? like to say, uh. Oh, this, is, cool. this is mine. Wait! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Wait. Do you have any armor on, Scanlan? So I, I have something. This would bring but his uh, it, with that and the ring. Do if I have you, armor? If, if you re if you board this in the ring, it would give you plus three to your AC. Oh my god. So that's not a bad combo. Probably figure this all out before we started. Because this will give you plus one to your AC. Well, I wouldn't mind having yeah, a yeah, yeah, regular set of leather armor right now. What is that? Is that is well, this better? I mean, probably. Do anything. This is better. Probably. What? Okay. Would that give him a plus two to his AC? Would that armor give him a is plus it, two? It, <laughs> Cold snap leather armor. This would be leather armor with a plus two. It would probably give you an additional plus one to your AC if you wear it. Plus it's one. not studded leather, it's just leather, That's um, what but it's saying, a plus like two to the AC, so yeah, that your AC would go up by one. Three. Who wants the belt of dwarven kind? Grog? What's your constitution right now? I think Pike should have the belt. 18. <laughs> I got a That's pretty high. Constitution up to a twenty. I want to grow a fucking beard. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I, well, I know it does sound some, like someday you'll be a real boy. boy. The only That'll reason a... any of us want that belt is to grow a beard. Yeah, yeah that's kind of true. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, even though there's some very great aspects to the belt. My like, question is, on once you it. grow that's the plus. beard, if you remove the belt, does the beard fall off, or do you get to keep the beard? Because then you could guys could just like switch, switch it out around. until everybody had the appropriate amount of facial hair. If I had the beard, I would grow it. Or does it like dissipate at the end of the day when you take the take it off? 
I think that's that's our wonderful man. I'll, I'll take call. it. We can yeah, hold it until so. somebody yeah. has one. No way of knowing. <laughs> <laughs> so who's, who's going to take the ring? Um, What's the ring do? Oh, the Keyleth, ring I think, would two. like the ring. Oh, it, it I would, I would just like it. something to help my AC. What's your AC? 15. So that bring you That's to 17. pretty low. Mine's at 14. <laughs> it is yeah. now 15 with your new arm. 15. That's good. All right, you take it. I'll just die a lot. Are you sure? Whoa, whoa, no, not <laughs> cool. Bad. Actually, uh, I wouldn't. <laughs> what I was uh, saying uh, earlier. Fifteen. Um, I'm gonna oh, take off the you. iron stone. You look um, pretty good with a beard. You would look really good with a beard. Well, that solves it. Well, wait. I thought I thought Grog was taking the beard. Maybe you guys can switch out sometimes. Grog is figuring. Take it. It's a belt. We can just. Oh, but we have to like, bind it to us. No, Grog, no, you take Grog it. Grog doesn't wear armor either. He gets better That's benefits. There hasn't, if he there hasn't been enough in pretty game much time for this to actually take have taken hold yet. But there. There. You should keep that. I think it Which gives one? you a bonus. It takes to uh, the the manual of quickness of action. It takes forty eight hours worth of reading it. Not yet. No. Okay. So <clears> I'll have to wait. I'm starting this. But you can read it over time. Like like you know, take a couple hours of each evening and then. But that means everybody got something, right? Yes. Can yes. we divide it up Can that we way? we divide everything up? Yes. The only one who didn't was my brother. No, he got, he got a dagger. dagger. No, I have a dagger of life stealing. Oh, lovely, lovely. Which um, steals and life. also, uh, <laughs> uh, Scanlan, uh, and I, I bring up the iron stone. Oh, yes. It, like I was saying before, you ran out of, keep, you kept running out of spells. This allows you to store extra spells. I, I propose a friendly trade for the crown that will uh, circle it. What the? Hat? Uh, is it a circlet? Is it a concentration circlet? Yes. Uh, I think it would benefit you to have a ring, uh, some sort of spell storing in which you've complained oh, about running out sorry, of spells. Sorry, sorry. I took that pearl and you wanted it, huh? few times we've fought. Sorry. The pearl, yes, I did want the pearl, but. What? <laughs> it's a, it's a, it, this is a head. It does what the pearl it's a head does, item. Times what does it do? Uh, it allows you to ca if you cast a spell into it, uh -huh. up to a level three. You can do like like three first level spells or up to one third level spell into the stone. It'll hold it, yeah. and then like you can just continue on with the rest next few you days. Know how I keep you casting cast just it from the keep, stone. I keep pucking spells is because I keep casting them out of my iron stone. So does that mean on one round I could cast a spell and also activate the spell that's stored in there? It's still an action to activate it, and his beard. but it just it doesn't use your current spell slot because you've already yeah. struck the beard. stored it in there from a the day before. That's the majesty of I've a beard. Ne I've okay. never run out of spells. People take you seriously. You, you ran out of spells the last two battles, and you said, "I can't cast this anymore." Where you? you so it gives me an extra level level three slot. Is that Essentially, right? if if you were to cast a level three spell into it in advance, or you can cast uh, like three of those or three of those ah. things that you would use for other deals. Yeah. It's up to you. It's your, I mean, you have the crown. Let me think yeah. about it. Let's think about it. let's think about it and strategize. We'll do, we'll do this soon. I, I, the, the, three, the three level spells I don't use as much as these. Oh, God. <laughs> but, if that's what you'd like, I would like that very, very much. As Vax come back from his <laughs> mandate, he did. Yeah. Very, very Are we done? Are we ready yeah. to like, do that things conversation now? For two weeks. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> that is a true story. He's been sitting going, well, maybe he'll say this. <laughs> I don't know. Well, you're you like, did, me on jury duty. You did silence me that time. Yes, sir. I had to. You didn't have to. And you then did, you, you didn't turn him into a mouse. He yes. liked it. No, a I, super no. cute mouse. I was, I was going to say, you didn't turn me back into a mouse. You also <laughs> abandoned the party in our most dire moment. This is true as well. But he then did get the killing blow. True. Yeah, so, so if I just come, if I, if I abandon I you all and come in at the last minute and just take the last shot, I get all the credit? I, I like the so. contrary. <laughs> to be fair, Noam, I never abandoned. <laughs> I never abandoned the party at all. Uh, I was surveying the situation. My idea was not try whatsoever. So I merely kept to my word. I did not enter the premises. Oh. Only until sa I needed to save everyone's life, mm. which is exactly what I did. I'm so sorry. I missed the last part because uh, my awesome hat was blocking it. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> that's, it's too big, you're saying. <laughs> it, it, you should wear it. it. <laughs> you you still it, wear Magneto's shirt. It, it, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll discuss soon. It's not Clorota's thing. That's a different thing, right? Yeah, that, 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 that. Oh. Okay, back. Yes, back, back. I have the Clorosa hat. And we still oh, have, you have the metal yeah. Yeah. And it looks wonderful on you. You look like Merlin from Excalibur. <laughs> <laughs> Are we still in Gilmore? You guys have exited Gilmore's at this time. Are we standing oh. out on the street 
divvying up random yes. items. Yeah, you guys, you guys, you guys are essentially to... in the middle of the thoroughfare in Abadar's promenade and Iman bickering over the items you guys are distributing amongst yourselves well, in I've broad daylight. Well, I've got a beautiful pearl, so I'm happy. <laughs> I just like covered my lovely pearl. I have a book. <laughs> All right. <laughs> are there any shady characters making eyes at our goons? Uh, uh, make there a perception check. fellow under that tree. Me? Make a perception check? Yes. Buzzed out those dice. 15 plus probably crap. <laughs> Zero. No! <laughs> uh, looking oh. about, I mean, there are a few folks that walk by and give a strange eye to the, you know, seven, nearly eight foot no, tall geez. Goliath. Um, <laughs> but nothing beyond what you're used to. Oh, alright. Yeah. Um, as you know, guys, you do have. Uh, about two days before the holy receptacle oh, okay. arrives, so if there's anything you want to achieve in that meantime, mm. you're welcome to do so, yes. or you can just, or you guys can just spend that place relaxing. Mm. So, so this is what? That's your neck. I'm sorry, Percy. Are you talking? You're at I have 17. chicken. Um, no. On you. No, I have some tinkering I'd like to do. All right. What would you like to tinker? Mm. Good. That works out perfectly. Um, I would like to try and. Build a couple things. I have a list. Where arrows! Arrows for me, please! It's not all about you. Darling. Oh no, arrows are on the list. I have, uh, I want to start working on some sort of uh, tasing implement for, for direct contact. <laughs> what because is I have, I have nothing. I want to do an electrical charge that I can he rev wants, up. He wants to make a Sami's glove. Sami's glove. Okay. Um, there's that. Oh, for I want to. I, I, I have a list of things. I want to. Uh, I've got, I, how many things can I start poking with? Two days. That glove, that's going to be like a week long. That's endeavor. a week long thing. Um, and like even the design phase will take you two days in acquiring materials. Night vision. It's possible. Night vision. Into my current existing helmet. A, a night, night vision helmet or a dark vision, as, yeah, as dark we would put it, um, that would be more of an enchantment based. There's no way I can try and pull that together out of Not via tinkering. Uh, the technological aspects are not, unfortunately, that advanced at this time. Um, <laughs> like, shades? Probably. Probably shade some sun, but actually looking in the dark, that that's an actual okay. more of an arcane. We 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 okay. I'll, I'll, so so this boils me down to two thoughts. This is good. <laughs> um, I want to put a slight dent, uh, a slight um, dent in the barrel of bad news to get a ricochet shot, so that basically it allows me to when I when I shoot a bullet to also do one d12 worth of damage to one target that's immediately adjacent to to the, to the main target. It's, it's not quite shrapnel, it's a ricochet, but yes, it's basically a shrapnel like shot. a bank shot. A bank shot. A secondary, like lesser damage. Go all back for it. With the bad side. news, it's going to be difficult to bad news, because the, the sheer power and force that that gun emits on its, its uh, would it payload... Be, would it be possible with a... If I did it to one of the barrels of a... We could, it could do it. I'd say it would probably up your misfire rate by one. Oh, okay. So consider that. It totally is, it's doable. But in, in messing with the barrel, the chamber, and the trajectory of the weapon, there is that slight increase in the possibility of it jamming or disabling. Okay, then so I... That, it's a possible trade-off. With bad news, because the, because it travels so fast to do that much damage, any sort of alteration, it will either not change the course whatsoever, or it'll blow up the gun. I'll start the taser and work on some arrows, then. That's, that's okay. what I'd like. Okay, arrows viable. Okay. Uh, I, I go back into Gilmore's and I ask if there's... If either they or someone else that they know can make a, a specific kind of potion. Oh, I actually join him. All right. So the two of you walk back in as they're discussing this. Um, uh, Gilmore is still at his desk. I'm behind him too. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Was there something else you required? I forgot to ask. I hello, Gilmore. Hello. Uh, you look particularly perky today. Well, I've had a rather good day, I could say. <laughs> uh, I was wondering if I could inquire about uh, a specific kind of scrying potion that I would like uh, uh, made for me. It's, it's a specialty item. I don't know if any exist. Well, please do step into my office. And he, right. he leads you into the back room beyond the beaded curtain. <laughs> oh, what is that patchouli I smell? <laughs> Quite an astute nose you have. <laughs> I'll be right in. If you don't mind just hanging tight for just a moment, thank you. Uh, he steps off in the back room and uh, takes about five minutes. While well, he looks around, or while he's gone, can I look around and see if he has any books on how to start, like a potion making for dummies book? <laughs> okay. So, uh, Gilmore, I, mm -hmm. um, I when we get excited, I. Um, 
well, never mind that. Anyway, I, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking for a way, uh, a potion that I can maybe drink or use to, uh, to help me sort of uh, look in on a place that we've been to recently. Uh, I could maybe leave a mark of some sort and then and then use that mark to magically scry into that place. He gives you a long, hard look, contemplating the conversation, and then you see like a light bulb go off in his eyes. He goes, mm. curious, you're into some things. <laughs> <laughs> Have a dark side. Indeed. I could probably, at we as to this, give me a day. I should be able to produce such an item, although this is, uh, I will say, having not been attempted, there comes a, a warning of possible side effects. So I would be drinking this potion and it could affect me in other ways? Perhaps. The funny thing about unproven magic is, well, it's unproven. <laughs> I can give you at least a 90 to 95% guarantee. All right. It's like the and same how much would such a potion cost me? I would say for the research, the materials, um, everything is how you are indeed sponsored by Gilmore's Glorious Goods at discount. 300 gold. Did I give away my ruby last time? I no, you still have it. You did not have it. How much would this get me? <laughs> Go ahead and roll a persuasion. Come on, buddy. Hey. Yeah, oh, I don't have any dice. There you go. I almost gave away mine. 23. <laughs> That's right. He goes. That's a good one. Oh, 21. Oh. Right. Oh, oh, no. Uh, uh, as soon as you procure it, he kind of leans forward and snatches it gingerly from your fingers and looks it over in his eyes. Ooh. -hoo. Oh, this is a fine piece. Super flawless because you put it in the wheel. For Trey. Well, if it's. <laughs> just tell me how much it's <laughs> worth first. This gem would probably run you anywhere from 200 to 300 gold. Um, uh, do I sense that he's lying at a. Make an inside check. Yeah, where'd it go? Thank you. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Ooh, 11. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, uh, he seems honest. He, he seems like he's genuinely looking to make a deal. Straight up. Straight up. What? Just straight up. Yeah, let's do it. I'll give you the ruby for the potion. Very well. But I, I would love a, a, a hefty amount of the potion, not a single use, multiple use. Oh, uh, I can provide for this uh, fantastic specimen a three. Use potion? Is that within your <laughs> that realm would be, of yeah. possibility? That would be lovely. Thank you, Kelly. Right. One day. One one wonderful day. One day. <laughs> one grabs, glorious day. Kind of rubs your shoulder for a second and uh, leads you outside of the okay. room. Oh, I, wait. I have a two-part question. I didn't even think you were in there. I am. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> as he storms through the beaded curtain, as he's exiting. Uh, oh. I'm sorry, this room is private. Oh, it's, everything's private, I guess. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to know, uh, A, uh, how much that ring of walking on water was, again, and, uh, and, and B, if you knew of somewhere I could have a, a, an existing item enchanted uh, uh, just a little bit. <laughs> like, make it stronger than it currently is, but not change it. Huh? First off, the ring that we discussed as our original deal, uh, the price would run you about 1750. 1,750 gold pieces, should you be interested still. Um, as for uh, enchantment is a largely permanent process. To enhance an existing enchantment is a dangerous task that has a very high probability of ruining the enchantment that currently exists. Oh, that's good to know. Um, to, to increase it, such masters I hear exist in the world, but they are very, very dead, or very, very hidden. Mm. Yes. Um, however, if you wish to upgrade, we are more than happy to oblige. No, I, I uh, the, the, <coughs> the uh, ring of protection I have, but it's, it's, it's a, a one uh, measure. I wanted it by another 
<laughs> measure. I don't know how to phrase this in RP. <laughs> uh, so I wanted just to be have it more, more r- protecting, more bigger, right? More, yes. <laughs> well, thicker. More Perhaps bigger. we could have one made more for good. you. It would take a few weeks, but we could have one waiting. Oh, very good. Uh, like I would like to arrange that. All right. Well, you have to pay. I'd say half the price down front. How much is your ring of protection plus two currently uh, labeled at? Uh, 6,500. <coughs> Man. So 6,500 gold, that would put right. you at uh, 3,250 down now. The other half when the enchantment is completed. That is insane. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't buy it for that much, did we? Uh, we they haveled it down a little bit. We threw it in, we tossed it in with Stuff's the deal. Stuff's expensive, Stuff. man. Stuff is expensive. It's I'll shit. chill for it's now. My <laughs> Very um, well. Come back if you change your mind. I will. Wait, wait, wait. Did I find a? Did I find like a book? Did I find like a book? And right. I'll, all right. We'll get to that now. Uh, go ahead and roll an investigation check. I have. Uh, Eighteen. All right. Asking around some of the employees and kind of keeping an eye out, there are a few books on uh, herbalism, how to uh, find and retain the potent elements of various material components found in nature. Uh, also, there are some uh, there's some bits of information about how to extract uh, materials from natural creatures, meaning uh, monsters, uh, beasts, both natural and magical. How to pres- how to how to remove and preserve safely elements of their Organs and things that can be used in various alchemical compounds and/or potion brewing. Um, there are no books specifically in the process of brewing, but that is one of the key components to it: is being able to acquire those elements. So I, t- I, t- I take those books. Mm-hmm. How much are those books? Well, it, it's a single book that contains uh, everything about uh, the herbalism and a book about the uh, the extraction of creature components. So I take that book. How much is that book? So two books. Um, How much are these books? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you inquire with the employees. Uh-huh. Like, uh huh. These books are marked currently to uh, twenty-five gold apiece. <laughs> they are um, second printing, but hard to find. Do you wish to purchase? Yes, I'll take both of them. Right. Let's get out of here. Fifty gold. Mark off Whoa. fifty gold. Hands um, the tomes back. Also, did I talk to Gilmore what? about potion classes? You, you did, did, and he went. Right. He said he'll take it under consideration. I'll take it yeah. into consideration. Yeah, and he gave you a look of like, go. Hmm. <laughs> like maybe. Okay. We need time. It's tough to Without tell. Without taking too long on it, I was just also hoping yeah. while we're in town. Too, uh, time we um, the so that armor that we stole from the um, the big rhinoceros monster. What was what kind of cre- in the in the Durgar castle? Remember when he busted? Oh, oh the uh, the bullet. Yes, the armor that we took from him. Is there any way I can find a blacksmith that can maybe upgrade Trinket's armor with that? Ooh, that's an interesting thought. Um, all right, I see. Uh, go ahead and make an investigation check. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, all right, all right. Here we go. Pick wisely. I'm using the new fancy one, so don't fail me. Don't fail me now. Twenty. 20. Uh, easy enough. After asking around town, you managed to find uh, a few individuals speak that there are uh, two armorsmiths, uh, one that dabbles in both blacksmithing and armorsmithing, one that specifically is an, is an armorsmith uh, who focuses in strange materials, mostly ornamental, but has a strong history and past in warfare and uh, honing those skills towards the use of actual battle. Um, you find it, it's, it's a, a, a dwarven woman by the name of Karen, and uh, they send you to her facility. And it's a very, very small, almost a hovel. Um, but when you approach the outside, you can immediately smell. There's like this strong scent of, of iron, uh, almost almost like a sulfur and different other chemicals that are used uh, when you're folding metals and, and making composites. Um, you open the door slightly, and it's very darkly lit on the inside. There's just there's the heat of the forge, and you see this, this very sturdy, muscular dwarven woman standing there with a, her hair kind of graying, and it's pulled back in a very tight bun, and she's wearing a leather apron with her sleeves rolled up, and she's in the process of hammering down on a piece of metal over an anvil, just ping, ting. Does she have a beard? Uh, <laughs> you, you see there's probably a bit of scruff showing at the edge of her chin, uh, but not a beard per se. She just probably right. has it kept up. Um, she doesn't seem to notice you. She's just in the middle of her work. It's almost as in. Shut up for a second. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you enter. Oh, good. Uh, oh, can I help you? 
Karen, yes? I, I, I am Karen. Ah, um, don't mean to interrupt. You looked very busy here. <laughs> L let me just finish. Uh, all, all right. And she kind of gives you a nod and then whew, goes back into her mode for a second. And she makes you wait for a good six minutes while she finishes hammering out this piece, turning and rotating on the edge of the anvil, hammering it into this smooth kind of, it looks almost like a pauldron, uh, curved point for a shoulder. Uh, and then eventually she whoosh, quenches it in the trough, sets it aside with a tink tink, puts her uh, her tools down, takes off her big leather gloves, wipes her brow, and we see where she wipes it. She wipes the sweat off, but leaves a big old grease mark where once was cleaning. Goes, oh, sorry for the wait. So, uh, what can I do for you? I've heard rumor that you are a very talented blacksmith. Well, hi, hi. Depends what you're looking for. What you put in the furnace? I have quite an interesting proposition for you. Well, I can sort of still have some material you've never worked with. I don't know. Oh, here we go. Uh, <laughs> would you mind stepping outside for a moment? Mm. Get some fresh air? <laughs> At this point specifically, she goes from extremely welcoming to a very nervous, untrusting Believe look. Believe me, you'll, you'll want to see this. Go ahead and make a persuasion roll. Uh, Why don't you wink first? No, <laughs> way. You'll want to see this. <laughs> Uh, I don't know which, that's the problem with having too many. I'm rolling my trinket dice since it applies to trinket. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, that oh, wasn't nice. good. Um, <laughs> nine. Can't roll the two. Yay! Uh, <laughs> Yay. <laughs> all right, all right. Sorry, I don't mean to, I've, I've had a few encounters in the past. Oh. Uh, but yes, outside, and she kind of walks out. And as she walks out with you, you can see she kind of reaches over and grabs a sheath short sword and just keeps it at her side. Ooh. No need um. for that, darling. Drink it! <laughs> your, your armored bear comes looming around the corner, at which point she kind of <laughs> goes for the sword instinctually. No, no. Uh, take a gander at his armor. Oh. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. She walks up to him and kind of like carefully, like, doesn't want to touch friendly, him. He's friendly, don't worry. Drink it, of course, leans forward, <laughs> licks the side of her face, cleaning <laughs> off some of the grease stain on her side of her cheek. And goes, oh, 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 that was unexpected. Uh, <laughs> A very friendly uh, one. Uh, <laughs> Tr trinket, is it? Yes. Oh, you're a nice one, Trinket. She kind oh. of rubs and starts rubbing the side of his cheek. He mm. likes you, I can tell. Mm. Uh, starts looking at the armor. It's oh, nice, functional. It's taken a few dings. It's seen some battle. Yes, oh. it has. I'm hoping to protect him a bit more, however. Oh, I can see that. Yeah. Um, who made this? She looks around, she pulls up. Oh, this is the Mark of Western. Yeah. This, was, uh, this was made over in that south. Yes, yes. <laughs> You could do better. I'm oh, sure. they're not the finest over there. They're <laughs> functional, but not the finest. Um, is this for a parade, or is this for actual combat? Use? Actual combat. <laughs> Beauty, not my concern. Right, right. Um, and what materials are you looking for? Well, I <laughs> as you that. slam down this, like awkward, still somewhat wet in places, uh, but mo mostly dried out uh, bullet hide that you guys carve from it, and it is like p big. You know, pieces of plate, plate scales right? with sections of leather underneath kind of interwoven. It is part of a, a, a large behemoth of a creature. As you slam it down, she kind of steps back for a second. And you, uh, we, we, what, what manner of creature did this come from? A very large one, actually. Bo a bull, a, a bull. Bullet. Bullet, that one. Oh, I haven't seen one of those. Found itself to the surface in quite some time. It wasn't on the surface. We're a bit of adventurous, if you want to know. <laughs> <laughs> she gives you this long look. Goes, what the right, <laughs> right, adventurous. Oh, um, of course. Sorry, didn't mean to offend. Um, You've probably heard of us, Vox Machina. And she stops for a second and goes, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yes, I have heard yeah, of you. Windsor's yes. Crest Festival, not long ago. Ah, uh, that is correct. <laughs> right. She got it. Right. right. <laughs> Well then, it's a it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Establishment of business. Yes, yes. Let it hide. I have not worked with this. Uh, she leans leans down and starts like messing with it, seeing how pliable it is in sections. She goes, oh, "There's enough here to 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 read you most of the armor, perhaps not most places, but what's I could minimize spatial use of it and possibly get most of the main plates gathered. I could work with this. Nice. I could work with this. Um, oh, it'll." Take me a few days. Unfortunately, it is a rare material. Right. Um, oh, is is two days enough? Two days. Yes. Ah, I, I could. I'd have to charge you more because I'm not going to get much sleep at that rate. Understandable. 
Um, how much is a bit more? Well, you're providing the materials. That definitely yes. cuts the cost significantly for my time and work and like And sleep. we will send many, many customers your way. I say, can, can I put my personal brand on this? Of course. Wait, uh, well then, you're out there. Uh, <laughs> Tricky doesn't sponsor, it's just fucking us. Huh? Okay. Oh, 500 gold suffice? <gasps> Oh, Jesus. How about 450? Make a persuasion roll. <laughs> oh, Vex. Oh, 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 I must Vex. you dicker. I know. Because I want to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wah, wah. Right. That would be. 26. She looks you over for a second, looks at the material, and you can see in her eyes there's this kind of. Interest in working with this material. This, this, you know, never right touched or, or worked with this. She goes, mm-hmm. 450. Deal. <laughs> Shakes hands. See you in a few days. All Come right. On. Two days. Two days. All right. She leans down, picks up it. It's heavy material. Like, for the, for the most part, carrying it around was his job. Yes. The bag of holding. Uh, she lifts it over one shoulder, heads right into the workshop. Thank you, Karen. Stops for a second, turns out, um, Hmm. Do, you, do you mind if I take that armor in the meantime? I figured I could use that oh, as a base pattern. Oh, of course, pattern. yeah, we use it together. A trinket. It Gonna take about 15 minutes, she helps take the armor off, she leads all into the shop, and then she goes, all right, see you in a few days. Closes her door, poof. I'll drink it all naked. Yeah, drink it, look at you naked. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> all right, sorry that took so long. Hi, <laughs> you're back. All right, shall we start adventuring then? Where, where? There's two days to hang out. Oh, two, oh we're not leaving yet? No, I was mostly say, spacing out. Anything else time. you guys want to achieve in these next two days? You're welcome to do it now, or we could go ahead and say you relax, fast you forward. take time, and fast forward to the two-day period. I'll do my tinkering rolls, and then I'm good. All right. So, uh, first, you wanted to work on. Uh, I want to work on a grappling hook arrow that attaches to the unending, that ties to the unending rope, so that we can actually something that'll pierce, pierce heavy stone and just it's anchor. Okay. Like All right. Batman. I had. I, <laughs> I have a, a like Batman. All right. I don't know why Batman's on the brain right now. For right. any reason. I have I have a um I have a um uh, a, a earring of the wind uh, that I never I made but I have not enchanted yet. Can I enchant that in two days to make another one? You know one of the speaking earrings. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, 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 there was the existing functional ones, but like over the last. Since the, I gave them out, I've only had time to make an, one extra one, but I have to enchant them also. Yeah, I would say I would say you can begin the process of it. You get about halfway through. It would take you the better part of a week to complete each earring, which is what it did before when you first made that. Um, but you can begin the process. You definitely have the the, the your laboratory now in Grayskull Keep, and that definitely gives you that gives you a bonus to the rolls you make to enchant Ooh, it. So. Can I start it, and then if we leave, I can have one of the like. The you probably have Alora come and finish it if you wanted to ask her. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. She has anything better to do. I'll start that. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll start. I'll start um, doing the one that I made. And, okay. And so you take the time. You need enchantment on that. All right. Um, go ahead and make your first tinkering. Check. All right. First tinkering roll is. Uh, is thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. So uh, you, as opposed to an actual uh, arrow, what you're doing is you take an extended crossbow bolt. Um, you blacksmith onto the end of it, extending it to to what would be. Uh, an actual full-scale longbow arrow length, but it is a, a, a thick metal rod. Uh, from there, you create the grappling hook end to it, and what would be essentially, it's thin, and then once the rope is pulled or tugged from the back, it retracts the front part to extend into a grappling hook. Yeah. Um, you get through the process of creating the rod, and you get to the, you sketch out a few ideas for the actual uh, portion of the end of the arrow that would extend into the grappling hook portion. Go ahead and make a secondary roll. Uh, 12. 12? Okay. Um, you're having a, this is including your tinker uh, bonus, your, your Just tools. proficiency bonus. That's yeah, the, yeah, yeah. For sure. um, so you, uh, you start having a little bit of a problem with the mechanism. Mm-hmm. Uh, it keeps sticking and having a hard time actually ret- you know, retracting or uh, uh, springing from the, the arrow point. Um, it takes you a little more time than you anticipated with it. Go ahead and make a final roll. I'm going to inspire him before he makes this roll. All right, so a little, with a little little inspiration song or something. So Scanlan comes down into your workshop underneath mm-hmm. uh, Grayskull Keep. You hear a fine little ditty to inspire you in your work. 
Whoa! I hear you're tinkering. Whoa! Please do it well. <laughs> <laughs> Take my hand and you'll tinker, I swear. Whoa! Please do it well. <laughs> Tinkering on a prayer! There we go. Okay. Now I feel inspired. I was about to give you a D6, but that'll be the full D10. <laughs> so, so on this final roll, go ahead and... What did you roll initially? Oh, uh, I actually don't even remember, but it wasn't that bad. Sorry, go ahead. All right. <laughs> I, yeah, uh, so that's... 18. 18, okay. Uh, with that bit of inspiration going and your little scanlan based soundtrack, you managed to figure out uh, that some, some of the gears were sticking. You recut them out, insert it, and like butter, shink, it sticks out and retracts. Cool. Uh, so you have one grappling nice. arrow completed. For material costs, it came to about 100 gold. 100 gold. Ooh. And then I want to try and recreate the exploding arrow as my last little thing I want to do. To okay. Okay. Guys, we got to go back and get our money. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh my god. That's what we got to do. We gotta get that. Yeah, it's like 30k sent for us. Hey, can we just send our, send our minions to get it? Like our <laughs> servants? Max has something you'd like to add. What? Yes. Uh, Pike, uh, dear, dear friend, can you hear me? Oh, yes, I know. We're getting to that. Uh, I, I was wondering if maybe you and I could swing by the Temple of Seren Ray and fix my... Seren Ray? Oh, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's Seren Ray. And <laughs> and it's not, that's fine. It's the Red Ray. Dolphin oh, atheist, darling, it's fine. but I know that my foot doesn't fucking Well, work, I so know. Uh, and I was going to say, uh, the past couple days, I think I've spent in the temple trying to sort of reconnect and really just... <laughs> apologize? You know, tune in and apologize and, and <laughs> Sounds like a confess. Oh, that's okay, good. Now it knows um, uh, and you, you return to this temple, the same temple where you yourself were resurrected after yes. falling to the, uh, the treachery demon, not but... Uh, eight months previous, uh, returning to that place, especially after your recent journey and near brushes to death again, is a very solemn experience. And there's a part of you that just feels internally cold, both returning there and because of your strangely fractured connection with Saren Ray since you delved into the Underdark and kind of tapped into your darker side since traveling abroad on the ship. Um, you take approximately six hours out of each day to just go in silent prayer. Uh, and reach out to her. Um, I will say, uh, go ahead and make a wisdom check. <sighs> okay. Uh, <gasps> you don't want to do it. <laughs> Twenty-two. At the end of your second six-hour period of in, six in, in, intense, hours. intense communion with Saren Ray. Um, sweat pouring down your body. The room itself is pretty cold, but for some reason your body is just growing more and more intense with heat. Uh, you feel yourself in internalizing all of the steps and missteps that you've gone through over these past six, seven months, um, trying to find your path, rediscovering yourself and what you have to to prevent yourself or any of your friends from following the fate that you once did, and explaining to her that your love never left and that this was all with the ultimate purpose of achieving her ultimate purpose as her instrument, and you wish not to cross that again, and if there's any way to, to redeem yourself, to let it be known to you. Um, at the end of that period of time, you feel, since you've lost that connection with Underdark, that thread reconnect. The warmth fills you, and the sweat stops as your entire body seems to be humming with energy, and for a brief second in your face, uh, in your eyes, in your vision, you can see the beautiful gold gleaming fire wreathed head of Saren Ray smiling at you, and she reaches down and touches the side of your cheek and says, Be forthright, be grand, burn bright and beautiful, and I shall always be at your side. <gasps> With that, she releases your cheek and vanishes, oh, the vision gone in the temple, and you can see about two other clerics that were in their silent, muttering prayer have gone quiet, and they're both staring at you with a look of like, what just happened? <laughs> okay, yay, yay, yay. You look down at your holy symbol, and that one giant fissure that had cracked has resealed itself. Oh, yes! Oh, yes. Oh. Hey, man, that was, that was my new special Celtic die that whoever sent this to me. <laughs> You celebrate by shitting on a bed. It's <laughs> <laughs> a cultural gnome thing, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, how so? Well, to start things off, then, how is Liam's foot? 
It's going Who's okay. I'm so sorry. Who? Who's this Liam guy? I'm, what am I saying? I mean, <laughs> how is Vax's Vax. foot? Vax. Um, I'm as not sure who as you is. step out, uh, that foot's great, Ashley. Thanks. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> as you step out of the central uh, chamber of the Temple of Saren Ray, uh, Vax has been waiting there for a while. Wanted to actually ask for your aid in this. Um, as as you see her her step out of the main chamber, Vax, she has a look of, of serenity in her face. You haven't seen him quite some time. Is this the moment? Hi. Should I take my, my shoe off? Yes, Vex, Vex, don't Vex, do it. Get my shoe off. Don't do it. Here, just sit on this rock, okay? <laughs> take off your shoe. For the first Ooh. time you're safe. <laughs> <laughs> and he does. He it's disgusting. <laughs> Proud of you right now. <laughs> and, and so... It's still, you know, it, it feels strong, but it, it's, it, you know, it itches. It itches me. It, it how should I say it? It, it irks me <laughs> still. Uh, perhaps maybe you could give it one more try today. You seem to have a bit of a glow about you. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, 30. So 30. 30 points of healing. As, she, as you're saying this and you're kind of stuttering this out, she kind of goes into a singular trance, clutches her holy symbol with one hand and reaches out and grabs your foot with the other. Um, her hand almost burns at the touch. This is something you, you, you instinctively pull back on, but her grip is like an iron vice, and you cannot release yourself from it. And as she just intensely focuses forward, you can see this glowing divine energy transfer from down your forearm into your foot. Fear reaches you suddenly, because you don't understand the divine, and though you've seen some crazy things, this is a little worrying. You've, you've seen some shit. Um, I want you to go ahead and make a medicine roll with advantage. Medicine roll. It feels like icy hot. <laughs> Scent of Vicks Vapor Rub hits your system. Another one, you get advantage, you can do it again. Oh, man. That's a lot better. Uh, 24. 24. As she releases her grip on you, the, uh, the energy fades, her eyes tend to come back into that natural, soft, pike uh, image you're used to, and looking down at your foot, you can see any noticeable sign of scarring damage is completely gone. Your foot is whole, intact. Yeah! And, and, and your Jimmy. nails have been painted oh. red. Hey, and you know what? Red nails. I'm going to stick my foot in my sister's face. Yay. Uh, thank you. I'm going to miss that bit. It doesn't even smell bad anymore, so thank you. <laughs> well, not so fast. <laughs> Percy. Uh, yes. Uh, you want, wait, how many, you have time probably to, to, to attempt three arrows. I'm going to try for three exploding arrows. And All I've right. built one before. Yes, you have, I know. And I'm keep keeping that in mind. Thank you. Materials per arrow will cost you 50 gold. So I'll another give 150 it to you. Gold? All right. So 150 gold for materials. You have your, your goggles on. I won't even haggle with you, Percy. I'll just give it to you. Well, <laughs> I mean, hey. well, you know, yeah. you know what I mean. No, I mean. Oh, I'll I certainly gold. do. I know exactly what you mean. Yes. No. That's going a bit beyond winking. <laughs> So com coming off of the high, of, now I'm nervous. Though. Coming off the high, of completing your grappling arrow, uh, you sit down. You're, you're alone uh, in the middle of your workshop. It's, it's hot in there. It's, it's subterranean. You have the, the glow of your your candlelight around you. You have your goggles on, your your blacksmith leather gloves on, and you're just tinkering with the delivery method of these small concussive arrows. Go make your first roll. Um, eighteen. Eighteen. Uh, with deftness, you rapidly complete the first arrow, uh, wrapping up the, the powder charge, the impact point, and the arrow itself waited to be uh, fair and balanced to be flung from a longbow. Make your second roll. Nice. Like Fox News. 15. 15. Second arrow. Takes a little longer, but you still manage to keep the flow going. Completed fine. Third and final roll. Come on, Percy! Natural 20. Oh! oh! That's an extra special arrow. Not only did you complete this in record time, but the arrow itself looks beautiful. It could be, it could be a display case item. Does it do extra damage? Uh, you find out. <laughs> but I have extra damage. To but, I, but I would mark that arrow separately from the other two. You would mark it. Mark it as two exploding arrows and one exploding arrow this with a star pretty. next to it. Okay, yes. I'll do that. Yeah. All right. So, so you, have, you have a grappling hook arrow. Two exploding arrows and one exploding arrow with a star. Come here, you beautiful bastard. I'm getting to kiss everybody in this game. I'm like, I've <laughs> already made my way through siblings. This well, is getting well, so, All right. So all right. That's so true, you have. Oh, you've been to that party before. I've kissed the twins. I, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Why? All right. Any other business you guys wish to? No, is there, is there a tavern nearby? It's just quick, quick question. There are many taverns. The one you know the best is the Laughing Lamia, which you guys previously stayed at. Is uh, the you... biggest one? It's pretty large. It's All pretty right. large. I'd like to walk to the Laughing Lamia and knock the doors open and as loud as I can go, listen up! I want to know if anyone has seen any Goliaths wandering around these parts. Uh, aside from me. Do you wish to do this via, <laughs> via conversational persuasion or, in, or through intimidation? Uh. Because there are two ways you can go with this crowd. And you're wearing the, the belt that makes you extra persuasive. Uh, persuasive. Only with dwarves. Yeah, only with dwarves. Yeah, we, oh. well, maybe there's some dwarves hanging around. There might be some dwarves. Yeah, so, how you doing? Okay. okay, make persuasion roll. Can I be with Was there also a watch? grappling arrow person? <laughs> sure. Okay, I'm with I'm with you, Grog. Just watch him. I'm still enchanting. Yes, you are. Possibly reusable. <laughs> Can I go Ooh. read my yeah, you are. book? <laughs> I get a I got a four. Uh. <laughs> with the belt. This is. <laughs> this is you what I, dice I grow, are you rolling? I grow a giant pubic mane from the belt. <laughs> Enchanted Dude, Merkin plus two. <laughs> You gotta check your balance dice, man. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, uh, as you burst in and shout this to the group, everyone kind of stops and turns and looks. And then goes right back to drinking in the conversation. There appears to be no immediate reaction. I, can I jump up? I jump up on a table and I say, Listen, you motherfuckers! My friend just asked you a fucking question! Now fucking answer him, or I'm gonna kill every last motherfucker one of you! I listen to him. He means it. Can you do that? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> is this a 20? Come on, yeah. Sam. Yeah, please be good. I Come on, Scan. That would be a 30. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, no. Amazing! Yes, tw 28. I, I added wrong. Right. 28. 28. Oh, well, that makes the difference. <laughs> so, uh, in, in, in an unseen display, the Goliath storms into the bar and makes no impact, yet the tiniest gnome <laughs> jumps onto the table like a ravenous wolverine, frothing at the mouth, his wild eyes staring about the dark interior of the Laughing Lamia. Uh, all the patrons at the table around him, you can see, <laughs> lean back in fear, uh, caught off guard by this entirely, one man holding a drink just drops it, and you hear it shatter on the ground. Um, everyone gets quiet again, but stays quiet. Even the, the small band playing in the far corner, you hear like, ah! discordant sound as all instruments break to a halt. The dancer stops, the whole room is dead silent. At which point, uh, a, a nearby uh, halfling, you can see, he's kind of unkept, kind of farmer tan looking fella, looks up at you and he goes, Um. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you <laughs> for your forthrightness and honesty. Uh, at which point, a hand claps your shoulder. <laughs> you uh, look over, and there's, there's a human there, a uh, bearded older man in his 40s, uh, his hair trimmed very, very short, kind of crew cut almost. He's wearing uh, what looks like a, a patchwork scale mail, almost like mostly leather, but there's a lot of chunks of scales put around it, and he looks scarred and, and, and weathered. And he's. I've traveled this land quite a bit, and I've heard the roving bands of Goliaths have been attacking folks up north in the trade routes. Ooh. I haven't seen any near Ramon, but where occasionally you'd hear of the mountain folks staying up north, it appears they're getting brazen and wandering southward. I haven't seen any myself, but I have a friend of mine that had an encounter once, lost half his traveling crew. Had to bury him out there. It was terrible. That sounds awful. You said up north, how far? Uh, just on the Silver Coat runway. That way south of Craghammer, on the way to Western. All right. Anything else you'd like to know, Grog? No, killer. <laughs> Thank you for your troubles. Here, let me buy you a drink. Like that, and he goes over and walks you to the bar, toss him a gold, he gets his ale, and, you know, I've always shot on gnomes, but today, I think you've represented him well. You, my friend, have good taste. <laughs> <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no so. Idea. That was amazing, Scandal. <laughs> For you, anything. Come on. <laughs> Grow a beard tomorrow morning. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, so, uh, we'll say over the period of two days, go by, uh, Grog, what's the percentage on your... 50% uh... chance. Go ahead and roll a percentile dice. Oh, we've never oh, done one of those before. Another 20? No, no a it's a percentile dice. It's, it's two ten-siders. There should be one that has double digits and one that has single. No. Mm -hmm. 
Or you can just do something. Both of them? No, yep. just one. Just one. Just roll. Wait, roll. <laughs> 60? 16, then roll another one. Oh. Double zeros. Cool. 100. That? That's a 100. Uh, well, yeah, four, then zero. it was a 60, and that was for the second digit. So okay. you rolled a 60. Okay, good. Um, all right, so over the period of the next morning, you wake up, excited and check, smooth as a baby's bum. Ah. Uh, uh, shit. I know. However, as the two-day period comes to an end, you guys uh, acquire early in the morning, that morning as you finish your breakfast, uh, there is a, a messenger comes to the front of Grayskull Keep. Uh, delivers a, a summons to the Council of Taldore. It notifies you that the package has arrived at the Council. <gasps> very, very quick, mm. to the point words, not very verbose, kind of in the idea of keeping it vague and secret. But do you, you know think, what it means. Do you think it's the model plane I ordered? <laughs> I think Probably, it is. Yes. Yes. Probably not. Oh. <laughs> oh. Just in case, huh? Okay. Well, should we go? Yeah. So Mark down, you spent two or four days of enchanting on that second year, and you mm -hmm. can get back to that if you manage to find yourself to some sort of a, a laboratory elsewhere, or you can return laboratory. to here. Can we, can we stop at, a, a, is Aluria, is oh. she here or not? Allura? Allura, uh, she might be in the Cloudtop District in her tower. You can, so, can inquire. We, uh, and we, do we, does she have helpers there do when we were there, do you remember? No, she was just herself. It was just herself? She runs it herself. Okay. Uh, in the last okay. two days, have I gone back to Gilmore to pick up my item? You got back. Your item was completed. Excellent. Uh, let me go ahead and. What kind of what kind of potion did you get? All right. It's a potion that, uh, when combined with when when consumed, can allow me to leave a mark of some sort, that possibly, I could use to. Have visions of w what is in the area. Ooh. All right, so uh, the mechanics of which I he had not like to get into at this moment. So he gives you the potions. It was a, a curious endeavor, um, but I think you'll be happy with the results. So we can spy Any you. chance to talk to you, Gilmore, leaves me happy beyond compare. Oh, stop it. Flatter will get you everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you have an erection for more than 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that potion so you can spy on Pike when she's naked? I am offended uh -huh. and terrified at the assumption that I would sink so low yeah, yeah. as to spy on yeah. my good friend and future wife, Pike, <laughs> <laughs> when, her, when her pantaloons are down. You laugh a little harder. Not <laughs> at all. Pantaloons? How dare you? How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> Have I ever spied yes. on a m member of our current party? Yes, you have. <laughs> no. A current party? No. Yes. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, all right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure you remember. Yes, I, okay. I, I do. Alright, so you acquire your potion. It, it's, it doesn't it's a, uh, oh. kind of a, uh, mm. um, I can burn for this back here when we're done. Brackish purple color and it's like a purple gray. Purple gray. Okay, yeah, I've got it. Version. Great. Thank you. Um, you go back to Karen, and indeed the armor is completed. It it's interesting. It makes Trinket look like a roly poly almost. Oh, because that's so cute. It's, it's these overlaid giant gray scales that overlap in an armored sections. Um, and you would imagine if she wanted to roll in a ball, and it would look adorable. Or he would. Um, but yeah, it, it's. The armor's completed. You really, Can really use want him as a, to be a girl. I don't know where I got it in my head. I don't. I just no. Thing. No, you know what it is. You know what it is. It's because it's because my bird I thought was a boy for the longest time. When we found out our bird was a girl, and so I got used to transitioning to she when I talk about animals. Since then, right? I apologize. Trinket is a boy. Trinket is a boy. And maybe you can roll into things now. It'll be awesome. Can you roll? We'll try it. Bears are known for the rolling capabilities. Uh, he's a on. special bear. <laughs> how, how, much, how much does Trinket weigh again? Like 600 pounds? He weighs oh, a lot. Right. Call it a bear roll. For but he's getting roll. heavier yeah, by the day. Bear roll. He's like 800 pounds. Trinket's pushing about 800 pounds. He's 800 pounds, so. He weighs more than rock. I can fastball special him. Fastball special Trinket. So Bass, bear the special. benefits of Bass, bear special. Uh, Bass, bear special. Trinket acquires an additional plus two in Trinket's armor class Yay. as in the previous armor. Yay! Uh, which gains awesome. from the bullet. That puts him at twenty. Yes, that's fantastic. <gasps> Trinket. Um, that's really good. 
Uh, also, uh, Trinket has resistance against non-magical bludgeoning damage. Cool. Awesome. So if anyone attempts to go after Trinket with a giant hammer or you know something that is a bludgeon type mace. damage, a giant mace, anything, if I ever attack Trinket with something that seems bludgeoning and you say, uh-uh, oh, is that bludgeoning? Call me on it, and it could be reduced by half. What if someone so tries if to? So if I did try to roll him into something, it wouldn't hurt him because that would much. technically be bludgeoning. Syria, yeah. okay. hitting what a if, wall, Trinket would be like, all right. What if someone tried to hit Trinket with a salmon? <laughs> that's also bludgeoning. That's fish damage. It's a different, oh, okay. a different <laughs> uh, arcane type of damage, unfortunately. It's like fire, lightning, fish. It's the whole thing. Uh, all right. Fire, lightning, fish. Uh. Let's go see the council. Let's, Let's go. All right, to did the I, council. Did I learn to the council. From my herbalism book. Uh, the book, the book, what the books are is you keep them with you, uh -huh. and if you wish to, uh, if you wish to reference them while taking any sort of herbalism role, they will they will essentially give you a, a momentary bonus to it. You'll be able to double your proficiency bonus for any rolls for herbalism, or to harvest any pieces of a creature. Go. So keep that in mind. Go. 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 Okay. All right. So Let's are, go. Are you, are you Let's go to the council. Huh? Are you proficient in herbalism? Um. Or uh, medicine? I guess it'd be not. Sorry, herbalism is. Uh, yeah, there's not herbalism. I mean, I'm sorry, it's all just nature. I'll say nature. Be nature. Ah, uh, we're from too many systems, too many games. Um, <laughs> so we'll say for for, for are you proficient in nature? Yeah. So it's a, so you double your Druid, proficiency. Yep. Yeah, you double your proficiency bonus on any nature rolls to do either of those things. Okay. Keep that in mind. All right. So you guys head to the cloud top district Yay. towards uh, the palace. In the center, uh, you ready to say something, Ryan? Do you, do you want to talk to Alora while you're here or not? Mm, um, uh, no. <laughs> okay. Um, you should talk to her. Talk to her. Why? She has no interest. She in looks me. really pretty today. It looks like she put some. Lips I'm sure on. Lady Kimo can satisfy any needs she has. <laughs> I think they're just friends, darling. Oh, you don't want to look back and regret what you didn't say. Go to <laughs> Say what you need to say. Uh, say what you need I mean, to say. I mean, sorry, we can stop by there. Yeah, yeah. I only have a question. It's, 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 it's nearly across the street from the uh, from the palace. So you, yeah. you head to the ivory tower. Um, you go ahead and you take the giant, you know, circular knocker on the door, hit it a couple times, and eventually Allura comes. Um, this time in, in what looks like more comfortable robes. She was kind of caught off guard. She has like a, I guess you could oh. call it a terry cloth or some sort of like big uh, fuzzy material. Um, her hair is a bit disarrayed. Comfy. She kind of opens the door. Oh, uh, hello. Greetings, I, I'm sorry. I wasn't expecting company. What time yeah. is it? Uh, at this point in time, it's probably about, I'd say 11 in the morning. Oh, she's uh, a late sleeper, I like it. On like a Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Roughly. Roughly. Yeah. Sunday. Okay. Sunday. Okay. Um, it, we we were about to uh, depart on a, another adventure and whatnot, and I was working on an enchantment on this particular uh, rush hour. One of those. Um, oh yes, yes, of course. Yes. It's an enchantment that's usually, you know, finished enough. I was wondering if, in our absence, your spare time, you could probably. Uh, put some time into finishing the enchantment while whilst we're away. That should not be a problem. I, I was intending to uh, to complete the circle of teleportation markings that I had promised you within your keep in your absence. Oh, so, uh, I could just waiting there as well. I could do both while I'm there. Thank you so much. Laura. It would be my pleasure, Tiberius. Is it? Yes. Oh, well, oh. 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 okay. <laughs> uh, well, I. I I'll bid you uh, for farewell, and I'll do press hesitation and uh, the local uh, uh, fl flower. I'll okay like, uh, for your trouble. Okay, uh, a, 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 pur a purple dandy, as it's called. It's it's a it's like a star-like purple flower. It projects itself from your hand. Hand it to her. And you see, she kind of like puts her hand in her face. Like, thank you very much, Tiberius. I appreciate it. You, you're, you're welcome, Millie. Kind of touches your shoulder and oh. gives you a smile, and then, best of luck, return safely. There is, we've been here too short to leave so soon, so don't stay long, please. <clears throat> please. Oh? Oh, oh. Closes the door. I shake his shoulders, look at you! <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh no! Do you want to go steady? If so, check this. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like me, yes, no, maybe. <laughs> 
All right, you guys make your way to the palace, uh, back to the council chambers where you met not but two days before. The, the entire council has not been summoned to this. Uh, it's just about half of the folks there. You see uh, the actual uh, sovereign Uriel is not present. Um, the individuals that are there, however, uh, you have uh, Tofor Bratoris, the uh, female dragonborn paladin, oh. is present. Uh, Seeker Asim Emring is present. Um, they are both in the room, as well as, and you notice this immediately as you walk into the, the, the green uh, meeting chamber, uh, there is two envoys that you haven't previously met. Uh, two humans, one male and female, dressed in silver and blue robes, waiting patiently with their hands behind their backs, and uh, beside them on the ground you see what looks like a large cube, about maybe uh, two feet by two feet. Uh, it's smooth, of like a chrome-like silver, the entire construct of this cube, with two, looks like, chain-like handles on each side of the box. Uh, and there is a very finely carved, uh, sapphire-inlaid pattern of design all over this box. It looks very ornamental and like it was a painstaking process to craft. Um, you gather immediately that this probably is the container of which was sent for, uh, from Vasselheim. Uh, as you get closer, you notice the, the carvings almost have like a snowflake-like pattern. It's this very geometric and perpetual, uh, almost, a, almost a fractal that continues throughout the entirety of the outside of the box. It's very intricate and beautiful. Um, the, uh, as, as you step into the room, uh, immediately uh, Tofor stands up and says, Ah, they have arrived. Good, I'm glad you all could make it. The envoys have arrived with the... Uh, the container for the horn, and I believe they are eager and ready to take you as their gods to see that this evil is rid of its land forever. Uh, Envoys, and she extends her hand, they both step forward. Um, the man, uh, young, uh, but very soft in voice and very stern and, and uh, uh, military almost. Hello, I am Scarbearer Vorak. I come under the Platinum Dragon and will be escorted along with you and our delivery. As he turns to the, the female who steps forward, uh, she's older, probably in her 40s, uh, long, uh, fine hair, brown, that kind of rests just past her shoulders. Her features are, are very, very fine. Uh, you can see almost like there is elven blood in her, but not completely, similar to your half-elf uh, compatriots. Uh, she steps forward, her piercing green eyes hit the group immediately, and she goes, Hello, I am Scarbearer uh, Desona, also under the Platinum Dragon, and will be escorting you on this mission. They both step back towards the box in a very ceremonial way. Um, everyone kind of looks to the rest of you. Oh. What? Hi, sorry, nice to meet you. Your name, Desona. <laughs> what? <laughs> Was it Vorak and Desona? Desona. Desona. Lovely to meet you. I'm Scanlan. I'm sort of the de facto leader of the group. Nice that to meet is you. not true. I am Tiberius Thorman. Hello, nice to meet you. My hey. second. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, Everyone looks at you. Oh. Oh. Percival oh, oh. Frederick Stein Kowalski von Musadero III. Hello. You they, call you call call they call me Percy. They call me Percy. They look about the rest of the group. Hello. Hi. And you'll be accompanying <laughs> us on this arduous journey uh, to the <laughs> north. No, where, where are we going? To, uh, Vasselheim, the northwest, Vasselheim. Uh, yes. in the, the the region of Vothansia. Oh yes. How? On the continent of Isilra. Oh, um, okay. It's quite a ways. Uh, uh, are we taking a sky? We're taking skyship? an airship of some sort. Yes, so. a skyship is to be provided. They look at the council, oh. and the council nods themselves, and uh, you can see a uh, uh, seeker at Emmering kind of steps forward. Yes, yes, uh, a skyship will be provided, waiting for you at the Skyport here in the Cloudtop District. Um, we're just awaiting one more. As he says that, the door opens again and you can see Lady Kima steps in. Uh, no longer in the gold armor that she had found scavenged from the interior, she's now dressed in proper uh, silver and blue inlaid uh, plate mail. Who is this? Lady, Lady Kima. Kima. Oh. Uh, she's wearing the same colors as, as the uh, the two envoys. You can see now this, the silver and blue theme of uh, Bahamut is very much on display in this traveling crew. Uh, sorry I'm late. Uh, it's, uh, I had to get ready, and she kind of... You, you know, look wonderful, Lady Kima. Yeah, you look wonderful, Lady Kima. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> quite, quite. 
Well, uh, I do we have, and she looks about the rest of the group with a look of somewhat dread, do we have the, um, the artifact? Oh, a moment. Oh, were we supposed to bring that? Yes, right. oh, okay. <laughs> the two, uh, The two scale bearers reach over and both at the same time place their hands on the top of this chest. You can see their fingers slip into these small holes in the sides and they lift and the box <laughs> kind of scrapes to this high-pitched metal against metal scraping sound opening up a chamber on the inside. You can see the interior also has the same similar scrolling uh, uh, carvings and engraving on, on the inside of the box you saw on the outside. Um, there is a, like a slight hum, almost, like a slight vibrational sound coming from the inside of the box. Kima looks to you guys, expecting like, shall we place the artifact in its container? Oh yeah, I'll get it. No, 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 I'll lift, I'll lift, I'll lift, I'll lift it up. Yes. Okay. We're putting it in the box. Yeah. Putting it in the box. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So uh, 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 it takes a moment. Uh, All the grace of a wee mount. The use of mage hand in a bag of holding is a very meticulous process because the bag of holding responds to the the thought command of what you're reaching for the moment you reach in with your physical hand. Uh, using it as an arcane tether, it's almost like reaching through jello to get there. So you have to uh, like really concentrate to get it through. Eventually. Your, the mage hand takes hold of something. You feel the tingling of something weighty in the grasp of your arcane focus. And as you lift out uh, there aloft, you can see the dark, twisted horn oh. of Orcus. Okay, good. As it's removed, this is the first time the council's really seen it at this point, and there's almost like a, a, an audible leaving of breath in the room, everyone, at its presence. Yeah, it's pretty horrible. Okay. What? Hold on a second. We're putting this in the container, right? Yeah, the box, yes. magic box. Okay, I'm gonna put it inside the bag of holding real quick. Back in the bag of holding. I'm gonna take off um, a tiny piece of uh, one of my uh, uh, tickets of uh, tele telescription, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna do. I'm gonna enchant it, and I want to do. And I want to uh, attempt to do an enchantment spell where I want to put it at the bottom of where I'm gonna the put box. The, the, the box, and if it's and if, if any weight is lifted from it, I'll know. Like like a like in a like if any like if any if there's old switcheroo, somehow. God, I so wish we still had the troll dick right now. Go oh, man, because <laughs> we're gonna uh, use the troll dick instead. Uh, it it is already enchanted. To re-enchant it um, is a difficult process. And plus, enchanting anything would take time, especially that which is essentially an alarm spell. You could do it, but it would. Take probably half a day. Okay. I think we can trust them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Plus, well, adding extra runes in there might jack up the enchantment they already put in the box. It's, it's, that's why that's a, it's a tiny piece of paper. Yeah. Right. I think we're good. But we're fine. If I can't do it, then I just want to. Right, right, right. That's fine. I'm smart. I, I put I'm it in smart. there. Yeah. That's a good idea. I mean, they, they had an alarm spell at your disposal too. That would yeah. be with the enchantment space. I don't know if you learned alarm, did you? No, I did. Yeah. So. Sorry. That'd be that'd be a little different. So I put it in the thing. Okay. All right. As, as the horn gets lowered into it, you can see uh, the runes on the inside of the box begin to glow and come to life with this this soft golden yellow hue, and the, the horn seems to be pulled into the box and held aloft in the center. Your mage hand no longer has any sway on it, it's now locked in place, just in the center of the box, with no seeming uh, physical anything holding it, it's just kind of locked there. Um, there's almost this creaking sound of air in there fighting between cold and hot. You're like <laughs> There's a small uh, physical battle between the temperatures as they take the lid, <laughs> lift it over and seal it shut. <sighs> the two bears lift the chains on the side and lift the box between the two of them. Kima looks back to the rest of you. So, onward. Kima, you're coming with us as well? Damn right. I haven't been back to my temple in quite some time. It would be good to see Vord. Kima, I'm wondering, uh, uh, who do we speak to? Who flies the ship? I don't know. I haven't taken a skyship in quite a while. Let's go. Let's I'm go excited. I know. I've never been on one. Uh, I, I, if, if we could, maybe we should ask if they could stop at Craghammer for a second. We could drop in and get online really quick. On the way really back. Quick. I think on the way yeah. Once the horn is off the, off the ship. You know, probably but, best yeah, but not I'm to here. bring it. But I'm yeah, saying, yeah. we can use the airship later on for yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah. Which is cool, like Teddy Rexburg. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
They have an airship. What is this airship made out of? Air and ships. And wood. It only and floats magic. a couple feet off the ground. Mm-hmm. It's not that big. Uh, <laughs> uh, can I? Can I? Can we, uh, uh, we can only uh, one. I pull, can I? I pull uh, Vex aside for one second. V. Yes. Yes. Before we go on this quick journey here, we trust all the f- people we are who's, who are sending this all along this journey, right? We trust the council. Uh, I believe so. I mean, we did a few insight. Okay. Things last time, but, I mean, but what we can we can do some more. We can no, no, no. no. Huh? I think we should definitely talk up the new gods and see what kind of people they are when we're on our way to the ship. How about that? All right, good again. Brother on the guy, sister on the girl. Oh. Or Scanlan on one. Oh, I'll no. take the girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take <Stop>. the guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys make your way out of the palace uh, towards the, the northwestern side of the Cloudtop District, and what you've seen is there is uh, one thicker uh, tower that is part of the wall that surrounds the Cloudtop District, uh, the, what is essentially the, the bastion of defense for the inner part of the city. Uh, there are these small pillars that hold up the wall. There's one that's very thick, and you've seen only a couple of skyships travel to and from. You don't see them in use very often, usually for very specific uh, modes of travel or reasonings of these employed. Um, but you can see this large tower that has uh, a spiral staircase in the interior that occasionally lets out in these small uh, windows across the entire length of it as it rises up hundreds of feet to the very top of the tower that surrounds this district. On the top you can see there is a platform that uh, extends outward on both sides of the uh, of the wall and you can just barely make out the top of what looks like some sort of a, a construct there. Um, as you make your way, following Kima up, the long spiral staircase, eventually through what seems like way too long to be traveling up a very thick spiral staircase, you come to what looks like a, 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 a like a trap door almost, like a wooden trap door. Kima uh, it huffs it over, ting, ting, you hear it slapping the other side, some of the chains clinking against the stonework, and daylight comes craning into this uh, spiral staircase. You all step out on the top, and immediately you're hit with the wind. This high up, there's like a, definitely a breeze that blows through, your hair being tossed a bit. Um, <laughs> Whoa! This is crazy! Uh, you see uh, roughly f- f- no, see five individuals standing, all in uh, gold and white uh, armor, uh, various types, and they are seemingly employees. They're at, currently standing, waiting for you. Uh, there is one individual that is more adorned in what looks like a captain's uniform, if you will, uh, and above them, with a bunch of ropes hanging from the sides of it, you can see what looks like a large, beautifully crafted wooden ship that has golden scrolling, this beautiful, beautiful elven-like golden scrolling across the entire uh, underside of this wooden ship. Uh, You don't see propellers, you see what looks like two almost wing-like protrusions on the sides of it, almost like two fans that open up that are probably used to guide uh, pitch Uh, At the very front of it, you can see what looks to be in the center of the ship, one large 10 to 15 foot wide blue crystal that is embedded in the front of the ship, and on the back, two more that are currently attached to the back side. These stones slowly rotate in place where they are, and you can see there's this slight hum of arcane energy that seems to emanate from them. You can immediately gather that these three blue stones are what holds the ship aloft. Um, silent and beautiful. Awesome. Um, as you guys begin to walk up towards this ship, uh, it looming about 15, 20 feet in the air, uh, the individuals sitting there all of a sudden glance over and notice, and the captain steps forward, reaches out his hand. Hi, I'm glad you could finally make it. We've been waiting for a good 30 minutes. I'm Captain Damon. I would like to welcome you aboard the Skyship Dira. Uh, we are traveling across the ocean. It's approximately a week's worth of travel. Uh, we have provisions provided for you. Uh, do you have any questions? Captain Damon? Yes. Just making sure like, that's Skipper name. Vera? Who is it? Who airship. Is it? The airship's called Dira. Dira? Dira. 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 Oh, the airship. I, I, I go up to Captain Damon and I, I put out my hand and I say, uh, Captain Damon, it is a very. P- pleasure is, is all mine. Um, a dirty shake. I, I was a, a deckhand on the Broken Howl, and, and we heard of, of many adventures that you had, and maybe you've heard of the Broken Howl, maybe you haven't, but... No, but I'm, I'm willing to hear. To, to ride on, on, a, on an airship, oh. so thanks. It's a pleasure to have you. Let's keep everything 
away from the sides. Oh, I, I was you about know. to say I run over and I run over to the side and look over the edge. Uh. Uh, well, Before he says, "You guys are still on the platform. He hasn't led you up onto the ship yet." Oh, oh, um, does the platform have like a ledge I can look over? Yeah, <laughs> like the Empire State Building. Yeah, you can do that. I want to do that. Okay, I, as you do, like, um, you you really shouldn't do. She shouldn't do that. Guys, this is really high. She really shouldn't Dude, do that. It's really windy. I, don't, I run it's up all behind right. her and I grab fly. her shoulders and scare her. <laughs> I climb up on the ledge. Okay, as 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 you're climbing up on the ledge, <laughs> Grog comes over and goes, boom, and shoves you and gives you a scare. <laughs> <laughs> Grog! Did you pee a little bit? <laughs> like a little bit. At which point you can see the captain's like. <gasps> <gasps> Don't worry, Captain David. Guys, hit. guys, you should try. She can no, fly. Grog, Grog, hold change. the edge of my shirt. I wanna, I wanna feel like, I wanna feel like I'm flying for a second. Okay. Uh, <laughs> if we could all please make our way to the ship, we need to leave post haste. It's so cool. He slowly <laughs> face palms okay. and kind of glances at Lantine and goes, "A week. A we week. Have a week. Yes. All right. Um." You, you have flown this. before. You do remember that, right? I know, but I'm always an animal. It's true. <laughs> as they're, as they're doing this, I want to go to the opposite end so I can get like, because this is beautiful, the airship, right? And there, and, and I want to hold out my staff. And I'm, are you gonna take and, a selfie? <laughs> and I'm gonna cast. I'm gonna cast image selfie capture uh, of me. Image capture? Yes. <laughs> That's a thing. It is, it is in, in Draconia. Selfie <laughs> to get yes, all are. of them and the airship. Uh, while they're doing it. <laughs> you use your prestidigitation to temporarily capture an image of yourself at the edge of the top of the tower. And the airship is in it too. In doing so, the DM imposes disadvantage on your next two rolls. Oh! oh! No, nobody, it's fine. Nobody it's fine. likes a selfie stick. It's fine. I just hate selfie sticks so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about selfie staff? Selfie staff. Selfie staff. Selfie staff. Selfie staff. Selfie staff. I'll let it pass. It's a, it's a temporary image. It's how I can hear all of it. <laughs> it's a temporary image. Try Look, everyone. Oh! oh. That's a good one. That's a very good, good one. Good you hear this loud whistle, this wee oh, kind of whistle. Oh, 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 and the captain yes. you see is blowing on this this, this like loud metal whistle around his neck. All aboard! Oh, all aboard! Thank you. To the demo, folks, and everyone starts uh, climbing up the ropes that oh, are underneath the, the ship. If you guys need any help, I can totally help. <laughs> <laughs> I can captain totally Damon. do it. Captain Damon, <laughs> uh, just morbid curiosity. Are you married? Do you have a steady girl? <laughs> He, he looks at you <laughs> with surprise, confusion, worry, <laughs> shakes his head out of misunderstanding, What's his ear. What? <laughs> Never mind, we'll talk later. I... All right. Oh God. He looks entirely side blasted by that. He was not expecting that question. <laughs> not, nothing negative, just really confused. Um, so as you all climb your way to the deck, you get on top of it and it is, the whole deck has this strange kind of slow floating sensation, yeah. and once you're on the deck, you could hear this like this crackling hum around the uh, the large blue stones hey, that hold it along. How did Trinket get up if we had to climb ropes? Uh, we will say <laughs> there are ways, and, and, and if you ask this question, like how do we get Trinket up? Uh, they go ahead. Winches. Uh, they, I'll say no. The, the, the captain kind of gets back on off the ship, goes over to the side. And what you did notice in the far end of the platform, there is like a large crane-like structure. Oh. Um, the you actually you raise up Trinket in a small sling-like contraption. You okay, darling? <laughs> Trinket's like, you know, was bad enough trying to fly when you guys were in the underdark. Yeah. Now Trinket, yeah, just paddling in the air, absolutely, as, as, as the crane contraption rings, brings Trinket back over and lowers him onto the deck. Of, uh, of the airship, uh, Dira. All right, all right. Eventually releasing. Right. Trinket is now on board and looks noticeably uncomfortable and is like in the center of the ship sitting down. That when he's nervous. <laughs> um, all right, everyone on board? Yes. 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 All right, to your quarters underneath. To our we set out now to Vasilai. He blows his whistle a second time. Uh, all the hands kind of separate. Most of them go under the deck. Uh, uh, where's the, the box? Where's the box? Are we keeping an eye on the box? Yes, uh, you can see now the uh, the, the, the two uh, scale bearers are carrying the box underneath. Uh, and on the deck, you can see there are doorways that lead into various uh, levels underneath the deck of the ship. There is a large you know cargo kind of uh, lattice section in the middle of the ship where they're putting larger things down below. Uh, there is the actual. Uh, wheel of the ship is on the back end, on the elevated uh, back end of the entire ship, and that's where the captain stands up to. As the rest of the hands bring all the ropes up from the side. I wanna, I wanna stay on top, but I feel like I should go to keep an eye on the box and see and it's make up to sure. You guys. <gasps> but as as the ropes are brought up, everyone gives a thumbs up on the sides. 
<clears throat> he reaches the, the front of the uh, of the the ship's wheel. You see, he takes something from his neck and places it into the center of the wheel. At which point, the three uh, blue stones spark with additional life. <laughs> the humming gets louder. The ship lurches for a second and begins to lift upward with this slow, gradual uh, sensation. All, all of you at once, your stomach kind of gets that butterfly sensation for a second. At which point, the captain. Leans forward. The actual uh, the the wheel moves forward slightly, and the whole ship <laughs> lurches forward, <laughs> up and over Iman. And those of you who are on the deck, you can look below you over the side. You can see the entirety of Iman from above, slowly drift away as the endless ocean of Osmit, the Osmit Sea, comes towards you. Clouds ahead, beginning your trek to the distant land. I can see my keep from here. <laughs> oh, and you can. Can we see Castle Grayskull? You can see it's a little blip from here, and it's slowly vanishing, oh, but you can definitely see the key. Hi, hi, Grayskull key. We've gotten to sleep there for two days. Oh, I wow. know, bye. All right, and on that note, we'll go ahead and take our bathroom break. We'll oh, fast take bio rest. Five minutes? Uh, this will be about 10 minutes, because I haven't actually eaten yet either. I haven't had time. Oh, I'm going to eat the wonderful food, food that you guys food. provided. Yeah, thank, thank you so again for dinner. Food. It's so good. Chat bought us an amazing, oh, amazing oh, spread. So thank you. Oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. Overlords. Hello, hello. Overlords. Oh, you guys can go on your break. I can, okay. I can, uh, He's got this. We'll see you guys in a moment. I got this. All right. Oh. I got it. Guys, we have uh, one more Soul Hunter's key to give away, and I think we're just nine subs from that. So we are nine subs away from doing another book, uh, signed book, and signed photo giveaway as well. And that'll, huh? Eight. Eight, eight now. I stand corrected. Uh, guys, thank you for tuning in. Um, you can still donate to 826LA if you, uh, they can post that donation link in the chat room for you. Um, we will not be reading donations tonight from anything less than $20 just so we're not here for another hour. Because that's yeah. it's a lot yeah. of messages. So $20 and up and we'll read it. We didn't plug 826 at the top either. We, we did not it. plug 826 okay. at the top. So, so yeah, for those of you who might be new, those of you who are veterans, you already know, but 826LA is our charity of choice. They are a after-school nonprofit program for kids K through 12th grade, and they focus on creative writing and imaginative storytelling, and they're right up our alley. And they have awesome storefronts. They have um, the one in Mar Vista and one in Echo Park if you are a LA local, and there's probably an 826 in why, your area. Why don't you and I go film a video with them at their storefront that we could play in the in-between parts yes. of the show? We need, and I messaged them about that, and they're totally down. Let's do it. So, yeah. Um, so we'll hopefully have a video for you guys soon that could show you a little bit about 826LA and who they are, so we put a face to the organization that you guys are donating to. Um, the other thing I would like to say is, what, Lucas, we're 200 away from 4,000? Well, what? Right? Uh, 207. 207, to be technical. Um, if we get to 4,000 subs by the end of tonight, I will come up with something crazy because that's kind of a crazy goal. It's kind of stupid crazy. I know there's a lot of you watching. Just so you guys know, this channel runs off subscriptions. Uh, that is how we pay our hosts. That's how we keep the lights turned on. That is how we do everything. Um, we have a lot of shows on this channel, uh, lots of different types of content. We have shows about movies. We have shows about comic books. Um, it's very different for a Twitch channel. We're trying to do things a lot differently. Um, that being said, we don't accept donations. All donations go to charity 100%. Uh, we do not take any percentage of uh, charity donations. So subscriptions are the way that this channel keeps running. If you like this show uh, and you like our other programming, you should subscribe. That's what keeps us going. We're trying to get to 7,000 subscribers because that's what will make us break even and start being able to experiment with newer and much larger programming outside of what you already see here. So if we get to 4,000 by the end of tonight, man, what's something crazy that I could do? Um, that would, what, what's that, Liam? Streak. Streak? Thanks, Liam. Yeah, that's great. Not a good idea. <laughs> we want the Twitch channel to continue on, not get shut down immediately. Um, what if, uh, here's a crazy goal, because I know it's, a, it's like 200 away, that's almost impossible, but if we get there, I will make, uh, and just so you guys know, I made the Critical Role intro video, so um, I could make a music video 
from the cast of Vox Moronica um, set within their world with a song that Alex Neat, Iffy, and I uh, could come up with, and then we could film a music video um, basically talking about our escapades that continued on after the show the other night. That seems crazy enough. That seems crazy enough. That's a crazy goal. It would be fun, but pretty crazy and ridiculous. So I could do that, and I could have all of our Critical Role guests uh, featured in the video as their characters in some way. So 200. Piece of cake, right? Piece of yeah. cake. Yeah. Sure. We get 200 subs. Sure. Not a problem. Right, guys? Uh, I'm going to ask that Lucas roll a couple commercials because those commercials help the channel as well. And after that, uh, we'll roll a couple of those intro videos and come right back for you guys. Listen up. If you have ale, then you have a friend in Grog Strongjaw. A goliath of towering height and size. This barbarian has an appetite for the two great loves in his life. Combat, women, and ale. <laughs> Wait. Easily the brains of the group, Grog is often consulted for his vast knowledge of shapes, colors, and <laughs> shiny things. Also ill. In his early years, armed with his two-handed great axe, Grog often enjoyed proving his might amongst the ranks of his family's wandering herd. But after coming upon an unsuspecting elderly gnome in the woods, he objected to the killing of such an innocent life. A creature of impulse. Grog felt only pity for this, <laughs> this terrified little thing. His disobedience cost him dearly. Beaten bloody and banished by the herd leader, his uncle Kevdak, Grog was abandoned and left to die. Exiled from his herd, it was then that the relative of the very gnome he fought to save, saved him. It was the kindness of a known cleric named Pike that healed Grog, bringing him back from Death's Edge. And they have remained close friends ever since. Most nights, Grog can be found challenging entire taverns to wrestling matches, <laughs> or, or accompanying Scadlin to the nearest house it, where you pay for lady favors. <laughs> oh, also ill. A first impression of Keyleth would leave you with little information on the half-elven druid. You might even think that her social awkwardness due to her sheltered upbringing is kind of sweet. <laughs> of course, it would be unwise to underestimate her based on first impressions. Under that unintimidating, petite frame is a vicious beast waiting to be unleashed, whose natural powers have made even the fiercest of champions pee their pants. Literally. <laughs> Born to the air tribe of the Ashari people, Keyleth was raised with a deep love of nature and the elemental magics. It is her people's inherent duty to protect the delicate areas in Tal'Dore, where the four elemental planes begin to bleed with this realm. Since she was a little girl, she had quite a knack for air manipulation and bee-shaping abilities. Well, if you consider kittens and flying squirrels to be little beasts, which I do. <clears throat> Anyways. It wasn't long before the headmaster of the tribe, her father, Corin, realized her true prodigious abilities, and she was inveterated to secede him as the next headmaster. 
Just like that, her jovial childhood was stripped and replaced with endless spell memorization, teachings from ancient traditions, and exceedingly high expectations. Every druid leader-to-be must embark on a journey to seek out the sister tribes in order to introduce and establish respect amongst the fellow headmasters. They call this the Aramente, or Noble Odyssey. When her father felt she was ready, he set her on the path to truly discovering herself, not knowing when or if she will ever return. As she hiked down the mountain towards Stilbin, she meditated on the task ahead. Part of the Aramente is proving yourself a strong warrior, a valiant protector, and a wise and compassionate leader. With this knowledge, one thought plays in repeat in her mind. Is she even worthy? Percy was the third of seven children, born to a noble family who lived far to the north, in the ancient castle of Whitestone. With so many siblings to share the burdens of lordship, Percy turned his attentions to the sciences, engineering, and naturalism. One day, a mysterious couple named Lord and Lady Briarwood came to court. During a feast held in their honor, the Briarwoods violently took control of the castle, killing or imprisoning everyone who would stand in their way. Percy awoke chained in the dungeon, only to be freed by his younger sister. Together they fled, chased by the Briarwoods' men. As they ran, Percy's sister took several arrows to the chest and fell. Percy kept running, eventually jumping into a freezing river and floating unconscious to freedom. He did not remember waking up on a fishing boat. He barely remembered the next two years as he slowly made his way as far south as possible. Then one night, Percy had a dream. A roaring cloud of smoke offered him vengeance against those who destroyed his family. When he awoke, Percy began to design his first gun. Pike grew up in the outskirts of town, near the Bramblewood. Her ancestors were a family of deep gnomes with quite an unfavorable reputation. Thievery, destruction, and trickery left them with the curse of the last name Trickfoot. Saren Ray, the goddess of healing and redemption, had other plans for Pike's great-great-grandfather Wilhand, who left his family at a young age after a dream. A dream that changed the course of the Trickfoot family. Will Hand devoted his life to Saren Ray, and pledged from then on that him and his family would live a life of service and devotion. As a child, Pike seemed to have an affinity to heal. Whether it was animals, people, or even flowers, she felt she had a purpose in making things whole that had once been broken. She studied and learned the ways to heal through divine magic. She lived a peaceful life, quiet and simple, until one day, Wilhand was captured and almost killed by a group of Goliath barbarians. One of the Goliaths took a stand against the murder of the innocent gnome, and he himself was beaten, bloodied, and left for dead, abandoned by his herd. Wilhand went to Pike for help. She prayed and healed this barbarian as best she could, bringing him back to life. When he awoke, she discovered his name was Grog Stonejaw. After that, they were the best of friends, a rather unlikely pair. Little did she know that in a few years' time, Grog would soon return the favor and bring her back from the clutches of death. After being killed in battle, Pike felt angry. She wanted to be stronger so that it would never happen again. She spent four months at sea, training with the men and women aboard a ship called the Broken Howl. Gripping her holy symbol in one hand, and her morning star in the other, this time, Pike is ready. Oh, you haven't heard of Scanlan Shorthalt? Well, gird your loins, ladies, because he has his eye on you. A talented musician, master of disguise, and dashingly handsome in his own mind, Scanlan sings songs almost as much as he sings his own praises. Born a poor gnome, Scanlan used his endless charm and soaring tenor voice to croon for coin and support his single mother. One day he was discovered by a half-orc promoter and joined Dr. Dranzel's spectacular traveling troupe, where he learned the ways of the world and honed his skills as a bard extraordinaire. A loner much of his life, Scanlan has never quite come to terms with the violent death of his mother at the hands of a goblin invasion. 
While his years on the road provided many, shall we say, educational experiences with the opposite sex, deep down Scanlan yearns for the one thing he's never known, the true love of a fellow gnome. Still, Scanlan considers himself a lover first, performer second, and fighter distant third. On the battlefield, he'll support his allies, but rarely draws blood, unless it's to protect fellow gnome, Pike. Count on Scanlan for a hearty laugh, a rollicking song, and a twinkle in his eye that melts hearts and makes the female swoon. <laughs> Greetings and salutations. I am Tiberius Stormwind. I hail from a town called Tyrix, located in the heart of Draconia, born from a politically respected family. At the age of 15, I succeeded in passing the Sorcerer's Rite, showing prodigy-like control of my magic. The judges and the Draconian High Council were amazed at how powerful my spells were for how long I had been training. At 20 years old, I was the youngest appointed member of the Magic Guild in Draconian history. For the next few years, I almost went mad from the malaise of being a guild member as it's rather boring. However, one day I happened upon a chamber, unused for quite some time. In the room were stacks of books and maps of the surrounding cities and areas around the known world. For months I would frequent the chamber and learned of artifacts from legend. After a long period of research, I made a list of artifacts that caught my eye. I brought these findings to the High Council and was told that all of the information in the chamber I stumbled upon was either believed to be fiction or unsolvable mysteries, and hence were lost forever. I found those answers to be unacceptable. A year later, I devised a ruse and managed to convince the city council to lend support in me leaving Draconia on a mission of peace and diplomacy for the surrounding kingdoms, going from town to town and making friends and allies in and for the name of Draconia. Being a red dragon born, I had quite the task on my hands in that respect, but it was exactly what I needed so I could explore the world and find these artifacts, as I felt the truth was out there. Some may describe me as buffoonish, but I say poppycock to all that. I am much sharper than most give me credit for. I just don't pay attention to things sometimes. I've also been known to be rather cunning, loyal, uh, happy-go-lucky. <laughs> And, well, dangerous. I can't help but show my true scales every now and then. But overall, I think I'm quite friendly for a dragonborn. <laughs> Never entirely welcome in the company of elves or men, Vax Eldan learned at a young age to skip past formality, preferring instead to invite himself in your door. Along with twin sister Vexalia, Vax was born by a chance encounter between elven royalty and human peasantry. Raised by their mother in their early years, the twins were eventually sent off to their father in the elven capital of Syngorn. But their cool reception among the elves there never warmed, and their time in the capital didn't last. The siblings stole away one autumn night and set out on the open road. After a few years of wandering, they eventually decided to return to their mother and journey back to the lands of their youth. But instead of finding their childhood home, they returned to a pile of rubble. Their mother was gone, their home burned to ash. Pressing the townspeople for answers, they learned of the day the dragon came. With their ties all severed, Vaxildan and his sister set out to find their fortune together in Taldore. An outsider since birth, Vax quickly learned to solve life's challenges in his own particular way, often by sidestepping them entirely. And when his knack for circumventing adversity isn't enough, the way of blades the elves schooled him in more than makes up the difference. Like so many half-elves, Vexalia has spent most of her life suffering the cool reception of a people who don't fully accept her. Born of a human mother and an elven father who only later in life took an interest in their existence, Vexalia and her twin brother Vaxildon quickly realized the only people they could truly rely on in this world were each other. It was at the age of ten when the two were taken from their mother and brought to live in Syngorn, the isolated elven city for which their father was an ambassador. He quietly took them in, but always kept an icy distance, and after too many years of disdainful looks, the pair decided to leave his indifference behind and set out on their own. Vax took to the cities, stealing small trinkets and learning the ways of the thief. 
while Vex kept to the woods. She preferred the isolation. Always the keen observer, she learned to hunt and to track, to spy and to shoot, and through a series of fateful events, earned herself a companion in the form of a bear. Her own stolen trinket, to fight alongside her and protect her fiercely. Also, he is adorable and gives expert massages. Welcome back. We have eaten, we have had drinks, we have used the restroom, and now we return to adventure. While we were gone, I hear that there is a ridiculous thing that our wondrous overlord uh, put uh, as a subscriber opportunity. Um, what? what happened? If, if we get somehow get to 4,000? We've already gotten 70 subs since I announced it. Okay, what? if we can get to 4,000 subs tonight, so we're going to have Iffy yeah. and, and, and uh, el people of elements of the Vox Moronica crew that did our, our quick little one shot at the, the DM episode create a rap and shoot a music video uh, that will include one time us. Offer. You're going to let it slip through your fingers? We're going to do that? That will include us? That will include us in, in some way. <gasps> we're going to shoot a rap video? We're going to shoot a rap video? If, if they get to 4,000 by the end of the show. Can we do it like it's from 1993? I oh, I'm gonna yeah. do it however the fuck I want to do it. That's ridiculous. And, uh, I don't think we're gonna make it, but that'd be. You guys at Vox Moronica will look much better in the video than you guys will. It's just. Like oh, that's okay. Oh, it's gonna be like. Why would we agree hey, um, to it? Is this a challenge? It's gonna be like a role reversal so thing crazy. in like an alternate universe. I think the Overlord just threw down the gauntlet of Vox Moronica looking better than Vox Machina. I think. In the music it's video. On. I think he underestimates how naturally pretty we all are. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're underestimating how naturally ridiculous that crew is. Yeah. So it is It is a good challenge. It is, it's a tough call. Classic so dwarven fundraising technique. <laughs> Classic <laughs> fundraising. Classic. <laughs> Thank you kindly. Yeah. Mm. Mm. The DM presents are nice. It's delicious brandy. Thank you. Oh, wait, brandy, guys. cake? The brandy is. I want that cake up in her. <laughs> Wait, wait, you want wait, this wait, cake? Wait, I want it. Special. You want it's this special. cake? It's special. There you go, sorry. Uh, a little internet there for you. a glass of that grog? No. Nope, none for you, darling. What? what? Oh. Take a sip, take a sip. One for uh -huh. that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, welcome back. Let's get back into the frame of things. Quick reminder, uh, we still have giveaways. Every 50 giveaways, we give out a signed player's handbook and a signed cast photo. Uh, we also have the shirts for sale on the Teespring. Yes, shirts, 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 yes. shirts, two weeks and counting. 13 days left. But they're cool. And, um, are they out now? And, yeah. yeah, and oh. Soul we Hunter made Keys. those in on a V3. Yes. Soul Hunter Keys have been going away, but for those who missed it earlier, there's a new app out called Soul Hunters that I did some voices on. And uh, if you download the game and put in the promo code Critical Role, one word, you get a free character that I voiced as well. So check it out. Oh, by the way, I will say Soul Hunters is a misleading title because that sounds dark and ominous and it's a super time. cute game. Oh, that's a weird choice. I used that. Yeah, it didn't sound like, <laughs> wouldn't you think it would sound dark and ominous? Oh, that is a weird choice. It's like, like kind of feel like cute RPG. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no, more, no more keys. This is just the promo code they can yeah, use. Yeah. Cool choice. Yeah. 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 All right, so returning back, uh, you guys are now traversing the extended Osmet Sea towards Alphansia. Um, upon the uh, the skyship Dira, at the command of Captain Dane. How many days away are we now? Uh, I'd say you guys. We'll start at about two days into the journey. I'm going to spend that time reading my book. Yeah, me All too. Right. Um, I'll read books. All right. So you guys take oh. time studying. 
Uh, we'll we'll say you probably have a few more days of like eight hour days studying. We're going maybe about eight to ten hours a day if you wanted to take in these. I'll also um, go ahead and oh, you have this book, right? Me. Are you reading that book? I'm yeah, reading that book. It's over there. Um, I'm also materials to enchant with you though. Dope. I'm <laughs> going to make a few scrolls in my time. <clears throat> okay. As well. Um, what should I make scrolls for, guys? What's handy to have? Oh, well, when you, you gave me something much. once, it was really cool. But I think that was a spell. It's handy to, well, yeah, I can make spells into scrolls. Can you make something spells. that if we fall out of the sky, we don't die? Hey, you know what? You know what we always fall. need? You know what we always need? Anti-petrify. How to carry trinket on the goddamn carpet. Right, like, uh, yeah. the levitation and well, stuff. Well, you guys can shrink him. You have polymorph. Yeah, but oh, we always true. are like one body short of being able to pile onto the, the I'll make, carpet. I'll make... Can we mm. add like a little bit extra <laughs> square footage to the magic oh. carpet? Yes. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. I'll make a polymorph scroll and give it what to... What about a two. steampunk rocket pack for the bear? <gasps> This isn't um, World of Warcraft. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm working on it. Um, I'm working on it. How, how many, I'm working how many can on you make? It. Well, I can make, I, I just put like whatever spells I've learned for the day, I can put those, and I think like depending on the level, like a third level spell scroll will take me like four to six hours. Okay. So the higher the spell, the longer it takes. So if I spend two days, I can probably make Some four scrolls. Amazing. Four or five scrolls. Yeah. It's I like it. So I'm gonna definitely make, I'll make a polymorph scroll for you. Thank you. Let me first double check. We'll have a time process. Oh. Um, a scroll. While he's, he's looking this so up. I'm using Pathfinder. I am using Pathfinder. Add it to my inventory. I know we went shopping. It's exciting. I got, I got like, arrows. I got scrolls. Like a, I have a question about yeah. Trinket's new armor. Yes. Yeah. It has an area for yeah. me to ride on him still, right? Like the other armor. I forgot to mention it to you. <laughs> I mean, you can still. There's, it's not like a saddle or anything. But there's like the last one had like a, a divity thing, so like. Yeah, yeah. It was, it's, it's built off of the design of the original armor you had you had customized. So yeah, that is still there. Uh, is there a bow on this ship? Like a front? Point there is. Us? Yes, there is. Oh, Pike and I would like to go to the front of the ship, and I would like to stand at the front and put my arms out. And I'm gonna hold his waist. Yes. Go, yes. I'm the Goliath of the world. <laughs> Oh, he fell right off the front. No, I did not! <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Pike. Oh, I feel like I'm flying. You are, you are! <laughs> Look at the guns on that nose! <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. I can uh, spend the, the days uh, crafting another weapon, right? And I just need, like, whatever gold that would be. Uh, you, mean, you mean just crafting the, the jewelry element of it? Yeah. Because uh, the enchantment's not up, that's over there. Correct. Right? You, not, I'm just not doing anything. You didn't else. bring any crafting tools with you for that. It's not like crafting jewelry requires a specific set of tools. Stuff, to do that. Yeah. stuff, something. Okay. Right. Unfortunately, yeah. When you get when you touch down, you could probably try and find some in your vicinity. But yeah, the journey yeah. here. You know. Airship. You what about the ADM? Yes. Since, since Vax has nothing really to prepare ever, and he's in obviously peak physical condition. I'm going to spend the trip um, helping Keyleth, and if she needs any um, ingredients for whatever she's doing, I'll go get them. I'll hold things up for her. I'm just going to hang out and uh, try to help her get things done. You're so helpful, brother. I'm a little familiar. All right. Scroll making familiar. Not bad, not bad. I thought you were into Gilmore, darling. <laughs> I'm hard to pin down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the time being, because I don't want to spend too much time with the internet watching me <laughs> skin through the books to find the rules for uh, for scroll crafting, I'll save for the That's time. That's the best part. Yeah, I'll save for the time being. It'll it'll take you about uh, half a day to make the polymorph scroll. Okay. And uh, the material components that are required for the spells uh, putting into the actual scroll would run you about three hundred gold. Or so. well, okay. four hundred gold because it's, it's a four level scroll. How much? Level spells probably more. Four. Four. Four, yeah, so I'll say four. Of them. How much gold do we have left anyway? Well, I mean, I can use my personal, but we have very little party fun. I still have together. a little personal money left, too. Sure, um, that'd be I'll different make, later, but whatever. Through the ship, it's hard to get the materials. Uh, I don't, I don't, you don't need to. You don't need to it's fine, we'll be fine. No, don't, waste, okay. don't waste your okay. money. No, I'm going to do it. Oh, yeah. okay. No, that's what money's for. Okay. I'm going to do two polymorph spells. Ooh. All right. And give one, two, two. Vex and one to Tiberius. All right. 
both. I'm taking 400 out of my personal. Okay, I'll take 400 on mine. Oh, I still have. I, uh, I have 400. All of it. Okay. All right. Give me 400. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, <clears throat> I'm, sure I'm spending most of the time up near Captain Damon, watching him work. Damon. <laughs> uh, he seems very focused, mm. keeping the ship going. Uh, he does steer you around one thunderstorm that's kind of rolling by. He takes you on the wide angle around. Um, it's very relaxing, relaxing up here. It's a little cold, but it's uh, it's relaxing. Um, say uh, the beginning of day three, um, as you all are kind of resting underneath the hold, you're all shaken awake by a sudden lurching of the ship. Oh. All kind of. It just shifts in such a, a, a heavy way that you aren't expecting it. All of you are kind of pulled out of your stupor for a second and uh, begin coming out of your individual rooms to check in on each other and see what had happened. But apparently, the ship is or was had some sort of a shuddering physicality to it. I rushed to the box. I rushed mm. to Captain Damon. What the hell just happened? Uh, okay. Also, are you married? I <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Um, you rush to, to the box, and, and the, the room, as you, you go and you open the door that leads to where the box is, you can see in the room is Kima, and uh, both of the, uh, of, of the, 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 blah, 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 the scale bearers are there, reaching for weapons as the door open, and they see you and kind of relax for a second, and Kima goes like, what, what was that? What was that? I was going to ask you the same thing. Shit. I have no idea. I I'm rush out. I, ru I, rush, I rush out to the bow. I the also bow. rush to the deck. Okay, as you guys are rushing up along with Scanlan, everyone else rushes up. Uh, you come uh, to the uh, surface, uh, and uh, and we're just cresting into sunrise. Like the sky itself is mostly dark on one side, with the the blue slowly leaning into a bright orangish yellow to the other side. As as the morning light is starting to to slowly crest over the horizon. Um, as you get to the surface, you immediately notice there are. A handful of large winged creatures that are currently harrying the side of the boat. As you step to the surface, you see one just dives past you real fast. Um, you notice as one of them takes off in the distance, it was just a blur of, of quick moving wings, uh, but as it begins to flap away, it looks dragon like in its in its physicality. But it's smaller than any dragon you've encountered, but it, it's flapping giant wings and it comes by that screech as it takes up, and it looks like there's something on its back. What? You see two to three more of these now starting to dive bomb, and you can it's see the, nearest. the rest of the, of the, stack, the rest of the deck hands are up there now with weapons ready and are starting to fight some of these off. Um, can, you, can we use any kind of perception to see if the things on them are controlling them? Go ahead and make a perception check. I get plus two for any dragony things. Good to know. Uh, I'm going to. Um, uh, Tiberius, your brothers are here. Uh, I don't think I'm associated with oh, these. Okay. <laughs> Nineteen. Nineteen. Uh, glance at the back. Of the, even in the. What did you say? What? Twenty-six. Twenty-six. All right. Uh, between the two of you, you, you notice uh, uh, even in this low light uh, circumstance, there appear to be on three of these these winged dragon-like creatures, uh, smallish humanoid entities that are on small, almost like leather-strapped saddles that are put on the sides of this creature. Um, and they're clutching onto it, and each one of them is carrying some sort of large spear-like weapon. Oh. Um, there is a fourth one in the distance that does not appear to be a uh, dragon, or this one appears to be feather-covered in its uh, physical form. I, I'm, I'm going to... It, it, there's a, a big large one, right, though? Yes. which at this moment we are going to roll initiative. Can I do a nature check? Ah! You can. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, no. Okay. I, I, I cast Blur before any of that shit. <laughs> Let's see what I wanted to do. Hey. I'm just gonna keep rolling until I get a better number. I'm capable of having. <laughs> no. Do I do a nature roll first, or should I do an initiative roll first? Wow. Sweet. Can I do a nature check first? Uh, first, I want to place you guys. Uh, so you guys are coming up from below. I would quite. Oh my God! On the ship! Go. Whoa! Oh, cool. Cool. Look at that! Oh Dude, that's oh. pretty. Look at the crystals. Oh wow. I <laughs> like all of all of our yeah. viewers are just looking at our mid session. Oh, I've got to turn on Twitch so I can see it. <laughs> turn on Twitch. Oh, turn on Liam. Twitch. Here, I'll, pick, oh I'll, pick, I'll pick you up. I'll pick you up. Don't do it. Ready? Ready? It looks like the crystals are very like 3D in the picture. 
Matt, that's amazing. <laughs> this is like that that Java's uh, cruiser game that totally. came out. Anybody? Anybody? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. That. Alrighty. So. Oh my gosh. Whoa. As you guys come up to the surface, you can see these these three entities kind of swooping around and dive bombing uh, the remainder of the. Uh, the guard and the, the deckhands that are now currently like haphazard armor on, and they're trying to strike at these as they swing by. Let's go ahead and roll initiative, folks. Yeah. So, uh, it's all right. I'll take that. I'll take that. All right. So we have twenty-five to twenty. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Twenty. Uh, who else had their hand up? Twenty. Okay, so twenty. Right. Uh, 20 to 15? 19. 19. 20. <laughs> he heard got your 20. you. Got your damn 17. <laughs> uh, we Kerm, 19, 19. <laughs> uh, 17, you said, Keyleth? Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, 15 to 10? 15 to 10? 15 to 10. 10 to 5. Nine. 8. That's fucking embarrassing. What'd you get? We always what get the four? lowest. We yeah. always get the lowest. Four no. Hey, it's not bad for the cleric to go last. That's true, you know? All right. Uh, so, top of the round. Vex, you got this. Oh, okay. I'm going to do. They're all far away from each other, aren't they? Uh, they're all pretty spread out now, yeah. They're all. Recovering from what looked like a coordinated uh, attack, and you can see there appears to be what you normally see are about four to five deckhands. Uh -huh. There's only three up there right now with uh, Captain Damon. Jeez. They're either sleeping or what? not currently in the battle. What color are the dragons? Uh, from what you can tell, the, uh, the 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 dragon-like creatures, which as you get a better look at this moment, uh, you you know these. A lo large number of the draconian army utilizes these as mounts. These are wyverns. Oh. Um, oh. Uh, and they're they're all in a kind of ruddy uh, brown brass-like uh, coloration to their form. Best you can tell in this light. Uh, all right, so Vex, what are you doing? I am going to um, hunter's mark one of the ones with a rider on them. Okay, all of them have a rider, it seems. Oh, all of them? Yes. Even the one with feathers? Even the one with feathers. I'll go for the feathered one then. All right. Hunter's mark. Hunter's Boom. mark. But doom. Hunter's Did ring. You. Hunter's ring. All right. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna um. hail of thorns him at a level three. Okay. Yeah. What's the uh, range of that? That is. Uh, it just says ranged weapon. So whatever. All right. So my whatever range weapons is. range is. What's your weapons range for your longbow? Um. That is a really good question. I'm gonna <laughs> run forward. All right, how far are you gonna run? That looks that's, about that's right. About as, that's as far as you can go with your yeah. movement this turn. All right. I can, and that means I can like duck against one of those walls right. where the stairs is, right? Yeah. Okay. That'll help you out with that. All right. So the uh, the range of the longbow comes to 150. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. You're so you're fine. So. A regular attack. Yep, so roll for attack on him. Um, 17. 17 does hit. Yeah. Yes! <laughs> okay, so regular attack so, yeah. and then <laughs> also right. arrow, like thorn attack, right? Yep, so you okay. go ahead and roll the damage for the spell at level 3. Okay. Sweet. Oh, sweet. Oh, sweet. It's uh, gonna be hard 23, 23 plus my regular uh, 14. Nice, so a total of 37. Nice, and is that, that a radial explosion? Yeah, so that should get him and the rider All right. on the Hail of Thorns part. Good, so the rider itself also takes the damage. All right, 
So as you release the air, it arcs through the air, and you see the wind itself is very strong at this point oh, in the right. morning. Um, but you still manage, thanks to your training and the, the magical nature of the arrow that you fire, strikes true, slamming into the side of this giant. You can see it now flying with its giant beaked eagle-like head. This is a griffin. You've seen them occasionally, uh, usually wild, and stay away from them. This one appears to be used and harnessed as a mount. However, the arrow slams into it and detonates with a spray of, of, of magical thorns. You can see it kind of recoils back, giving this <laughs> screech sound. Mark. I said it! Three additional damage for Hunter's Mark on All right. that. I said it. Great. Uh, <laughs> all right, so that's your uh, bonus action and your first attack. You get a second normal attack, too. Oh, shit, yes. awesome. Let's do it. It just explodes and Thor's not fire or whatever. No. That is a 24. 24 definitively hits. Okay. Against the griffin as well? Yes. All right. Uh, 10. 10 damage, Alrighty. Got it. All right, so, so as the griffin's reeling back and trying to flap away, a second air shoot strikes it at its side and it screeches again in pain. <laughs> and begins to rise up over the actual area. Um, ooh, I get to use these again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it! <laughs> All right, so that ends your turn, I believe. You've moved and done everything else. All righty. Oh, I didn't move Trinket at all. You can move Trinket if you want, still. I want it to be near me. Okay, Trinket moves up to you, ready to guard yeah, angrily. Yeah, kind of blocking on the wall. Up in here? Yeah. All right, uh, that ends your turn. Next up, these guards all shift over to these three and Placements over here, you have large defensive bolts that are locked into the sides of the ship. And they go and they reach over into the barrel, and uh, you can see they take one out, and each one of these giant bolts has a rope attached to the end of it. And they start loading it into it, pulling back to prepare it for an attack. It takes their entire turn to do that, but now they're at the ready uh, to strike out against whatever they can manage to aim on. Is that is it also at the front of the ship? Is that what that one is? One at the front ship there, and one at each side okay. there. Okay. Uh, that ends their turn. Vax, you're up. All right, I'm running up right behind my sister's shoulder, and because of my assassinate perk, I have advantage on this because they haven't gone yet. Correct. So I'm going to click my uh, boots of haste uh, as I come up behind her, and dagger, 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 over her shoulder. I'll use my brand new uh, dagger of life stealing for the first time. Uh, uh, that was a 19, which is a critical hit for me. Uh, uh, you, you are at disadvantage in these attacks because they are beyond your 20-foot dagger-throwing range. Okay. Well, I had advantage for assassinate and disadvantage for the distance, so that brings me down to even. My first roll was a 19, which is still a critical hit for me. Uh, that is, uh, do you know how it works? <laughs> <laughs> assassinate. You have advantage, yeah, that's true, you do. They haven't gone yet. And no, it hasn't, and you have advantage, so that cancels it out. So yes, that first attack is a critical hit on this uh, this wyvern right here. What, what, what? Right over my sister's shoulder. Uh, so Warn me that. first! So here we go. Rolling dice in New Jersey. It's wonderful. <laughs> Rolling dice in New Jersey. Seven is ten. Uh, that's so that's a twenty for that. All right. And then I'm going to start slinging the other two daggers. All right. First one, it probably misses. It's a fourteen. A fourteen against it's the the wyvern. Well, I don't know. Do these get all get advantage? Uh, technically, that's a, that's another good question. Hey, look at Do this. All three of them before they go. It's true. That's why I'm thinking probably. I'm pretty sure you get advantage. In, uh, I'm thinking that. Yeah, on attack on attack rolls against any creatures not in combat yet. So yeah. All right. So then, actually, that was a twenty. All right. So that definitely hits. Okay. That is an eight, and the third dagger goes whooshing yep. right over uh, Vex's shoulder for a uh, twenty-seven. All right. This one is the poison dagger, of course. So that is a uh, uh, ten of damage, and then it's a DC of fifteen for poison. All right. Uh. All right, the dagger strikes true. You're uncertain if it's had an effect. Unfortunately, at its distance, it's hard to tell its physical uh, reaction to the impact. However, it seems the dagger seem to have making definite damaged uh, appearances to its physical exterior, and you see it recoiling from the attacks and begins to once again fly up as well to try and get out of range. I'm happy. All right. 
That ends your turn. Uh, it's now the Griffin's Where's turn. The Griffin and the Griffin Rider. Uh, oh no. The Griffin Rider and Griffin swoop down. Shit. Having it have its movement, it's going to attempt oh, to grapple. Uh, against grapple? that card. Grapple, grapple. Ooh, oh, no. oh no. Fails his check. Grabs. Oh no, he's going to throw him over the edge. Uh, grabs this guard oh, that's... into its claws. And then oh, flies the up and over this side. He's going to no! toss his ass over the edge. And yeah. is going to release it. Oh! Oh, you are shitting me! The, uh, Can someone have a reaction? Seriously tie ropes around if you have the waist something crazy. Can the, someone do anything? Like uh, a reaction? The, uh, the guard misses and uh, or fails fails to hold on tight with his, with his last reaction to try and grapple back. Oh, that's such dick. The guard, you watch oh, as, as the griffin swoops down, grabs him. Both of its claws and talons uh, wrapping around his shoulders, lifting him up and chucking him over the side of the oh, ship. You hear him scream. A, ah, as a bandit. reaction, can we freaking tie ourselves down to the boat? Uh, you, ha you, you have oh, no ropes immediately around you. You have I to do, go to the I side. The rope of you have nothing to tie it to at this moment. Shrink it. You have the pegs all on the side here where the ropes attach to for you guys to climb in. I so you could vines. do that. We could just attach it to all of ourselves and where we go one, we go all. <laughs> they take one, they take all of us. Uh, and with the last bit of the Griffin's flight <laughs> movement, because that was done to there. He, he would make it a difficult. He would be able to lift all of us. Well, he would make it difficult. He would have to, he would have to break against like, the could, strength section against the rock and stuff. has a moment to get back yeah. up to here. Oh no! All right, so now there is, there is the Griffin's current position on its turn. Um, that ends there. Uh, Tiberius and Grog both go. Um, okay. I'm going to move over here. Okay, so one, two, three, five, six. That's as far as you can get there. <clears throat> I'm still in range of that guy, right? Yeah. Good. Uh, I'm going to use uh, telekinesis to lift the rider off and tuck them off. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make your, your check plus your uh, plus five for the modifier. Oh, no. Uh, so that's no, but it's still okay. That's that's 16 plus my this thing. That's yeah, 19. Time. All right. So uh, the rider, which as you look over, you can so see, appears to be targeting. small and halfling-like in, uh, in physical form. You reach over with your telekinesis spell and concentrate the entity that's gripping onto it, holding the spear. All of a sudden, <clears throat> Gets lifted up and then flung off the side. Yes. I and I and I turn to the to the wyvern and I go, she saw me. She. And I in 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 a dragon speak or draconic or whatever. <laughs> I I, I say, fight with me or be free. Or be free. Or be free and be free. And or it can that meaning stay oh, fight with oh, me. Okay, yeah. Or go peace out. Okay. Right. It just sounded like Enya to me. <laughs> uh, make make an I'll say for this one make an animal handling roll. Come on. Oh. Natural twenty. No. <laughs> no not Advantage, because you're because you're a you're a dragon nope. Like Come on to the hood. Yeah. Okay. Good enough. Try again. Hmm? Did you have disadvantage? No, I had advantage. Oh. Yeah. Um. So. So <laughs> this oh. this. Halfling or Gnomish entity is now falling out of the air. Um, that ends Tiberius' turn. Grog, what's up? Uh, uh, I turn to the group and say, make, make sure someone guards the box in case it's a distraction. And then I rage. Mm -hmm. And I would like to run to the front of the ship where the captain was. As far as I can. Uh, the captain's the, right here. Oh, the captain's there? Yeah, it's in the back that of the was ship. The guard. Here. That was the, the guard got flung off the side. The captain's will, still up there holding onto the. I will run to the front crystal. Okay. If I can get this, 40, 40 feet. That's how far I can go. 40 feet, right there. Son of a bitch! It's, okay, it's but your like, rage is a bonus action. You can use your action to dash and go the rest of the distance. Double your movement. I wanted to tie myself to something, though. Oh, uh, okay. Tie yourself to something. You can run to the side and tie yourself What is that thing at the very front of the Ooh. ship? Right there? It's, a, uh, it's, it's, it's another one of these ballistas. They've all been set. This one has been set to fire. Just the person who was currently humming it got chucked off the side. Oh. <gasps> Ooh, you're is there, a, shooting, is, there guy. is there a railing on the side of the ship at all? Uh, there is a railing. It's about waist high. Um, and there's pegs to tie yourself to on the yeah. sides. Okay, I have Each a, one of these little I have 100 feet of chain. Could I uh, take the chain out of the bag of holding, wrap it around my wrist, and wrap it around the railing? And then that'll be all I do. Uh, Can I do that? Yeah, uh, you, the, the, your, with your movement you can get to there, unless you wanted to instead head over here and 
Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, so instead of going further up that valley, you go ahead and wrap the chain around there. Sure. Yeah. Chain around your wrist. You kind of tangle it in with your chain of returning. You go ahead and take the chain and wrap it around the side of the, the peg and pull it taut. <laughs> That's your turn. Okay. All right. That ends uh, Grog's turn. Keyleth, you're up. Okay. Um, I'm going to move my speed over here-ish. All right. And then would you say I have, I'm 60 feet within range of that guy? Oh yeah, you're within 25, 30 feet of him. Oh, am I? Well, let me back up a bit then. Just okay. Right there. That's, oh, I can walk across that. Yeah. Oh, fun. Um, it's 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 a wooden lattice, basically. It's it's I mean it, it's it's mo- mostly covered. It's just what they remove when they're putting large cargo into the ship. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, and there's still a writer on that guy. Yes, there's a writer on all of them. Okay, I am going to. Cast Polymorph on that Ryvern. I'm gonna turn him into a bunny rabbit. <laughs> You're gonna kill a bunny? No, you won't die. Oh, you're gonna kill a bunny. Six hit points. Like, I ride him, it's gonna it's be like, like the least <laughs> innocent thing that's killed in this game, so that is an Acme cartoon. Where that, you oh I just God, think it's gonna be cartoon. funny. That's pretty much All right. what I thought. Bonk, bonk, thanks, Easter Bunny. <laughs> All right, so what was the DC on that? Uh, he has to make a wisdom saving throw. The wyvern has to make and a wisdom what, saving throw. What's your DC on that? Uh, uh, uh. Your spell DC. 18. Uh, <laughs> and what creature? Bunny. The wyvern. Yeah, and, all right, so. Oh, a bunny. So. <laughs> you know what, you know what would be funnier? Like, sh- Stick with the bunny. The bunny's good. Bunny. Bunny. Oh, I'll do it, bunny. I'll do it, bunny. bunny. The right. wyvern. Turns into a bunny rabbit from underneath its rider, <laughs> and goes, <laughs> and then vomits. The rider, which <laughs> begins to, to to fall as well, immediately Hi. tossing a grappling hook as it falls. Oh, oh good. speedy! It's falling so slowly. Uh, Hi. Okay. That, 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 That's why. awesome. Thanks. That was my turn. That was All right. Slick. Uh, all right, that, that brings us. All right, so now the wyvern's turn. Uh, <laughs> Where did the music go? Where did our sweet, sweet music go? Why has the music died? Bum, bum, ba, ba, bum, 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 Oh, lift it back up onto its back, but it uses oh. its entire turn doing so. Well. Um, so, well, wasted their turn on that element. Uh, Wait, this. What? what? The white caught his, caught his rider. rider. How did that go? It, it happened in like you, a second, 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 second. You second. threw it off the side, oh. and for the wyvern's turn immediately, it dove down, <laughs> caught the rider, and it helped it back onto its back. But they took its Bad entire wyvern. turn to do that. Okay. Bad the well Um. <laughs> This wyvern is plummeting as a bunny rabbit now to the air. Uh, is going to attempt to make it saving throw. Fail. Fail. Uh, wait, can this polymorph allow a saving throw every round if it's uh, against its will? I don't Fail. think so. It, it was. I remember you had to be damaged, dies. right? Before? I Bunny go splat, bunny go die. Um, actually, yeah. Mm-hmm. Go bye bye. Thumper's toast. Um. <laughs> No. It lasts for the duration yeah. or until the target that drops that to zero hit points or dies. Yeah, so no. Uh, <laughs> he's just, you know, is a falling bunny. He's a falling bunny. <laughs> oh. That is going to be one dead wyvern. With any luck, oh, he's going to fall Oh, that's amazing. Oh, everything's you, falling. Let me know he's when dead. he, like, hits the ground. I will, don't worry. Well, it's the ocean, right? You'll hear yeah. the guts splat out of it. <laughs> when, at, upon hitting... Terminal, <laughs> terminal velocity for a bunny rabbit. I have to consider this as a DM now. This is a thing in my existence. <laughs> yeah, it's the same. You throw a penny, you throw a cow off the Empire State Building. They're both going to How, 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 yeah. how high up are we? Zero, he turns uh, back into... How high up are we? And how much does the bunny weigh? It's hard to tell. You cannot make any <laughs> details out on this. It's... it's <laughs> You're so far above the ocean that you can barely make any details of it, and what you can see is so fine in the distance. You can gather. You're a whole long way up. Um, getting flashes of holy grail here. Exactly. So the grappling hook whoo, tink, onto the side here. The rope swings, and this guy gets spends his turn getting up onto the side of the boat there, and that's his turn. Um, next, uh, this wyvern here is going to. Swoop down as it does. Its rider leaps off, landing right there. Uh, <gasps> the wyvern comes over here and is going to make uh, attacks on you. No. First, it comes back 
with its bite. Has it has no arms? It, it has its arms. Arms are its wings. It has talon feet. Comes down and whoosh, bites at you with its giant toothy maw. That oof, that's going to be a twenty-five to hit with its bite. Bite you. So you take uh, thirteen points of piercing damage. All right. Oh, sorry. Uh. It's not going to use its claws because instead, as it brings its claws up, as in a rearing position, its tail whips underneath it whoosh, with this gnarled, Amazing. pointed stinger at you. Um, as you're the one that shot an exploding arrow at its friend. Oh, all right. Um, this is going to be. Uh, it's a twenty to hit. Okay, so my armor class is nineteen, but I'm wearing a plus two ring. Of protection. Right, but, the, but that's with your. Is that with the plus two? with the two plus ring? two, yeah. So it hits me then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so for that. <laughs> all right. You take Great. 10 points of piercing damage. Damn it! And I need you to make a DC 15 constitution saving throw as the stinger at the end of its tail pierces you in the side of your torso, and as it does, you can feel the venom pulse, pulse so into the inside of your 15? skin. Yeah. Come on, you got this. Confidently, roll that shit. No? Yeah. As the poison pulses through your system, you feel your muscles seize up with this horrible, painful, burning sensation. Oh. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> Buffy. <laughs> okay, you take 26 points of poison damage. Holy do How much? 26, 26 points of poison damage. Ouch. I'm gonna start oh, doing math now. Uh, the, uh, the individual that hopped off of it now, you can see is a halfling dressed in dark leather, face is obscured, pulls a longbow out, and pulls out two arrows at once, pulls back and releases them. Oh. Uh, one is going for you, Keyleth. Uh, the other is going for Trinket. <sighs> These guys got skills. That is a 22 versus you, Keyleth. Yeah. And a 20 versus uh, Trinket. He's got 20. Uh, all right. Uh, oh, no! You take 12 points of piercing damage. Okay. Trinket takes five points of piercing okay, damage. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, that ends their turn. All right, brings it to Percy. Go Percy, go Percy, go. How far go, away am Percy, I from, from Percy, that go. wyvern that's currently attacking everybody? Right there? Yeah. You're right here, so you're about 20, roughly 45 feet from him. Shave and a haircut. <laughs> ah, this will be funny. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna back up and sit down against the back wall of the uh, of the ship. Okay, against the doorway. Um, I'm going to pull out the biggest gun I have. So I'm going to pull out bad news. Yes! I'm going to sit down. Yes. Bu -bu 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 uh, I'm going to take aim and I'm going to do. I'm going to try and take a wing shot. Uh, I'm going to spend. A, I'm going to spend a grit and try and take a wing shot at this. At this. Is what you at this wyvern here? Yes. All right. What's a wing shot? It, well, we'll see if it. Trying works. to shoot the wing. I'm shooting him in the wing. Oh, uh, oh, well, oh, oh. Uh. <laughs> so you mean literally? Literally. Right. Sure. Yeah. Um. 18? Uh, it's just winged it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> really? 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 Um, where's my d12? I was not prepared for this. Here we go. Uh, that's... That's what Chris is in. 14, so just... 14 points of damage, and uh, he has to make a constitution saving throw. We're just letting that guard die, right? We're not going to try to. I don't. Use. I didn't realize we could save it. Twenty-three. Him. He was uh, no, sure. fails that. Okay, uh, that that wyvern drops hard twenty feet. All right, so that wyvern, who is roughly about ten feet up, you shoot it in the wing, it blows a big old hole in the side of its leathery wing. As you do the impact, sends its wing arm crumpling behind it. It spins uncontrollably in the space and then plummets to the ground oh, on its yeah. back, going yeah. just reaching and scrambling, trying to get back up. So it's currently prone on the ground. Boom. All right, thank you. No Deal worries. With it. And I reload. All right, uh, Scanlon, you're up. Ah, oh, ah. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll take a few steps towards the action, uh, and I'll uh, I'll cast Big B's hand, Big B's hand. You know it, Shamon. Uh, on uh, on the Griffin. 
All right. Is he above the boat or just above the ocean? Uh, currently above the ocean, just okay. near the edge of the boat. Can I use forceful hand? It says I can push. Do you think I can twist? Stop it. So. Uh, you know what? You could. Oh. I'm going to dump him over. Okay. Go ahead and make a, a check with your with your bonus. Oh, and this is all through the hand cone of clarity. Right. Of course. Right. Of course. All right. So go ahead and roll and add five. Nineteen <gasps> plus five. Twenty-four. Uh, nineteen. Plus three. Oh. Um, so the griffin, all of a sudden, this, this giant shimmering big three hand, as you reach out, this gargantuan version of a Scanlan fist comes rocketing through the sky, the fingers unraveling, clutching the griffin, its wings seem to be pulled up and crunched for a second as it is suddenly lifted. Its rider, who is holding on to the reins at the front, is now dangling and going to attempt to try and hold on, and rolls a three. Yeah! <laughs> the rider immediately plummets, Falls right towards the, the edge railing. of the ship. Oh, this is really uh, so breaks his back. Makes makes an acrobatics check and manages to reduce ah. the damage and land on its feet. However, oh, okay. does still take uh, nine points of falling damage. Is he a halfling as well? Uh, no, this actually you can see is a very lithe, elven-looking individual, like very thin form, face and body all covered. Uh, appears to be female, from best you can tell, just from the physicality. She's going. Uh, I'm also going to inspire Vex with just a, just for her archery skills. This is just a little. Go for it. Okay. Uh, elvish people in the ship tonight. <laughs> Everybody just have a good fight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you get a D10 inspiration yeah, dice for you yeah. for your use. Um. <laughs> All right, so that uh, is your turn. Pike, you're up. Okay, how how long is the ship? Uh, the, sh the full length of it? <laughs> Just so you know what, what I'm looking at right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this ship. This ship right this here. This ship right here? Yeah, that sure, one. okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'd say it would be about uh, 130 feet in 140 feet. Okay, so would you say like maybe this area? Would be about like I don't know, sixty feet. Sixty feet radius, you mean? Yeah. How, wh where, where, where would we, where? A sixty foot feet? radius for you would be right here. Okay. Like this around you. Okay. But you I can would move. like to um, reach down, stay where I am, and and touch the floor of the ship, mm -hmm. and cast hollow. Hollow. Okay. And which uh, I am so hard right now. <laughs> basically, infuses I'm a in sixty Scanlan. foot radius with holy power, mm -hmm. and any creatures or anything can't harm anything with inside the radius. Alrighty. And uh, it takes. Look at the casting time on the spell. Oh no! God. <laughs> dang it! <laughs> <laughs> Twenty-four Scratch hours. That. Okay, oh. so here's what we're gonna do. 24 hours? 24 hours, but you, you, you Hallow works, you, you take 24 hours, and that land that you do that is like that until someone dispels it. Oh, wow. Should have done it when we first got on the ship. It's like when okay, you so then, that's so. cool. If, that's good to know. Yes, but. That would have been cool. Um, instead. Instead, uh, I, 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 I'm, gonna, I'm gonna guiding bolt this guy right here. This guy right here? one to you? Oh wait, no, the, the the flying guy right here. Oh, that one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you you currently can't see him, unfortunately. That is yeah. down below the ship, because it swooped down to pick up uh, the guy who had right. fallen. So he is currently out of your view. Guiding bolt the griffin. Cool, all guiding bolt. The, uh, I, can't, I can't do that griffin up there, can I? Guiding What's the range on guiding bolt? You might be able to. 120? Yeah, you can. Yeah, okay, I'll do that. All right, so go ahead and make your, uh, your, your ranged spell attack. So roll d20, add that bonus. Man, that's a one. Oh. No. All right. All right. So in your confusion, you reach back to, to shoot the, 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 the wyvern that's on the other side of the ship. It's not there. And so while the spell is releasing itself, you're like, crap, oh, that one. And by the time you turn around to redirect the divine energy blast, it just arcs off in a random direction. What a fail of a motherfucking turn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Still I feel your pain. Can I, can I still move if I use uh, my sprinter's boots? 
Yeah, you can still move. Okay. So you haven't moved yet. I'm going to spread your boots over to Vex. Okay. <laughs> That's me. Spread your boots. Spread your boots. <laughs> and then I'm going to there. give her... <laughs> oh I'm going to give her a... A, a superior healing potion. Okay, so you haven't used it yet, but you have one. Okay. Oh, she, I can't get I have to use it. Okay, that's you, okay. You, she has it. You handed it to her, but you just, she has it. Here's a superior Thanks. healing term. One. Thanks. Uh, potion. <laughs> turn. Uh, I can't wait. Uh, I'll wait. Oh, wait. All right, top of the round. Wait, so she has to use that on her turn then? Yeah. That's okay, that's okay. All right. That's let's, right. Just, let's just go past this really fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's move on. That's okay. All right, so Vex, you're up. It's okay. Uh, I'm gonna. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna use a superior healing potion. Mm-hmm. Which is how many? Uh, what do I roll for that? A superior healing potion. Uh, that is wow. Uh, eight d four plus eight. Whoa. Yeah, that's a big old heal. One two. Really? She's drinking a potion that Pike just gave her. <laughs> Were you hurt? What? Uh huh. Actually, very severely. I just two, healed three, her. Four, five, six. Why Pike? I'm gonna add those up in just a second. <laughs> That's a lot. Od four. Um. Okay, but first I'm gonna. If he's he's on the ground, so if I step away from him, he doesn't get a... Uh, Correct, he is not threatening. Okay, so I'm gonna move away from that guy. All right. I'm gonna... Uh, How far? Actually, I'm not gonna move, I'm gonna move against the railing around Grog. Can I do that? Yeah, you can move around. Yeah, and I'm gonna um, yeah, kind of stand next to Grog and hopefully he overshadows me. And I'm gonna lightning arrow Ooh. the griffin. All righty. Go ahead and roll for attack on that. Why do I feel like a griffin will be immune to lightning attack? No way, birds. Life is They're funny. fine, right? Of course. Okay. Birds hate lightning. Okay, the so griffin that is grappled is too. So is not birds birds not grappled. hate lightning. <laughs> that is four d eight. Oh, I have to roll and see roll if for I the get attack, it. Though, yeah. Okay, which one looks like a lightning? Oh, this, in, in this the birds. amethyst looks like a lightning. There you go. There's like boom, we get hit with lightning. Okay, that's, that's good. That's 25. 25, yeah. Okay. So now it's 4d8. Whew. <laughs> 15. 15 points of damage to it? All right. So as you run around Grog, as you rush around his shoulder, you grab one arrow, pull it back, knock it in your bow, and underneath his arm, as he's like reaching up with his axe, you release an arrow. As you release it into the air, it almost seems to spark with uh, energy halfway to its mark. All of a sudden, the speed it's traveling at increases, 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 and you see energy begin to off the front. It slams into the side of the griffin. The blast of energy and electricity surges through its body. The griffin loses about 10 feet of height before it catches itself. You can see this giant burn mark on the side of its body. It's having a hard time keeping itself in the air. It's looking pretty rough. For my second attack... Yes. I'm gonna have Trinket charge the elf guy in red, girl in red. Okay. Or no, he's gonna attack the wyvern that's on the ground. That makes more sense, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, shoot his wing off. And go, boom, and bash him with his new armor and, you know, do stuff. All right, so, 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 so as, as you fire the arrow, Trinket turns around and <laughs> comes forward. Uh, go ahead and roll uh, attack for Trinket. Okay, I don't know if I've ever attacked with Trinket. You have before, it's been a while. It's been a really long time. I like possibly Pathfinder a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Yay, Trinket. And he rolled a one. (laughs) No! Uh, With inspiration. With inspiration. One, no, the one is not a miss. It's one. It's new armor. So Trinket goes to, to attack. The, the wyvern that's on the ground is screeching around, moving its body. Its tail whips out and strikes Trinket in the side of the armor, almost piercing it with the with the the, uh, the poisonous stinger. Trinket is simply. <gasps> oh shit! Poisonous? I forgot I was poisoned. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, it king ricochets off the armor, but Trinket instinctively recoils from it and forgoes the attack to take a defensive stance. We're not doing well. I forgot I was poisoned! We're doing great. We're doing great. All right. These weapons set up. Oh, uh, I'm going to finish the healing potion just now so I can. Okay, go for it. Uh, This guard pulls back and aims the uh, ballista up towards the griffin that's on the the air. (laughs) Releases the bolt as it streaks through the air. Uh, The bolt rushes past the griffin, unfortunately, not finding purchase. The rope leading off 
into the distance. As he sees you, uh, the rope, the entire uh, giant bolt misses, curses and takes a dagger out and cuts the rope and it just disappears over the side and he goes and spends the rest of his turn getting ready to prepare it for a second shot. Uh, this one over here currently uh, has the, the ready to fire bolt, has no means of doing so, instead draws a weapon and begins to rush over to try and join the fray of the wyvern over here, but can't yeah, quite get all the way over back. to fight it. Um, that ends his turn. And Vax, this, you're this up. This guy's still alive in the back, right? Yeah, okay. you just can't see it. Vax. Uh, I'm going to run up alongside, uh, trinket on the side, and uh, stab the grounded wyvern uh, two or three times. Okay, you have your boots of ace, so you can do this, because you have to go up the stairs here to get to the next level. Right there. All right, so oh. now... You're up on your keen dagger to start gets All right. a uh, twenty-three. That hits. Okay, so that this is a, uh, that's uh, eleven points of damage plus the sneak attack damage. Oof, this is gonna be nasty. Three. Leave <laughs> some for Grog. Uh, Twelve. Thirteen sneak attack damage. That's uh, so that's eleven plus thirteen. Yeah, so twenty-four. First dagger. Nice, twenty-four damage. Oh, Second, uh, second dagger gets a uh, twenty-six. Hits. Uh, hits. Sweet. That uh, is a uh, ten of damage, and the third dagger gets a sixteen. Sixteen does hit. Total damage. It does. It does. Yeah. Very nice. Come on, Jersey. Yeah. Roll that shit. Yeah, Jersey. So, uh, shik, 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 shik. I mean, ten, always a ten. A creature is prone, so you have advantage on these attacks too. By the way. Oh, well, did they all hit? Uh, yes. Uh, go ahead and roll a second one for this last one, just on the yes, off chance it might critical. I don't know. Uh, no. Okay, so then you're fine. All right. I throw two more. Okay, good. I'm good with everything. I okay. <laughs> just like a. All right. So uh, damage in the last one. Oh, it was. Uh Eight. Eight. Gotcha. All right. So as you rush around, trinket, you come up with your daggers. Stab, stab, stab. You're jamming it in the side, and you can see like the dragon, the dark black dragon blood spilling out of each wound as you're kind of piercing it. It's screeching out and trying to get back to its feet in the process, but you just keep finding each opening and jamming it with your blades. And as a bonus action, I like to take my hands under under trinket's uh, ears and go. Would you wooga 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 wooga? Trigger goes and kind of rubs into them. Would you mind healing him? He's low on health. All right. So. Uh, <laughs> Uh, to do. Such a glass half empty girl. <laughs> the uh, the griffin. Uh oh. It's going to take its right. turn. Uh, Forty. It's going to swoop down <laughs> towards Keyleth. Mm. Uh, it's going to attempt to grapple you. <gasps> nope. I was doing, hey friend. <laughs> uh, go ahead and make either an acrobatics or athletics check. Your choice. I'm Come on, envision that shot of the griffin flying. Um, let's do athletics. Yeah. Let's do this fight. Oh. Oh. That's good. It's okay. Uh, fifteen. Fifteen. The griffin reaches down, whoosh, whoosh, grapples into you with each of his talons, <gasps> and lifts up. No. Carrying you and. You off the side, you, can turn you begin to fine. plummet off the side of the ship. You see it vanish above you. She'll be fine. She'll be fine. Uh, She'll be fine. <laughs> Look, Kayla, that's what you wanted. Tiberius, congrats. This is fun. Uh, uh, so that thing went to go save his dude. Mm -hmm. So I turned to him, super annoyed, uh, <laughs> and I go. Fuck. I don't think And I use telekinesis him. and I rip off his wing. Which guy? The wyvern. Which you don't you can rip off his whole this, swing? This one here you can't see. It's like far below the ship because it dove down to catch its guy. It's not currently uh, invisible rank. Like, this is off the board, essentially. It's down below there. Oh, well, crap. Rip all the griffin's feathers off. I don't do any of that stuff. Like, just just, just pluck it. Yeah. <laughs> you. This is annoying you. Yeah. Um, isn't it? <laughs> this is uh, annoying you. Prepare him for dinner. What's 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 going on? There's a who's this dude over here? Uh, this is one of the riders that managed to just barely grapple on and pull itself to the top of the ship. And this is it the elven. This is the elven one who was on top of the griffin. Okay. Got, they um, got dumped off by Scanlan. Oh, um, let's see. Uh, that's how many feet between the two? Five. Dun, 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 dun. How 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 many? What's the distance between? 
What's this thing right here? That's, that's one of the ballistas up front. It's it's ready to fire. It just hasn't been fired yet. That's a lot of questions. Yes. Oh, that's fun. Okay, um, I'm gonna use my movement to get around over here so I can get within range. Because uh, that's that's all 60 feet, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, well then, I'll use uh, screw it. I'll use telekinesis to pick up that elf and huck it right into the ballista. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, go ahead and make your roll. D20 plus 5. Ooh, natural 20. <laughs> so, uh, you take the elf, it, you suddenly, the elf is, is down, pulling two blades out. <sighs> Lift it up in the air, and flung off to the side. The female form slams into the ballista from behind, setting it off. You see now the bolt just arcs off the side of the boat. Uh, the, um, nice. the, uh, the elf, which is just currently grappled now, and held against the side, uh, takes uh, seven points of impact damage from the full slamming attack. All right. The ballista was aimed this way. That makes more sense. Uh, oh, were you trying to skewer him? Yeah. That, that oh. been... well. I still do that. I lift him up and I do that instead. You... Ballista's already fired, though. Oh, that's it was... it's yeah, it's gone. I like mean, you slam it into it and, and fire it off. That's okay. You cool. Still, it's my you turn. You still flung him real hard. <laughs> That's the my turn. Real hard. Sorry. It's fine. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you and Ashley. Oh, we, had, we had a week off. We had a week off. Yeah, yeah. It's getting get, get, get in, in, in the same thing. You're getting our wiggles out. Rog, you're up. Oh, yes. Rog. Seeing the wyvern at my feet, <laughs> I feel that familiar tremble in my loins. <laughs> and I take my hand out of the chain and I go into a frenzied rage. Hey, rage. And I would like and to put your the ever-living fuck out of the <laughs> mini-dragon. All right, man, go attack. <laughs> it's starting to get to its feet now. <laughs> oh, hold on, kitty. 15 plus yes. 8. You still have advantage on it, by the way, remember? Oh. It's, it's still technically prone. Uh, 23. Hits. Uh, 23 again. Oh, oh, wait. No, you already That's did it. That's on 20. So hit, <gasps> crit hit nice. critical, and... The third one. That makes up for Kill so much him. shit. Him. Uh, uh, 18. Hits. Nice. Hit three. critical hit. So, oh, so yes. for the first hit. Yes! First hit. Okay, okay. Uh, eight. Uh, eight damage? Yeah. You win the bonus? Uh, yeah, I rolled With a one. one. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, eight. Now you critical. Yeah, Kuros, is that two of these? Two uh, of these uh, just roll it once and, and double the number. Oh, awesome. Uh, 12, 7, uh, uh 19. Um, well, then you add the plus at the end. So whatever you rolled. 19. You rolled 19. I rolled a 12 plus so, so it's 12, so it's 24 plus 7. Oh, I got you. Okay. So 31. Ooh. Alrighty. And the last one? Mm-hmm. 16. Nice. Ah! So you just smack, smack, smack. The giant axe, as with each arc backward, you can see the, bl the bl blood spray just through the air, spattering part of the ship. It's screeching in pain. Trying to reach on around it for some sort of purchase, um, you leave gaping wounds in its side. It still seems to be ready to eerie to go. Um, these things are hard. They're pretty tough. Pretty tough. The, these wyverns. You take the you take the wyvern or the rider. The wyvern. Uh, so Grog, you see where you are? Yes. All right. And it's your turn, uh, Keyleth. You are currently falling. And. Before I turn in anything, I kind of just take in the scenery, and I'm like, "This is peaceful." <laughs> very, very it's serene. Nice. And then I turn into an air elemental. Whoosh! All righty. Is that a thing? Mm -hmm. Not a shark. Yes. A thing. Not a shark. Not a shark. Not a shark. Yes. I know. That could be cool turn too. Into a that would shark. be funny. Turn into Boink. a flying shark. <laughs> I'm Indeed. like, oops. That is like For a shark's fin. In my intelligent <laughs> flying shark. In my disappointing haste, I uh, forgot to bring your elemental figures, and I apologize. <laughs> it's okay. I'm air. We'll use this. We'll so put this around you. Air. So you are. This is you as an air elemental. <laughs> right there. Like You're so pretty. With your air. You're so pretty. Around, around you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. So Usually better about that. Face been crazy. So you I so turn you, into poof. Yeah. Is that the name? Now of the your air natural elemental? element. There is no fall. Poof. You stop yourself immediately. You know more than maybe 20 feet below the bow of the ship. Oh, this. 
cool. Oh, okay, cool. I'm only at 20 feet. What's your fly awesome. speed? That's another element. Like 60. Ooh. It's like the same, like all of them, if you're like moving through like air. Your own stuff, terrain, 60? Sure. Yeah, so you, so you can get up onto the bow and still have 40 feet to go. Okay, so. Who's, who's like the nearest bad guy? The griffin that just threw you off. Is there, is that a bad guy next to him? Yes. Or is that a guard? That's a bad guy right there. That's a guard. That's what was writing. My earth element or my air elementals are big base, right? Yes, they're large. Okay, so here's what I do. I go up and I'm like, whoosh. It's this big, dark, scary cloud. And then I go up and I'm gonna do whirlwind. And I just go full tornado. Okay, so is this- Full this, twister. This form. You, have, you guys, don't, you've never seen this before. All of a sudden this giant, angry, Cluster of of elemental energy. This this wind begins to just shoo, shoo, with like angry eyes and almost based on just an energy source within, begins swirling into this giant cyclone, uh, localized. Both the Griffin being pulled into it as well as the other creature on the side. Uh, the effects of that? They have to make a DC uh, thirteen strength saving throw. All right. Uh, the uh, the Griffin uh, does succeed. The, the this Griffin this uh, woman rider does not. Awesome. Um, on a failure, uh, a target takes three d8 plus two bludgeoning damage. So nice. Let's do that real quick. Uh, that's the, okay. So two, one, plus one, five. Uh, what I, so that's a, a ten damage. Already. And he's flung 20 feet in a random direction and not prone. All right. A, a Hopefully ran- it's randomly off the side of the ship. Random direction. <laughs> I'll say it's wherever the four is there. Four. <laughs> Falls off and actually slams into the top of this uh, wing. This wing. It gets, off. It gets to slide off. Yes, yes, and it's yes. going to attempt to catch itself on the edge of the wing. Fail, fail, uh, fail. fails. Ah! <laughs> Save every one of us. <laughs> it's flung off the All side right. and falls okay. out of view. Uh, damn. All right. Uh, um, and um, still have about forty feet of or thirty feet of movement at this point. Oh, and if he hits, if the target hits like a wall, he takes three. Oh, no, he here. takes 1d6 bludgeoning damage for every 10 feet he was thrown. I think he's going to hit a he's lot of bludgeoning hit, damage yeah, when he hits true. the ocean. <laughs> yeah, it's for a bit. It's going to um, hurt, like, twice. Yeah. Okay, and, um... If the saving throw is successful, the target takes half the bludgeoning damage and isn't flung or not. Alright, so, so, he so still the takes, takes five damage? Yeah, he still takes five damage. Okay, from, from the buffeting of the wind, Griffin manages to keep itself in place. Alright, is that in your turn? That's my turn. Alright, now it's the Wyvern and the Wyvern Rider's turn. Uh, this uh, Wyvern gets up to its feet again, no longer prone, uh, is going to, after being stabbed repeatedly and axed repeatedly, uh, it's going to angrily strike out. Uh, yeah, alright. It's gonna go ahead and make a a bite attack and a, a stinger attack. Uh, bite attack's gonna be at Ugrog. Stinger attack's gonna be at uh, Vax. This is right behind him. So bite attack against Ugrog. It's gonna be a twenty-two to hit. That hits. All right. You go ahead and take. That'd be bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing, Brandon. That would be piercing. I I have. Yes, here. you do. So you would take fourteen points of damage. Okay. You take seven instead. All right. Because you have too many hit points and don't like damage. Uh, against that's a natural twenty. Natural twenty. Natural twenty on no, you, Vax. No. Twenty. So uh, I'm gonna assume that hits. <laughs> so Vax, you take. Uh, I, he's at disadvantage because I'm on Skype. <laughs> <laughs> and wasn't he prone? No, he's up. He's, he's got up. He's got up. Uh, <laughs> all right. So that is. Take 25 points of uh, piercing damage from the stinger. Wait, what did he roll? He rolled 20, a natural 20. natural 20. Natural 20, then he hits. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so you, uh, huh. yeah, so you take, that's uh, 18 plus 7, 20, 25 points of piercing damage, 25 points of piercing damage, and I need you to make a constitution saving throw. All right, I'm doing it. I'm in Jersey and I'm rolling for constitution. 
that's a five. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, you're in Jersey. So. So you it's the birthplace of the Constitution. All right, so you take 29 points of poison damage as the stinger shoots out from the wyvern, pierces you in the abdomen, already like stabbing through your guts and you can feel it, you know, and just destroying a lot of your internal organs. And then all of a sudden there's a pulse of burning, fiery pain as the poison just disperses into your system as it pulls out of your torso. Um, oof, that's rough. I'm not doing too well. Where uh, are you? Where are you at? That's that wyvern. Oh, I look really bad. Let's just say that. The other wyvern is still plummeting as a bunny. Uh, <laughs> he hasn't hit the water yet. No, you guys are a ways up. Whoa. Uh, this wyvern swings up now with its rider. <laughs> uh, I don't feel so good. Take a healing potion. As it does a flyby here with its movement, its rider is currently clutching a spear-type uh, object, flings it down ah. at the blue crystal as it slams. <gasps> we'll see if it does. Yeah, as it slams into the crystal, there's a spark of energy, and the blue crystal seems to no. wink out of magical energy, its coloration growing dark. The entire ship what? begins to list to one side. Good. Everyone shifts 15 feet this way. Oh my god. So, Wait, which way? Uh, oh, we all shift. So, okay, we're already on against the people. Yeah, really on the stairway. Uh, Tiberius, I'm going to have you go ahead and roll an acrobatics check to try and catch yourself, because you're on the stairs when you get knocked off. Nope. So you fall prone, 15 feet there. Oh no. On the ground. Uh, Can we all Star Trek it? Can right we? Now? This guy's gonna try and catch himself oh, yeah. here. Oh. 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 Catch himself. Uh, oh. This elf I'm here just goes to there. This guy moves 15 feet to there. Like, Kills his touch. Grip the table for that. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, you got a grip. <laughs> the wyvern slides and catches itself off the edge. Push to there. Push to the stairs. I, Is that need, why we're I need Grog yep. and Vex to each make You're make a dexterity to... check to try and catch yourself on the edge of the boat. Son of a bitch. Come yes. on, you guys. 21. Vex, I've inspired you. That's true, but I don't need it. <laughs> um. Do not kill my sister while I'm That's a 29 for me. Both of you guys managed, you, you're flung to the side, hit the railing, your bodies tumble oh over God. the side, and both Grog and Vex ksh, catching the railing and are now dangling on the side of the ship as it's listing at the side. You both look over at each other with a whew. Oh my God. Right. Hey. <laughs> Crazy shit, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's his action as the continuation of its movement. The wyvern comes down towards the now caught off of his, you know, knocked away from the, uh, the range of the ship is going to attempt to grapple the, the captain. Ah, oh, not Damon. No, 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 and, uh, not Damon. Oh no, not handsome Damon. Fails his role. Oh, no. Damon, no! by the wyvern. Son of a cock, <gasps> we can't Damon, lose our captain. save this, save it. I can the edge of the ship. the ship. It doesn't have enough movement to get him all the way off, but it's in the process of dragging him off. You can see the captain no, no, is now no. reaching up, trying to fight his way off, but the wyvern is dragging him off the edge of the ship, but that's as far, far as it can do with the rest of its movement since it had to move up and over the edge of the ship. That's the end of its turn. Uh, I'm gonna put it at about there. Oh, God. <laughs> oh no! Oh, no. Everything's falling. It happens. <laughs> Delicate little miniatures. All right, uh, that brings us to yeah. That's all the turns. Uh, Percy, you're up. Um, the ship now. This weird uh, object now is just like sparking energy on the edge of the blue crystal. I'm going to uh, sort of. I'm going to just hold on to bad news as I'm I'm flicking around. I'm going to pull out my pepper box. I'm going to take a. I'm going to take a wing shot at that bastard right there. Right there. Okay. Yeah. Percy, do it. Come on. Ha ha ha! Twenty-one. Uh, Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine definitively hits. Twenty-nine definitively hits. Hmm. So let's do some. Let's figure out what we're going to do to this person. Yeah, come on. Um, we got a flat tire. <laughs> That's uh, that's nine points of damage plus a fourteen Constitution saving roll, uh, uh, which with a five it does not make. So it drops twenty feet. It drops twenty feet, slams into the deck. Uh, it isn't knocked prone, uh, but the captain is slamming on the ground as well and is not currently being held over the edge of the ship. It still has in its clutches, um, but is not 
<laughs> not being dangled over the edge. He still has him in his in his claws, though. Yeah. But All right, I'm gonna take shot. another shot at him. All right. I'm gonna make this a fire shot, uh, and I'm going to try and get him to drop him now. Okay. Uh, sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. That uh, hits. All right. Let me just make sure I'm doing this right. Um, yeah. Uh, no damage, but he drops him. Okay. The captain tumbles forward out of its grasp onto the side. <laughs> he's nice. prone, but he's no longer in the talons of the. Uh, All right, and then I'm going to I'm going to spend the rest of my move getting up, getting situated, and then okay. moving a little bit. Where's my yeah? You have 15 more feet of movement when you get up from. Yeah, I'm just going. Actually, well, you weren't not prone. You just slammed into the wall, yeah, so you're fine. I'm just going to move a little bit further up, up the yeah, like Here? right about there. Okay. We just hit 4,000, eh? Oh my Whoa. god. Hey! Are you serious? We hit 4,000! <laughs> oh my god. Nice. Rap video. You did this. You did this, Zach. I'm not happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of you yourself. guys are ridiculous. Are you proud of yourself? Freak. <laughs> the snuggle lord outfit you're wearing tells me otherwise. You look proud of yourself. So cute. All right, well, let's. Yeah. let's okay. Come on, keep going. All right, no worries, you. Uh, so, Percy, well done. That's your turn. Thank Scanlan, you're up. Scanlan's gonna. Uh, uh, Take a few steps forward. You still have your hand out, by the way. Oh. It's over in this area. You just took it and twisted him, so he managed yeah, to... He, he got out of it. Yeah. So I could... Can I, uh, I'm gonna leave it be. Oh, wait, I still have my hand out, and it's over there? Well, I mean, your hand is, like, over here where you grabbed it earlier. Can I move it to the other guy near the uh, the ballista? The ball over here? Yeah. Yeah. Is that gonna be my move, or do I also get to use it? No, that's, that's just part of your action. Okay. So if you want I to use I move it near the ballista guy, and I just go... <laughs> <laughs> Push him, push him over the edge. All right, uh, go ahead and make a roll and add five to it. Through the... Do it, do it. Not good, not good. Inspire yourself. Fourteen. Fourteen. Uh, as you're, as the, the creature got slammed into the side of the wall, the, the elf that's, that's wrapped up currently is trying to, to, to get ready. It starts preparing itself to do a series of attacks and your baby hand just <laughs> blindsides it, sending it over oh, the edge of the railing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, does not catch the railing. Oh! <laughs> These guys, I don't think they knew who was on the ship. Um, <laughs> gets flung off the edge, unable to catch it, and vanishes oh, over the side no. of the boat. No, just oh, no Wilhelm! <laughs> okay, that uh, and then I'm going to. Uh, uh, I'm going to move. For, uh, I'm going to move towards the captain. All right. And, uh, uh, Vax, are you in dire straits? Physically? Yes. Okay, then I'm, I'm gonna throw some healing at Vax with my healing word bonus action. What's the healing Yeah, word you can get day? him in the range, just barely. The healing word of the day is. Heal! <laughs> 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 Alright, so go ahead and roll from its uh, 1d4 plus 5. Yes, 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 yes. Where's it's like a word of the day calendar. But okay, word you got healed day. 7 points, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Scanlan. The Galagos do nothing. Scanlan's turn. Whew, that was a rough round for them. Uh, Pike, you're up. Come on, do Pike. It, it. Okay. Um. No, it's concentration. So once you do Bibby's hand, you have it for as long as you concentrate on it. So. <laughs> yes. I would like to try to create a spiritual weapon. All right. Um, kind of in a the machine vein gun. of of. Uh, You're a war cleric. Yandu's um, little arrow that he would whistle at. <gasps> okay. But like Ooh. a really big spear, like a big version of it. Okay, so, so what you do is you glance over at, at the bolts so the one that's that, the... that are set up as part of the ballista, and you use that as a point of inspiration. You cast Spiritual Weapon, and you can see from the holy symbol, it glows in your chest, and out of it, this giant piercing yes. bolt just seems to appear out of divine energy, lifts itself aloft next to you. It's kind of just hovering in the air. <laughs> Alright, so I want to I pierce it through that guy. Oh, this guy? Yeah. So as you see it there, you bring your hand up and then just make a flinging motion. It spins, rotates, swish, and then rockets off in the direction of this wyvern. Go ahead and roll an attack with your spell modifier. That's cute. Uh, 18. 18 definitely hits. <laughs> Yeah! Alright, so uh, for the for the bolts damage and the speed of this, and given the, the flight nature of that, I would say roll uh, 2d6 plus 5 damage. Okay. 
Seven. Total seven? All right. Yeah. <laughs> so. All of those dice. I mean, you need all new dice. I know. I mean, because of the, he- the how heavy it. Wait, but I, I want to do it at a higher level. Okay, what well, higher levels you want to do it? Um, I was I was thinking higher. of doing it at level four. All right. And I know this says it's, it's one d eight. Then you but is it, was it just a one d six because it was? Heavy? It was two d six. Oh, what's the damage it say on there normally? What's the damage it says on there? Yeah, totally the spell using a slot of three level or higher, the damage increases by one d8 every two levels above the second. And what levels are normally? Three. It's a three. I oh, know it's a two. It's a two. So you're casting it at a fourth level. Yeah. Which makes additional to roll another one d8. Don't roll that. Roll one of these. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Okay, so it would be fifteen total. <laughs> fifteen total. Nice. But then with the since so then would I roll. Uh, the D8s instead of the sixes for the last one? Uh, I would say given the fact that it's, it's a ranged bolt, I w- it would be, is it normally just 1D8 for the damage it deals? Yeah. I made it 2D6 because it's a larger weapon and you're using this from the bolt. So it did That's more damage time. circumstantially than normally it would, so okay. you're fine. All right, that ends Pike's turn. Brings us up to the top, Vex. <laughs> you're like, ugh, on the side right now. Oh, you're God. in theory prone on the side of the ship, but you're not <laughs> falling, which is good. Oh, so I can't attack if I get up and out? Well, no, you can get your, you use half your movement to get back onto the Okay, ship. I'm gonna like brace my foot on Grog's shoulder and climb up. All right, so nice. she uses you as a foot stool and <laughs> flips over, <laughs> lands on top of the ship, totally fine. Awesome. Um, can I shoot my grappling arrow uh, at this this bastard here at the end of the ship? Is that far enough? Is that close Yeah, enough? yeah. All right, I want to shoot him at the rider. I want to shoot the grappling arrow at the rider and nice. to catch him and bring him in. All right, nice. so you, you reach in and the, oh, there's- Oh, cast Hunter's Mark on him first, though. Did <laughs> 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 so you move it over? It. Yeah, oh. that's fucking, yeah. yeah. It's there, Hunter's Mark is there, we're fine. Yeah. It's, sure. yeah, it's, it's on it. Yeah. Yay. All right, so go ahead and roll for the attack. Oh god, the oh god, oh god, okay. So nervous. I'm counting on it. Is. Yes. 26. 26 definitely hits. Okay. So how do I do it? All right. So roll damage. Okay. Uh, it's it's actually it, for the grappling arrow. It's gonna be uh, 1d6 damage for it. It's not quite as designed to pierce more than it's more of a bludgeoning hit. Um, plus plus your, my yeah. regular 13. So 13 damage to the rider, all right. Plus six for the hunter's mark. One. All right. <laughs> all righty. And then I've got him grappled. Uh, and so as the arrow hits, psh, it, it pierces the shoulder for a second. Uh, it kind of, it causes it to push off the shoulder as it retracts behind it. You pull back and it catches the shoulder. You're yanking. Yeah, for my second action. All right, I go, ahead, go ahead and make an athletics back. check. Nice. Okay. Yes! Tug okay. of war. Batman. Um. You got inspiration. Oh, well, okay. Sixteen. Should I use my inspiration? Yeah. Yeah. Do it. I mean, yeah. Do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's twenty-three. Yes. Twenty-three. Yeah. So using the inspiration yeah. that Scanlan had given you, you grab the arrow and yank with all your might. The tiny half-leaf form on there clutches for dear life onto the harness that is under this, the on top of this this uh, wyvern. But it's not enough as its fingers are pulled from its brick and it's yanked off the front, toppling ass over tea kettle, landing prone on the ground next to the captain that it attempted to fling from yes! the side of the ship. It's the grappling hook partially embedded in the back of its shoulder blade. Yeah. 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 And I'm still holding the rope, holding on. You are, yes. <laughs> All right. That's my whole action, right? That's everything I can this do. Is the real That's, that would be your action here, yeah, the whole process. <laughs> All right. Uh, this guard comes over here, returns to his base where he had it set up. The griffin is right there in front of him. He gets the bolt that's set up there, aims it up, and is going to fire almost point blank into the griffin as it turns around. Yes. Come on. Any miss? That's a natural twenty. Oh. Yes. We can go team the stars. Yes. Go and two d six double sixes. Uh, oh so. Yes. <laughs> You're a badass, nameless NPC. <laughs> so as, as as the guard turns around and releases Steve. the bolt, Steve. guard number two. <laughs> You're awesome, Steve. Like, uh, the Griffin is flying up over the edge of the ship, kind of getting away from the buffeting winds of the Druid. As it turns That's around, a bolt just pierces its chest. The sheer impact, sending it flying backward as it screeches 
plummets off the side of the ship to slowly find itself to its doom in the watery grave below in the Next ocean. Next to a tiny rabbit. Next to a tiny rabbit. rabbit. Yes. Uh, that griffin yeah, took a bolt to the chest. That is nasty. Uh, all right. Uh, this other guard is going to. And the hunter's mark is on the little halfling thing, not the wyvern, just so you know. Yes. yes. Oh no, our music went away again. Is that like the only track we have? One, one track is having problems with audio, apparently. I'll fix it later. Um, Matt, do everything now. I know. By the way, we have some great audio tracks that some fans have sent that I'm going to be incorporating into our playlist soon. So, if any of you guys are there musicians and you want to create music for the show, feel free to send it to us. Uh, you know, like atmospheric, not too dynamic. You've heard the types we have on here. So, in that realm, please send it. Some slow jams. Polka. 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 Uh, the, I'm having trouble seeing through the fog of war, aka my iPad. Uh, how yes. close is that uh, wyvern to me? Right there. Uh, he is only 10, 11 feet from you. 10, 11. All right. Okay. So straight up, dagger, dagger, dagger. All right. Uh, do I have <laughs> dagger, dagger, dagger. Uh, no, you do not have advantage. It is flying. Right, 20 on the first with my keen. That hits. Hits. That is uh, 10 points of damage. Second dagger, 25. That hits. That is seven points of damage, and my third dagger all the way from New Jersey <laughs> is a 20. That hits. Woo! Trenton. They were really all ones. Uh, that <laughs> is a uh, 10. 10 damage, all right. So as you, you you just managed to catch yourself on the edge of the ship as it's listing, uh, from this angle, the wyvern that pushed off the side is now flapping its wings and preparing its claws up to go for another dive attack. You reach back, and your daggers, which have returned to your belt, you <laughs> and fling all three as they spiral through the air. The first one strikes its torso, the second one hits it in the neck, and as it rears up, looking at you angrily with its fangs bared, like it's now changed its direction towards you. The final one hits it in the head. Yes! And it yeah! Plummets backward. That's how we do it in Weehawk in New Jersey, motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Vax, uh, do you want to move? Are you good there? Uh, I am going to... Uh... No, I'm going to sort of jog backwards towards the. Um, uh, I can't see. Is uh, who's around the the whip burn up at the end of the boat? Nobody. Scam Nobody over here. Oh. Nobody's at the. Nobody back. Uh, there, there, well, there, back? No, there, there is. A little there is this. Well, one of the the bandits is still there on the side of the ship. Is he hanging I have a potion, on? I'm gonna drink it. All right, go for it. Is like that yeah. bandit hanging on? Is that the deal? Yeah. Well, technically, it's an action to drink it, but it's fine. I'll let you do it. Why not? <laughs> You're in New Jersey. Oh, no, 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 I don't want to do that. No, I definitely don't want to do that. I'm going to run over by, uh, I'm going to run back by Keyleth. Okay. With haste, you get there easily. Keyleth, who was just a buffeting wind cyclone. Uh, all right. Uh, the be dead. Tiberius, you're up. Sweet wind gusts, okay. yo. I take my staff. Get up to your feet. Up. Yep. Uh, I'll. Um. I don't know, guys. What do you? What? What? what I, I can do. The entire ship is do right to that here, listing on the side. Get rid of him. Yeah. Get rid of the women. Yeah. He. That, do the, something the, amazing. All we've got are two little bandits. Just left do the him. best move you've ever done in your life. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, uh, I'm going to uh, first. I'll do uh, telekinesis again, and I'll do attempt to what I did the first time. I won't do anything fancy because whatever, and I'll try to rip off the wyvern's ring. Uh, wait, rings again. Yeah. From his body. Okay. Or uh, one of them if it's easier. All right. Uh, go go ahead and make a roll. Yeah, one would do it. True. Uh, that is 20, 22. 22. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll 3d6 points of damage. Uh, you don't manage to tear the wing off, but you do manage to pull its flesh, and you can see it's going to cause the uh, the joint where it's attached is now tearing open, revealing bone and. Uh, fleshy Sweet. tissue beneath. So that'll be nine. That's like ten. The most average. But that was like exactly average. Yeah. Ten. It's Sweet. Open. And I see that. I'm like, uh, and I turn to Vax and I go, oh, I like what you were doing earlier. And I spend uh, five uh, sorcerer points. I cast telekinesis again, and I take out eight of the daggers that are in my pouch, and I hover them around me, and then I start. Towards 
the wyvern where I see where all the bone and shit is. He's making and I'm sushi. Hucking, and I'm hucking my back and forth, bringing them back and forth, and bringing them back and forth. Just as you're aware, telekinesis is a concentration spell. You don't have to keep recasting it. Oh, I don't. No. It's just going? Yeah. Oh, well then fucking that's what's going on again. <laughs> I spent five minutes you know. to, to, to do it again. Because like, can I do that all in one action? Do that and then with I the mean, daggers? To, like, no, well, no, no, no. To do the daggers, to do the daggers, you would like you would. This top the top of the round, you wouldn't have to cast again. The sorcery points to give you another action. That's I'd okay. Say. So okay, so I did that. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah. So. Yeah. But to do that, it would it would use another expenditure. But yeah, cool. normally you can just concentrate in each round, do an action with it. So. Gotcha. All right. So you just fling all the daggers at it. Yeah, and I'm pulling them back and forth through his through that 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 tear in the wing. That I just, <laughs> that I just caused. Okay. Uh, I'll say go ahead and make four. Uh, spell attack rolls. So roll a d20, adding your spell attack modifier. Four times? Yeah. So whatever your, your spell attack modifier is. Uh, so my attack modifier is the spell attack bonus yeah. is everything I want. So that's uh, 23, 24, 25, 26. Uh, and that's, uh, what is that, 20? Wait, is it just 20? the d20 plus the modifier? Yeah. Yeah, uh, and then uh, 18, 9 plus 20, 20 nine. The, that's 30, 31, 32. So wait, what was the... Because I get 3 plus 3 on all the tax ones because of the gear I'm wearing also. Um, and then 7 plus that is 18, 19, 20, 21, and then that is f uh, 15, I have 17, no idea 18. what's happening anymore. There's like a lot of numbers. There's yeah. A lot of numbers. So my spell tag bonus is 11. Yeah. And then I plus 3 because all the gear I'm, that I have currently. Oh, I'm getting on the top of this. That it goes to my spell attack yeah. bonus. What? Which is what this is, right? Right. Well, your, your bonus is it's your proficiency modifier plus your your stat modifier, which is uh, your charisma, which is five, and your proficiency is four, so it would be nine. So how do I have? Oh, I'm and sorry. You're counting this in. I'm counting this in. So yeah. minus one from all That's of the okay. totals. That's okay. They all still hit. So go ahead and roll roll four d four plus twenty. Yeah. Four d four plus twenty. As each dagger is now being jammed into the creature's. Open wound through the power of your telekinetic force. Uh, that's what is that? Three and then six and seven. That's thirteen. That eight. So, so eight. Twenty. 20 so total plus. twenty-eight. Okay. Yeah. Twenty-eight. Makes this plus five each. So twenty-eight points of damage. As as its its uh wing is being torn apart, the daggers like, two streak through many of which are missing its form. So you're just flinging them all at it, and then as they go streak past it. You turn the telekinesis back and you yank them back through. As they tear through, you see most of the wing is torn open and the flesh is now just exposed to the air. The wind's buffing it around. Uh, it's looking extremely rough and it's beginning. It's it's on the ground currently, um, but it looks like it's not going to be able to fly right now. It is completely incapable of flight with the way you've damaged. As I see this, I'm going to just hover the knife, uh, the, all the daggers over the prone dude and like right over his face. All right. I'm going to keep him there. All right, Grog. <sighs> I pull myself back up on the ship. Okay, so that's half your movement. You stop 20 feet of movement. I look up and I see that everyone's got that wyvern taken care of, and I turn my gaze back yeah. to the little halfling. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. I'd like to move to him, please. All right, he is 10 <laughs> feet up, so you're gonna have to make a couple, two athletics checks to leap up towards it two in your range. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 23. All right, and second one. Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Nineteen. All right, so chop <laughs> him like a half. like a lumbering barbarian. You, yeah. you get up on the thing and then just woof, Hulk jump twice, landing next to it. Wrestling, raging in the face. Chop him in half. Out. I reach and I pick him up by the top of his shirt, give him a sniff, and fucking chuck him off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, make another make another athletics check to try and get him. <laughs> <laughs> Do I, get I, do I get advantage on strength checks? When I'm raging? Uh. Is it advantage on strength checks, strength saving throws? Uh, does it give you bonuses or advantage on strength checks? Yeah, it's when I rage. Is it strength? Yeah, you would. Okay. So, yeah, you would have an advantage on this. <laughs> uh, that's, that's even better. That's a 24. 24. All right, so uh, as you stand there with your axe up, you kind of set the axe down, reach out and grab it. The, uh, the halfling, who you see, has this kind of scarred face, and it looks really haggard for a halfling. Like, it's probably existence is not in the most comfortable of places, um, especially to be out in the middle of the ocean like this. Uh, you grab it, and for a moment, its anger seething turns to sudden fear as it looks over the side. <laughs> you fucked up! <laughs> and just goes plummeting off the Four side. Oh, man. Why did I 
didn't I get in this line of work? <laughs> yeah, I think we don't attack the last dude, just kill the wyvern. Yeah. All right. I'm good. All right, Keyleth. Um, so everyone, everyone seems, the, the only thing that's left is the wyvern, right? And Currently. one little halfling that I've got a rope on. Oh, and you've got a work on, rope on? And is the ship still like, it's, uh, yeah. it's still a little crooked? Yeah, it's still on the side. It's kind of like slowly rotating as there's nobody at the helm. Okay, I in my airship form or air form, I'm yep. gonna fly over. I can, I might, I'll go through, and I'm gonna kind of use just my air form to lift underneath the boat of the, the boat and wow. try and stabilize it. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a uh, make an athletics check using the air elemental strength. Okay. Use my air dice. Mm, eight. Mm. Using all the force of your elemental air, you f push and push, but this ship is extremely heavy. And this side of it, all the weight, because the two other sides are given essentially an anti-gravity force from an arcane, all the weight is being pushed into this one corner. Outside of a natural 20, you would not be able to help this at all, unfortunately. Outside of a natural 20? Yeah. Wow. But maybe. You never know, that could have been really epic. That could have been really epic. Yep. Cool. Uh, is just okay. Well, I, I learned that the boat's heavy as shit. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, you do. That's what I learned this turn. Every ship One of 20 dimensions, you're awesome right now. Thanks. It's okay. You essentially, you essentially one shot at a wyvern. Yeah. yeah. You bunny one shot at a wyvern. Oh, it's, it's uh, okay. I don't. I don't need you you know, comfort. validation. <laughs> oh no, I need validation. I do. Yeah. I do. No, I just want to bring it up again. Leave it for I, Orion. Uh, I just want. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to bring it up again because I think it's the most ridiculous death to a wyvern ever. That's uh, great. Uh, validation for bunny death. Death by bunny bunnies. Death. Okay. Uh, this wyvern, looking at the circumstance, You're good enough. takes off. You're smart enough. <laughs> tries to fly and can't. Darn it. Oh. Can't fly. It's, no, because its wing is messed up from uh, from Tiberius. Uh, so it steps around. It's the only thing it can reach, which is you, Scanlan. Uh, coming at you with a bite and its stinger again, since it can't use its claws. That is a. Uh, and I sing my little cutting words song to. I get against which attack? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Against which attack? The oh, he has two attacks. He's a bite and a stinger. Oh, uh, against the stinger. Okay. Uh, the bite is a 22 to hit. Oh, he hits. <laughs> All right. Ooh. You take uh, ooh, 14 points of uh, piercing damage. Okay, okay. Come on. As it just, as its arm, as its entire mouth just opens up and clamps down onto your shoulder and torso. As it's holding you in place, you try and pull back as its tail whips towards you. Oh, oh. Go ahead and make your roll. Uh, what, what do I roll? 20? Roll d10 and reduce whatever, that's whatever the attack is reduced by. That's an eight. Ten. 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 Yes, that's zero. Ten. That's a ten. Ten. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. So it's a. It rolled a twenty-four to hit. That goes down to fourteen. To 14. My armor class is fifteen. Yeah. <laughs> Your, armor class, Your armor class is seventeen. I'm also wearing a necklace, which makes it seventeen. Your armor class is seventeen. Your armor class is seventeen. Oh snap! So yes. I'm okay. Don't. Yeah, you should From change that. that. Yeah. Did you write well, it I rolled the armor, 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 and then there was apparently some necklace that I forgot about. Yeah, he's had a plus two, and plus the army had a plus three to his AC. Seriously? Which was 14 times. I, I didn't I don't realize. feel, I don't I feel bad about, about taking the ring. Yeah. Well, fair enough. Who knew? Who knew? Um, Who knew? So, <laughs> so, as it's clamping down on you, it's tail whips in the air, what are you going, what kind of words are you going to throw? Oh, uh, and you miss me like the deserts miss the rain. <laughs> <laughs> the wyvern, who's still clamping down on your body, it's one eye opens up and goes, you hear an audible, <laughs> um, and, as, and as its tail swings towards you, it just hits the, the ground next to you, poof, slamming into the wood. Entirely distracted by your sudden lack of fear and display of beautiful musical voice, uh, misses beautiful. you. Uh, that ends its turn. Percy, you're up. All right, I'm just I'm taking out the pepper box. I'm going to turn towards it and just unload. All right, go for it. Shoot that load, Percy. Uh, <laughs> finish it. <laughs> Yes. No. Oh, no. I didn't. Ten? Damn it. I was ten. Total ten? Total ten. Nope. <gasps> no. uh, You're the closer, Percy. Twenty-two? Yes. Boom. You only get two attacks. Oh, I'm using my bonus action. Oh, you mean you're using your, your, your action surge? I'm using my action okay. surge. Okay, so you get four uh, attacks. <laughs> that misses. And then, uh, 
19. That's two hits. Yep. Ah. That's two hits. Damage on two. I was using. I was also using my uh, sharpshooter mode for for that, so that I can do some extra damage. Nice. Well, that's cover box. Uh, number one. Kill that's all the things. <laughs> Kill all. Twenty points of damage plus plus one point of ice damage. Alrighty. It's the ice damage that's gonna do it. Yeah. <laughs> and the next one oh, cool. is. <laughs> it's so chilly. Ooh, it's a little... 25 points of damage and one point of fire damage. Yeah. Hey, I want to do this. Yeah! The closer! The closer. Western style, I'm just going to fan yeah. <laughs> the fucking yeah. hammer. I'm going to fan the hammer, I'm going right. to just tear that wing off. So, uh, with each successive blast, even the ones that don't immediately impact, it's the first blast hits and explodes across its shoulder joint as you see the rest of the flesh that Tiberius had already uh, weakened. Gets severed and tied, the wing being flung off the side of the ship and disappearing in the wind beneath. As it rears back in pain, the second one hits its side, the third one strikes it on the other wing, and as it rears back in pain, its mouth open to the sky in this screeching kind of death rattle. The final blast hits it under the chin, poof, leaving a gaping hole under its neck as it steps back and then tumbles off the edge of the ship, vanishing below. Wait, 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 wait! Can I catch it as an air elemental and bring it back up? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, <laughs> you are underneath the ship currently. You see the wyvern below. You dive for it. Uh, go ahead and make an athletics check. <laughs> <laughs> now look, everyone, we still have one to interrogate. 12. Isn't that nice? You go try and grab it, but your fizz, your, your air form no, doesn't have quite, and it just shit, swoops shit, through and disappears shit, towards the ocean below. Nah, <laughs> I forgot. Uh, as as the, uh, the captain gets up the... Uh, the other half thing which you can see is like dressed in, in ragged robes. It has cloth wrapped across its face. I kind of pull the arrow so it like wraps up in the rope. <laughs> uh, the guards are there with their weapons drawn. Uh, you can uh, currently there is still the the spear that's jammed in the side that's sparking, causing the whole ship to list. Uh, can, can I can I try and get that out? Yeah. As you swing up, uh, you go ahead and manage to as an animal to form just. <laughs> And pull the uh, the strange thing off the edge of the ship. At which point the the blue stone <laughs> comes back online and the ship rights itself. Oh, that was lovely. Uh -huh. um, I thought it was probably something. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. No, I, I figured. Now you know. We it's need a... to check on that box now. Well, yeah, that other. I'll one, go check that that other one. Was we haven't seen any of them. Gone for a while. Yeah. We haven't so. seen any of them. All right. If so they were, if they were clever, they didn't leave the room. Well, that's the whole thing. If they were clever, oh, this was a, hopefully they're like there. he said, a distraction. I'm gonna run so, down uh, and check the box. This uh, this halfling is currently kind of just on the side right now. Uh, the one guard holding it. Who's going downstairs? I'm going downstairs. And I'll go to the halfling. Uh, uh, <laughs> where, to move over. Liam, where are you at? Uh, where am I? At, uh, He's in New Jersey. Last time I spoke, I was by Keyleth. I'm just following her lead. Are you okay oh, health-wise? I'm all right. right. All right, so you run over the halfling. Big, better, what do you want to do? Worse. I would like to pick him up, not chuck him, but pick him up <laughs> and hold him ever so gently over the side and say, my mind does seem like a long way down. What the fuck are you doing attacking this ship? <laughs> and I'm, as he says that, I hover the daggers. All right, roll intimidation check with advantage because of Tiberius's... Don't worry, if you fail, I can intimidate. Uh, do you have a beard today? He definitely has a beard today. Uh, 16. Uh, on, on both rolls? Uh, 16 on the advantage roll. Oh, gotcha, okay. Uh, <laughs> all right, so uh, the halfling, which you now look, uh, appears to be female. Uh, the cloth kind of drops in from its face. You can see the teeth are kind of broken uh, and rotted. This this, this is not a, a, a city-going uh, folk. It's kind of, oh, please, please, don't, don't, just uh, let me live, let me live. Oh, let, let you live? Let, let, oh! Oh, 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 stop it, stop it! Oh, it starts, you should answer it starts crying friend. in your grasp. <laughs> if you wish to live, answer our giant friend who asks you a rather polite question. Oh, what's the question? <laughs> <laughs> you know, my hands are so sweaty, I'm afraid you'll slip if you don't tell me what you were doing attacking this ship. We. We. We live in an island below. We usually just hit ships that come through this channel as pass. Pirating, if you will. Take money, things that we can, and run. Usually it's just quick hits and go. We couldn't pass up the opportunity. We managed to acquire a few things to help, and we've only harried one other sky ship. 
We was we saw you. We knew there had to be some sort of riches involved. Insight check? Yeah, somebody do it. Sixteen. Twenty. Uh extremely scared, extremely honest, in a mode of trying to stay alive at this point in time. So nobody hired you? No. No, I haven't been to a city in years. No, I'll touch you. We have an island below. It's a cavern we live in. We just come up and out to grab what we can to survive. Yes, Captain Damon, what do you propose we do with this uh, thief pirate? Captain Dam Damon, who's gone back to the ship to try and get it back on course and is currently turning it around. To be perfectly honest, I'd usually throw him overboard. But if Drop. you see him, <gasps> oh! <laughs> if you want him, you can catch him. Log! I'm too busy. Well, the captain said he'd throw him over. Her. It was Her a over. girl. It was a poor little girl halfling. Oh wait, I still had the grapple arrow. You do, as the rope's oh, going. No, I'm holding on still. So she's like kind of dangling still. Can Apparently, I? Currently, yes. Uh, as you look over, actually. <laughs> She have an arrow through her arm? Yes. yes. Like, oh. In a very painful way, she is currently held by her shoulder blade, which now has But a it was kind hand. of wrapped around her, so maybe it didn't hurt quite as bad. It hurt pretty oh. bad. Oh. It's oh. not oh. wrapping around oh. this. I pull her up. I look at Grog. Really? What are you sticking Really? <laughs> pull you pull her up. up. <laughs> She's bleeding out and is looking pretty rough. Well, shit. Maybe we should have let her drop. <laughs> <laughs> She's still alive, though. No, She's still no, alive. no. Um, Oh what should we like put her in a prison cell? I don't know what to do with her now that we've oh, yeah. seen her. Let's heal her and put her to work. She's probably been out of work. What do you think, time. little one? She can you replace want a real the guard job? that they killed. Maybe brush your teeth. Uh, it's just, just kind of like on one knee. Going, <laughs> anything. 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 Just don't drop me. Looking over Grog again. Don't, don't Be drop afraid me. of him. Don't drop me. Be very afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, do you want to oh, heal her? Well. Come here. <laughs> are we in agreement we are saving this one? I guess so. I'm going to go through, I'm gonna go through her worker. pockets, make sure she's not uh, hiding anything. To be any fair, we did divers. lose one over the edge, yeah. so we we might need another crew member. Well, That's true. Well, what's what's your name? Tira. 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 How old are you? I don't know. Oh, that's oh, so, sad. so sad. She looks in her maybe twenties <laughs> or thirties. Up close, you can see just uh, just a harsh life and the harsh elements. She looks older than oh, she Brad is, but there's there's a youth in this too. Maybe you can heal her teeth while mm. you're at it. <laughs> <laughs> Tira, empty your pockets. Yeah. I, I give her a quick pat down to make sure she's not carrying any uh, daggers or hidden. Uh, there are a few rusty hidden blades and a coin purse that contains four gold. Mm -hmm. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking it. All right. You can earn your wage on this ship if you behave. All right. All right. Okay. And if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> he means he'll throw you over. <laughs> you can have a real life here, little one. Yeah. That's your past. This is your future. <laughs> And she kind of like slings over towards the uh, doorways that lead into the lower part of the deck as you guys kind of lead Tira in. Uh, the captain has regained control of the ship. Uh, and you guys settle in to check in on the room where the... I'm knocking on the door. Uh, Borak, dis dis disona. Pa uh, Lady Kima. L Lady Kima, hello. The door opens. And uh, they're still sitting in the back by the box with the weapons that are ready and Kima opens the door. Is everything all right? It's pirates. We've taken care of it. Good, good. And she's kind of rubbing her head. <laughs> you can see there's a little trickle of blood on her head. Apparently, I guess when <laughs> the ship listed, they all kind of slid in the room as well. She heard. Uh, do you need anything? Is everything all right? Oh, it's fine. And she kind of reaches up and touches her head. And you can see there's a slight warm glow of divine energy, and the blood flow stops. That almost feels like cheating. Okay. <laughs> uh, as long as everything is fine, there was no incidents. Nothing. Nothing unusual. Nothing, nothing. I've kept a very close watch. Excellent. I'll report upstairs then. Very well. Carry on. Well, uh, really, the box is fine. Everybody yeah. seemed fine. They sure? said no, no, no events. No, nothing, it's nothing. To freaking just, uh, yeah, in this freaking room. <laughs> no, it was, it was trolling over here. Yeah. Should you inside? Or should you? I. I don't know. God's in a room. I mean, really. Yeah, I mean, what are they going to do? My insight was the box was still there. 
Okay. I'm just going to cast Prestidigitation on the little half elf and clean her up real quick. Oh. Okay. Uh, I, I, she's living inside you. She's <laughs> and watches her form. It feels like little up. fishies, doesn't her, it? Her, her, <laughs> she sounds tickled and scared at the same time, but the uh, the clothing cleans up. It's still tattered. Yeah. Um, and you know, if she looks a little cleaner, the, you know, most of the dirt's gone, but she still looks weathered. Her skin, her working, skin's darker from a lot of sun. She's mainly working on the smell. Oh, oh that's taken care. Of. She kind of looks to you. Thanks. Yeah. A proper bath will be better. Did you hear Yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I uh, drop the elemental form. All right. Back up. <laughs> Assume you no go over. No longer a tornado. <laughs> uh, a whirlwind dervish. We'll say as you guys all head back underneath the ship to go ahead and and write yourselves for the remainder of the journey. We'll call the game the evening there. Yeah. Wow. Uh, that was a oh, uh, welcome <laughs> back, everybody. Hey, welcome hey, back. Hey, back. That That's ship so looks cool. awesome. That ship looks so cute. You Man. guys handle that pretty damn well. <laughs> <laughs> this is way better than E3. He's definitely trying to kill us. Oh, Only yeah. one of us got thrown off the ship, and she could fly. I know. <laughs> yeah. It was nice. They had no idea you were a druid. No. <laughs> You're the closest one to the Griffins. Like, I'm okay. Go. I'm okay. Normally that's me, just right off. <laughs> yeah. That should happen. We never liked her anyway. Whatever. <laughs> Awesome. Uh-oh. How high would you say up Oh, my God. So guess what you're doing soon, huh? Oh, my God. Oh my <laughs> God. I can't believe you guys that did video. this. Oh I can't believe God. you guys did this. I should know better by now. Yeah, you yeah, should. Like, really challenging should. the internet. We never, never challenge the internet. <laughs> this that's, video is going to be so The internet always wins. <laughs> I did, I did so text uh, Alex and Iffy uh, to let them know of the work I, <laughs> I volunteered them for. <laughs> Did you let Dan uh, Casey know too? Uh, I let Dan know on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know, I'm so excited. It will so be excited. a good time. Uh, I'm gonna ask uh, Ryan if you could go grab that cake. <gasps> um, the cake. And uh, after you get the cake, go ahead and start handing out all those gifts while we read through ah! these donations. Alrighty. Presents. Okay. Presents. As you know, guys, just so you're aware, greatest job ever. Christmas. We're, we're trying yeah. to just read the donations that are twenty dollars or more because we're getting a lot of donations and we have for an amazing. hour and a half Which reading a bunch of one dollar donations. We love and appreciate the donations so much. We're gonna make a video soon because I have a fatty oh. check waiting for a two six. I need to. Get yeah, we're gonna go ahead and do a big delivery on that. You guys. I have an uncomfortably large check sitting there waiting for that. <laughs> All right, guys. So here we go. Here is the uh, the. Here's here. Oh, we had God, a nice and plate. Oh, oh, that's so cool. Thank you guys so much. That's what awesome. Uh, well, it's for Matt. <gasps> it's for it's his for birthday. birthday. Oh, shit. Happy I totally birthday. forgot. Yeah, you got, uh, it's the 29th, right? Yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Lucas! Is that a two Lucas? Boo boo boo! God damn it, Lucas! <laughs> I haven't seen one of those yet. Shh. All right, yes. Yeah. So, uh, so Ryan's gonna get the, uh, the knives and the plates and all that good stuff. So. Uh, it's amazing, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Thank you. If you want to start reading through those. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You guys are so awesome. Just bite into it? No. Wait for the plates. Oh, keep forgetting okay. I have a birthday Can I stick my finger Everyone in Everyone else is so no. much better at remembering it than me. Yeah. All right, so. Yeah, Facebook. Kurt Cole donated $100 to 826. What? This is a national support of Vorak. Man. Hope you get better, buddy. Shut yes, up. for those who didn't realize, uh, a scale bearer Vorak, one of the two envoys, was named after Vorak, one of our critters who's currently uh, currently in recovery. Oh, so, that's right. Uh, oh, that's Vorak. Yes. Vorak has an NPC in our world now, and, and right I'm on. hoping you get better, Vorak. Congrats, you're, Vorak. You're currently you're one of the two guarding the Horn of Orcus back to <gasps> the uh, Temple of the Platinum Dragon. So yeah, yeah buddy. Nice. So well don't done. fuck it up. Yeah, don't fuck it up, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, not so that's awesome. Uh, that Alice donated twenty dollars. Thanks to Critical Role, I went on the most amazing date with a girl I met at D and D. I owe you all. Yeah. Hashtag Grogbeard. Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, actually, go ahead and roll roll uh, 2d10. 2d10? Yeah. Oh, I, <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> okay. Why are we tempting this person's fate like this? <laughs> Alright, and what's the first one? Four. Thank you, sir. And a nine. Alright. So, uh, as you finish the battle, you reach up and realize that there's a little bit of a... Uh, uh, a little bit of a of scruff of the chin, and to the point you find Goliaths that are usually hairless beings. Your body is trying its damnedest to grow some form of facial hair, and it's coming out in this kind of like, we're talking fourth grade scruff, you know, where you get that really thin facial the hair. That, yeah, yeah, so it's coming. I'm a man. You're fighting, <laughs> that dwarf beard is fighting, uh, fighting your physicality, so. <laughs> I'm never shaving. All right, we have uh, Big Tom ac Action, donated $50. That's amazing. Hey, boy, uh, I'm making a matching you. donation to my local 826 in Seattle. That's great. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, represent. If you guys ever need a Warforged Artificer, nice, let me know. Wait. It's a good setup. What? That's yes. A, a, yeah, that's a great race class combination, by the Always. way. Always. Make, ha make me happy. Uh, G1 Big Daddy Half, what's this up? This is really making a mess, Thank just so you know. Thanks. Okay. Forty dollars, which is awesome. Thank you. So awesome new shirt acquired. Less, hashtag less than three. Nothing cheers you up like Critical Role Thursdays when you're having a bad week. Glad we could help you cheer it up. Yeah, buddy. That week's over now. That week's over. It's all bad good for me, over. buddy. That week's over. At an end. Indeed. Uh, uh, the line is long. Jean, is long. Yeah, Jeannie twenty three forty three donated a hundred dollars. Right. Amazing. Fun as usual. Thanks. Matt's piece. I get a piece of the cake. Thank you. Wait, I'm let me, let me do the math because I think I just made it too big. That Matt gets the big piece. Good. As you should. Oh, it's good. This isn't vegan cake, is it? Nope, not vegan. Thank God. Oh. I mean, <laughs> I love fine. you, man. It's, no, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Hi, Liam. <laughs> Hi, guys. I miss you. And you. We miss you too, we Liam. Miss you, Liam. I'll be back soon. We miss you, Liam. X Dragon Rider X, so you thirty-five dollars. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dragon Rider. Uh, so I wanted to make sure this money went to you guys. The grog shirt design is still in Redbubble, and this is what I've gotten so far. Thank you, Less than three of you all. Also, PS4, Xbox One. Looking to get one for my bir 21st birthday in August. Much love, Becca. Oh, Becca, that's right. It's Becca. Hi, Becca. Um, I, I, I personally lean towards PS4, but I, I don't know. I'm on PS4, people. Do it. PC Master Race. PC Master Race, unless you're Arkham Knight. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Kalina, ZX, CXC. Donated $20. Does Keyleth sing anybody? Heart. Oh. 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 Um. No comment. Um. <laughs> Big piece, <laughs> little piece. Mertoriel, donated $20. Piece. Finally, I get to see the show live. Thanks for the advice and such on Twitter, and Laura, you owe me a hug. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the free fun and inspiration, Heart. Did Thank you get you a much. shirt? They got a shirt, that's why I owe them a hug. Nice. Yeah. Natural 20, donated 50 bucks. Hello, my name is David, and I had the pleasure of meeting some of you at E3. Oh! Yay! Hi! Oh, hey, David. David, who met you guys oh, at E3? Oh, yeah! Thanks, buddy. Oh, Thank wait, you was he our familiar? <laughs> yeah, yeah! Oh, hi, David! Yes! Thank you for being so gracious with your time. While I'm not surprised, it was heartwarming to learn that you are as no, awesome in person as on the show. Hope we can meet up again. Hey. That's awesome. Thank you so much, David. Uh, Damiano Pyro donated $20. Thank you so much for sharing your game with us. Each episode reminds me of some event from my own 30 years of role playing. That's awesome. Long live Vox Machina, indeed. Yeah, you got your, you got your grog barrel. Look at that. You got the grog Whoa. barrel. Oh, grog that's ale barrel awesome. from whatever guests yes. gives yes. the audience. Yeah. From giants. No <laughs> way. Oh, it's so like, pretty. Like oh, that, but yeah. No baby grog. I love it. Hey, do we have some milk in here? Yeah, can we? <laughs> Just turn into a got milk commercial. I love it. All right, Larry Band donated twenty dollars. Tonight was the first time I got to watch live. I am so excited to be part of this. Hashtag Critter's Hearts. That's Thank awesome. Thank you so much. Nikki Hama, donated $25. Welcome back from E3. Love Gilmore. Yeah, Team Gilmore. Gilmore. Team yeah. Gilmore. Hashtag Gilmore. Vorak is love, Vorak is hype. Oh, oh Vorak. Oh my God. Vorak, 1024, donated $20. Thank you so much, Matt and group. I can't believe you did that. Thank you so much for including me. I can't tell you how happy this makes me. Oh, oh yeah, Vorak man. donated. What? Vorak! You're silly, Vorak. can't see you, Vorak. You're so silly. Vorak. Vorak. $20. This is in Vorak's honor. Vorak. Suck it, Vorak. <laughs> <laughs> I'm spending money to do something nice for you. Happy late second birthday present. Thank you, Matt, for adding Vorak as an NPC. I love all of Vox, Mo Vox Moronica. Yeah! Yeah. Yeah. Alright, uh, Gamer Wife, R1206. Donated twenty-five dollars. Thank you so much, Gamer Wife. Uh, love you guys. Show my hubby and I started playing D and D because of the show. I made a ton of new friends. Also, those of you who worked on Lego Jurassic World, who do you play? <laughs> those of us who worked on Lego Jurassic World, who do you play? Oh. You're not oh. to say anything. Bunch it's of guys, cool. people. Bunch Liam, what do I play? Oh, we can't say anything yet. It's oh, not out yet. Uh, it's not out yet. Hot dog guy gets eaten. Uh, it's out. Yeah. 
Oh, really? It's out. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, yeah, well, yeah, hot dog guy. Like, it's out, isn't it? Nice. Awesome. I'm an admission vendor. <laughs> nice. I think I played. I played a couple scientists. Yeah, and I, I get eaten. Uh, Go. I think a dad or something. Yeah. Or, yeah. There's no more forks. So. I've just been eating with my hands. Yeah. Play a bunch of guys yeah, in Jurassic yeah, World. Guys. Just yeah. like a world. Got, if, if you figure out, let Rip us know. Ribros, there you go. $100! Let it be known to the universe. Oh. If one of our numbers shall stumble, a hundred nameless others shall rise to the <laughs> rise in the void. Hashtag Team Human, hashtag Team Borak. Yay, uh -huh. Borak. So we are now Hydra. Cool. I was going to say, uh, well, I was gonna say White Walkers. Like, you can no, that's Hydra, yo. Hydra. Uh, paradigm Shift, $100. Thank Whoa. you so much. You guys are awesome, just saying. You guys are awesome. $100? MZV5005 donated $20. Uh, 826 LA rocks and Critical Role rocks. Right. You rock. You rock. You guys are awesome. Dakin donated 50 bucks for the children. Thursday is my favorite night of the week. I love the show and the cast along with Critical now Role. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like Rick Bishop, 88, donated $25. I know this isn't much right now. It, any amount really is amazing, guys. Seriously. Yeah, don't don't belittle does. yourself on that. Uh, but I will donate more when I can. Thank you for everything you guys do. You're an amazing, entertaining group of people. You brought brightness to my week, which has been very much needed. Thank you. I'm so glad we could do that. And thanks for coming and joining us on a crazy adventure on an airship. Um, I'll pass this over there for you. I got a big piece. It's nice. Uh, Maddie, uh, MCT, forty dollars. Seeing you guys gives me hope that I can one day find friends. I love as much as you guys love each other. Oh, oh thank you, Maddie. Oh, no, oh, no, I don't have any. It's cool. Oh, I thought I don't know. Got friends here. Who are your friends? Yeah. Many friends in the critter group too. Seriously, this is the best community ever. No, the, it's so nice. Ever. It's the nicest the internet community. has ever been. Oh my god. I don't know why. I thought Lilith you guys were sharing. Oh my god. Emma B. Oh my god. Oh my god. What? Keep going with the donation. Emma B. 94. Donated $30. Zach. I just want to say thank oh you to god, all of you so for sharing this wonderful show with us and interacting with the fans the way you do. It means so much. Much love from England. Much love to you, less than three. Thank you, Emma. Zofer donated $35. Thanks again for the awesomeness of this critical role. Thank you for watching, Zofer, and being awesome and donating. Oh my god. <gasps> they say our names? Yeah, that's what I get! Yeah. You what? probably found oh, it! opened it! Later, later! I'm not gonna drink that. <laughs> well, on the bottles? Yeah. yeah! Oh my god! Look at this shit! I'm gonna hold one sorry, in front sorry. of the iPad so I can see what you're <gasps> talking about. <laughs> what? I can't see it, I can't see oh, it. Oh, it says drink it! It says drink it. Have look, 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 look. Oh look, my god! Look, look. Shut up! You maniacs! <laughs> that is ridiculous. You guys I are ridiculous. I thought you were just happy that you got a soda. <laughs> yeah, we thought it was sweet. So like, oh, it's so nice. It's glasses are good. Hi, I donated twenty-five dollars. Thanks for naming an NPC for four. I can thanks to the critter who suggested it. Critter love. Thank you. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Escher Bacon donated twenty-five dollars. Happy to help a good cause. Keep doing what you're doing. I'm prepping for jamming my first RPG in years. Pathfinder. Congrats and and good luck with that. Have fun, man. And critter has been inspiring. Tote's gonna use. How do you want to do this? Yep. Spread yeah, the phrase. Yeah, man. Also, awesome Matt, is it yeah, a lot of hard work being so awesome? <laughs> it's hard work existing, <laughs> <laughs> but but I like it. It works okay. Uh, Foxy Fourth Size donated twenty one dollars and forty cents. Yeah. Way to be specific. Yeah, uh, you guys are so incredible. Thank you all for what you do. I know it's not much here, but here's ten percent of my last two checks. What? I have to do that? I don't have to do that? Oh, yeah. We're like a church now, you Happy guys. Happy to help a good cause. Also, I'm still trying to work oh, on these we gifts. Not. We're like a cult. cult. Oh, yes. We are, we, are, we, are, we are a cult, and 826 is our patron saint. That's right. Always we wanted all a cult. To. I'm so excited. <laughs> my parents were right about everything. Hugs, Mc, <laughs> Hugs, this is my favorite name. Hux McNasty. I like it. $40. <laughs> Keep up the amazing work. Tell Zach that Vox Moronica needs their own show during the week. <laughs> <laughs> Guest DMs Hector Felicia, hilarious. If Matt can't make it, love you guys. Encourage violence. Yay. Well said. I would never let Felicia tell me what to do. Oh. Uh, 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 <laughs> Lucidity08 donated $20. Shared the channel with a friend who I knew would love it. Come to find out, and a few others were already starting a campaign and invited me along. I played my first game last week and couldn't be happier. Thanks for all that you do. That's awesome. Congrats on that. Uh, yeah, dude. Guys, we really love hearing all the people saying they're playing their first game ever. That is, yeah. that's yeah. definitely it's something so, we wanted and yeah. uh, spread it, spread it. I love that you're cradling your trinket like a baby. <laughs> he needs to boop. Casriano <laughs> 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 donated $30. You guys are amazing. Thank you for all the time and work you give us and for bringing 826LA to our attention. <laughs> Writing has saved me so many times and I love supporting something that teaches others my safe haven. Love and good vibes to you all. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Yeah. And it's so true. Like there's something about the creative outlet of writing that's so incredible, and what they provided A26 is, is amazing. 
Salazar Jack donated $82.60. That's awesome. Yeah, man. Iman's children deserve more than a couple packs of Gilmore's Glorious Coloring Sticks, Grog. <laughs> <laughs> Here is some coin to support urchins reading and writing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. These are important ventures. I love in character notes. That makes me happy. Uh, Lesoul donated fifty dollars. Amazing. Thank you, Lesoul. You guys are the best Dini programming on the web and are a source of inspiration for my group. If you guys are ever recording in Irvine, I know there are quite a few critters around that would buy you a pint. Awesome. Contact oh, and uh, oh, it's Irvine. Blizzard folk. <gasps> Do you shoot at Blizzard.com. <laughs> Yeah, you get some. <laughs> 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 right? I'm not good enough. We can bleep that in post, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not live. Cool. Next. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not thinking, I'm eating cake and Sweet. reading. I'm, I'm Ron Burgundy? I know, he's just blindly <laughs> reading. <laughs> Contact. <laughs> da 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 da. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's cool, it's cool. Next. It's been a long day. Next. Nothing Danger happened. Manger, five 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 donating at thirty dollars. Greetings from the UK. <laughs> Greetings. Really enjoyed the show and a really good cost of support. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you can make group into five e when we change systems. Worth getting up at three a.m. for. Glad to have you, buddy. That's it. Awesome. Oh, wait, Thank you guys so much for the amazing messages, <laughs> amazing donations to eight two six. You guys are awesome. This was this was too. Oh, Prometheus Theus. I hope everyone enjoyed the brandy. Yes! Oh, yes. oh, oh my god! Yes. It's making everything funnier. <laughs> only, the, only the best best of libations for Grog's and Scanlon's parties. I couldn't find any, I couldn't find any mail order brothels. <laughs> oh, yeah. Keep looking. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, so you guys have some <laughs> gifts to get through. Um, Can we talk about these Cokes for a second? Cokes. Go for yeah. it. Yeah. Holy uh, shit. They, they, have, they have our names on them. Oh shit! It says They're refreshing. A, Come on. And <laughs> what does Matt say? What does Matt say? Mercer. Mercer. Nice. This is so Should I cute. Should Yes. I love it. I didn't know you could do this. This, this is amazing. So cool. This is genius. We gotta get like blockers so we can break, put our stuff like on the table. I Thank know, you so much. I know. I want everyone to see all our cool. Uh, I, so I got. Cool. I got a. No, I got a note. It says, "Dear Sam and Ashley, I seem to remember from one of the Q and A sessions that little statues of Scanlan and Pike had been carved at one point for the character." <gasps> And now you two have little statues of them for yourselves. I hope earphones. they made it to you in good shape. It's so oh, awesome! That's so cool! Okay. They're little statues of us. You have to paint them. them. Okay. But those oh are for everybody. Oh, oh my god, what? what? In front of the Wait, iPad are so we I supposed to have it. each other? I feel like you should have. Well, I would like yours, <laughs> but but you know, whatever. Go ahead and show Liam. Liam, like Liam hasn't seen it. Did you got, Did you show this last it year? It looks just like. Oh, I see. Oh just like no, we did. I don't think we. No, we showed. We showed you. We didn't show I feel the. Like the we internet. need each other. That's so cool. I feel like that too, but. Yeah. Is that what they intended? I don't know. I don't want to. Pass these down. We also have these awesome. What is this? I feel like we need each other. D20 coins. Cool. D20 coins. That's, that's dope. Oh Which oh, what? Cool. Got some awesome D20 coins. Like the official coin. Oh, oh wow. It's oh, it's a it's 1 or 20. That's okay. so cool. Thank you very much. I get the one. I represent this. Oh, this is awesome. Oh, 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 oh my god, these are so cool. cool. Thank you so much, Vengeful oh, wait, no, Divine. Both that's both amazing. Who is this? Come on. Vengeful Divine? Vengeful Divine. Vengeful Divine. Vengeful Divine. Vengeful Divine. Vengeful Divine. This is awesome. Can we do the coats? Do we know? That's so cool. And guys, uh... There are a lot of letters that was sent. Um, there's no way you guys have time to read no. them all. But we will there, read them. We'll, 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 we'll read them. We'll read them after. We, we, we can also do that the week. Uh, we can uh, in two weeks. Week week after the week That's after true. Comic Con, we wait. can sit and just read yeah. them. Yeah. So as, as a heads up, guys, just so you know, uh, Comic Con we won't be able to play because everything will be done at Comic Con the week after. Wait, but you can meet us at Comic Con. But you can meet us at Comic Con. There will be a Comic Con. Yeah. Uh, Critical Role has a panel. Yeah. There's a letter. On Thursday at 4. 4 p.m. Yep, in Petco Park. Oh, it's at 4 p.m. 4 p.m. That's great. I thought it was earlier Sorry, than that. Uh, no, 4 p.m. The, the, the one o'clock one that I'm um, the gig and I'm doing. I'm on that one too. Then I'll see you that one, and then yeah. this one's at four. So yeah. No, it's okay. Wait, wait. Before Ooh, we stop living. though, because what this is really is this? cool. Uh, you guys got so your fan fiction here. Oh my oh. god. Oh. But you guys are all gonna want to see this, so I should read it out loud. Okay, okay do it. Do it. Do it. Okay, go. To the cast of Critical Role, I just wanted to thank you for letting us come along on your adventures with Vox Machina. The live stream has become something I look forward to all week long. Watching you guys play has inspired me to be more creative, to be more creative role playing my characters, and to DM a session of my own. Thank you so much, Jesse at Crypto Baffling. Crypto Baffling. He's freaking awesome. Oh, what? Are cool. All of us. Cool. 
and oh they are god. so good. Oh, oh my god, god. look at that. Oh my god, you got to be kidding so, me. Oh, wow. Wait, I'll show you, I'll show you after. Wow, wow. this is great. Oh, oh my god. god. Look at me, I'm so pretty. You guys, these so can cool. be our Christmas oh, cards. He's so those. cute. Those. We have our oh, Christmas so cards cute. done for this year. Oh, 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 oh. I'm really hot. So I'll give you guys, I'll, I'll give You're them all, I'll pass hot. them all out. Oh, oh my amazing. god. Oh my god, look at the pipe. Yes. I have to, I have to call this out nice because this might be my favorite thing ever. It came with a note that said, This is a small token of appreciation, not just for me, but to all enjoy watching your show. Please follow the instructions on the base. It says Grog's Ale on its own little cask. <laughs> and then on the base it says, Keep away from giants. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Was there a note for these? Yeah, you can away. Zach, was there a note for these? It's awesome. Oh it's my god. god. And it's actually got a tap. <laughs> Works. Was with one of those. That's really? amazing. Yeah. Some of those are a couple weeks old. Oh my <laughs> god. Ash, you guys are ridiculous. Send me a, send me a oh message god. on Twitter if you sent me these because I would piece love of to paper. know. This is back so down on us. Something? What's yeah, the there's a. Uh, each one of these oh, black bags oh, is oh. custom dice for you we guys. Have custom dice. Yeah. Custom, custom dice. Holy custom dice. Oh, oh, Show Grisiak. Oh, Show yeah. Grisiak. Thank you so much. My. Yeah. Yeah. Show Grisiak. Show Grisiak. What, what are all your say stuff? Mine Aww. says these are for the druid who has mastered the elements, several very powerful beast forms, and most famously, or perhaps most infamously, the grasping vines. Which, <gasps> if you green. can see, they're like green, like. That's so cool. Vine druid, uh, dice. Mine say that the uh, uh, some some very nice things, but then it says that these dice reflect your truth. You see the world through rose-colored glasses. Oh, oh that's so what? awesome! That Vax, Vax, yours say these dice are for a rogue so stealthy that you're not even sure where he is most of the time. <laughs> Perhaps you may see a blur out of the corner of your eye before it vanishes in darkness. And. And they are the white. bag is empty. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the bag is that would empty. be the yeah, best troll ever. Dice. God. Whoa. Oh, they are. They're invisible. They're, they're like, like invisible. dark invisible. Oh, thank you. Oh, That's so cool. That's really cool. What does yours say? Uh, it says uh, <clears throat> dice that are as red as your dragonborn scales and as red as the fire you breathe. Love you guys. Oh, nice. And they actually oh, are really cool. beautiful, uh, lovely, lovely. I've got to thank Paul for this. Paul, AKA thank Lou, you, Paul. Oh, guys, this is so fun. Fun. These dice go to the stealthy ranger and her stolen trinket. So at home amongst the trees that is nearly impossible to spot her amidst the various shades of woodland greenery. Also, trinket is the best. <laughs> Whoa, those are rad. Master Tinker Extraordinary, if you can craft something as badass as the bad news, then you deserve dice that are as equally badass. The bad news is granting advantage on saving throws against auto hit the holder ray since a few weeks ago. And these are beautiful chrome dice that are so heavy they could probably bludgeon a child to death. <laughs> yes. Oh, some nice chrome they're dice. Like, they're they're like gun metal. Holy Heavy. Yeah, he wasn't shitting you. No, like, I will kill a child with Like, wait, 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 listen. Like, find one and just peg him really That's Quidditch hard. job. Listen, 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 listen. Oh! That's some That's heft danger on that zone. Yeah, we don't, we don't kill children on this we channel, we and we also don't, don't steal them, we don't put them on That'll the That'll be on my periscope not, later. You can yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. So cool. Sam, did you read it? Oh I did, I did. Most colored oh, glasses, like, and also, I, uh, oh, that's awesome. Right. To assist you on your path to fully regain Saren Ray's favor, some ruined dice to help you stay true. Also, maybe try to not slit any more throats with snakes. <laughs> <laughs> Very good advice. Good advice. Whoa! Oh, those are cool. These are so cool. Right. They're like made of bone. Nice. Uh, Bob, what you got? Bob says you can't think of Grog without thinking of blood and metal and also ale. Everyone's favorite Goliath Barbarian, the next time you'd like to rage, maybe serve you well. And it's got like metal with ale splash going over it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. This is awesome. Thank you, Michelle. This will be tavern days. Thank you, Michelle. Yes, These are thank great. Thank you so much. I have, there's another letter that I have to read from Silent Cage Musha. Kage Musha. Kage Musha. Kage Musha. Loves you, only. Sorry. Get your shit together. <laughs> Sorry, it looked a little weird. Apologize. The show Critical Role has become an addiction for me, as well as an inspiration. I never miss an episode, and to be completely honest, I've seen nearly every episode at least five times. What? Whoa. Yeah, baby. What? Whoa. 
I am desperately trying to work out schedules to form my own D&D groups. One with Twitch peeps, the other IRL. In real life. In real life, sorry. I'm really Ash not doing well today. never been on the internet. And now oh. I... <laughs> sorry. And <laughs> now I have even gotten into model making for the campaign that I am DMing. Oh, that's, that's awesome! Such, for the couple that should finally make it official, <gasps> here are two flasks to symbolize your love that when placed beside one another, Form a dragon heart. No way! Oh, 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 the hashtag is Panlin. Panlin? What? What? That is amazing! That is amazing! What? You guys are bound by liquor forever. There is no greater bond than that of liquor. (laughs) No pressure, guys. No pressure. No pressure. Uh, We'll see how this plays out. We'll We'll see how this plays out. I'm trying to ship you guys so hard. Hanlon? Hanlon? That's so amazing. We gotta show Liam. Wait, bring it over here. You gotta show Liam. I I just saw the tiny version of it on Twitch, but yeah, get the other flask. (laughs) We're showing our boy. Um, I, got I got from from Stephen Dugan, aka the Dugan. the Duganator, who we all Come who we all know and love. He got me a uh, Fiora mini from War Machine, who uh-huh. I voice in the game. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. yes! So thank you so much, Stephen. That's what amazing. I love Fiora. I'm gonna paint her up. Uh, here I got oh, from the dice earlier. I got to uh, from Michelle, the Dungeon Master, Omniscient Godbeam. Inflate <laughs> <laughs> my head. Uh, the one who's responsible for creating such intricate and detailed worlds deserves intricate and detailed dice. Keep up the fantastic work, and you have us all on our seats. And it's really awesome, intricate, almost like Gallifreyan dice. Yeah. They look amazing. Oh, yeah. Cool. So, uh, thank you so much, Michelle. Nice. That's incredible. And then also from the Duganator, uh, happy belated birthday. Technically, it's... Early birthday. Early birthday. Happy early, early birthday. birthday. Well, I think, oh, I think this is for you, is why. That, that's, that's belated birthday for you. Oh, oh another one. There you I cannot go. wait to read Oh, this. that makes sense. Oh, because he got me a cruise. Oh, he gave me a, a Blackwing's oh, Ghost oh, Raider. There we go. That's awesome. That's fantastic. So I actually need to get that for you. And uh, and you and, have a Fiora. And Epic Fiora, which is amazing for a War Machine army. Oh, so That's awesome. And High Paladin Dart and Vilman, wow. which is even more viable now that the Paladin yeah. Warcaster uh, Durst is out, which um, will be out soon. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Steven. And Choir Menoff. I actually needed another choir, so this makes me really happy. Thank you so much. Awesome. <laughs> he actually, he, that does make me I happy. do need another one. I've been needing one badly. Uh, thank you so oh, much, Steven. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, oh for all God. the people that send in the letters, one more time, just to let you know, they will read them. Uh, there's just too many to go through live on the air, or we will be here all night. So uh, I had one more announcement. Dave Aragon is the winner of the Facebook giveaway, which includes the dragon, uh, a signed D&D book, and the signed photo. So Dave, Aragon, message us on Twitch. If we don't hear from you on Twitch, we'll find you on Facebook and reach out to you there. Congratulations, and congratulations to the like six large giveaways we had tonight because we had like 300 subscribers. (laughs) (laughs) You guys are amazing. That's outstanding. Oh, before we forget, too, uh, because I think it's interesting to have this. Dear, talented, generous people, you have blessed my Thursday. Such inspiration. Here, then, is my thank you in the guise of an ode star in the greatest D&D group. With love and in, uh, admiration, Vincent uh, Lingolis. That's uh, so sweet of him to, like, give you guys all a story about Vox Moronica. That's really nice. That's so sweet. Uh, mm, mm. Well, I do hope you all find this exercise presumptuous, but rather <laughs> enjoy the tale, as there is plenty more where it came from. And this is Vincent's actual uh, uh, tale, which makes me... So incredibly happy. This is legit. Like, I a legit story. I know. We're gonna read this tonight. Thank I you so much. Starting to delve and going, wow. Vincent, thank you so much. This makes me so happy. Awesome. Uh, I got, I got this. Uh, I got, I got this uh, um, amazing dragon, uh, dragon themed uh, notebook. Did you? Uh, there was, there was a pretty nice. I'm tired. I'm gonna get it to that. And yeah. I, I just saw it right now, and I blew, blew my face off. Um, <laughs> The, 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 yeah. um, Liz, yeah, or Elizabeth, uh, thank you for this from uh, Twitter. Uh, she wrote, um, Dear Mr. Kaba, I hope this is what you had in mind when you requested a dragon notebook, because I did. 
And, <laughs> and this is fantastic. I'm not sure if you will use it for your D&D. I will. Uh, or a journal or something else. But I do hope it makes you happy. It does. Uh, and brings you a smile and brings a smile to your face. Uh, I'm a 30 year old former ICU nurse, new uh, just this year. Congratulations. Uh, Congrats. Stay at home mom of a 13 year old, uh, 13 month old uh, nerd bookworm WoW player for the Horde. Um, no, wait, no, for the a light. 13 month old is a nerd? No, and WoW player? She, she's, a mo- she's a mother of a 13, a 13 month old. And happens to be a WoW player. Well, yeah, that's 13 a 13 month old is a WoW player? There's, they get oh him young. God. They get him young. Well Jesus. She will be. So. And already at level cap, so well done. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> no, she has. She's a mom of a thirteen-year-old. And Wait, no, also, okay. I was just a thirteen-month-old. Yeah, no, we oh okay. My God. Um, anyway, <laughs> I hope this. Shit literally says anyway. Anyway, I hope this present makes you happy. It does. Uh, you truly have the fierce strength of a dragon, but also a heart of gold. Thank you very much. Uh, I know stories suck, and they really mess with every part of you. They do, and people can be blah 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 crappy, but. Be cool and know that so many people are behind you. And thank you so much for the wonderful words. Thank I really appreciate you. it. Thanks. That's so sweet. Um, and somebody also uh, sent this um, incredible Final Fantasy Type Zero oh. Vermilion Bird pin. It, uh, it was Vorak, wasn't it? I believe it was Vorak. It was and Vorak? It, this is from Vorak. Oh. This is incredible. Um, dude, thank you so much for this. Um, uh, I, I, uh, she saw the reaction uh, when I opened the box, and uh, uh, Matthew knows that that uh, being a part of this 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 whole thing uh, means a lot to me um, as as a, as a nerd and and, and, a, and an actor. Um, so thank you so much for this um, and uh, for being uh, a badass in your own right. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and. Uh, should I just do the lead into the thing now? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, I, because of you, I'm going to the the thing I was talking about where I'm going to announce whatever. Um, guys, E3 was amazing. Yes. yes. Was amazing. E3 One of the awesome. things I was very excited about was the announcement of the Final Fantasy VII remake. Um, I'm. Um, as you know, doing this and, and, and being nine in Type Zero was a big deal. And when we were watching E3, we freaked. I think I tweeted yeah, we were that, that picture of her freaking out. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to do something that's kind of bonkers, and I'm going to challenge the entire internet. Um, for uh, a few weeks ago, I, I, I periscoped myself balancing my dice, and a bunch of them weren't great. So I have a lot of dice I was just going to cut up and throw away that I've been using for years. Instead, <clears throat> every 50 tweets I see at Square Enix saying cast Orion Akaba as Cloud, Sid, or, thir- or Red 13, I will personally pick one of the random 50 and send you one of my dice with a handwritten letter thanking you and telling you why it's so important to me. Every 50 tweets. And it's weird because it seems like Tiffa might be sitting right next to me or maybe across from me. Um, and is that Sephiroth right over there, guys? It's not me, it's him. I think definitely not me. I think that might be the case. Yeah. No, it's so, you. So every fifty totally. tweets, I see it's Square Enix. That's what's going down. And I'll remind you guys every two weeks. Yeah. Um, and maybe here in two weeks, maybe I'll give you some sort of incentive. So, yeah. thank you for this because you just inspired some crazy uh, uh, behavior from myself. So yeah. <laughs> every fifty <laughs> tweets, guys, at Square Enix. We want to get that so bad. There you go. You're gonna be in that game, right? We're gonna be in that game. Yeah. I'm gonna be too. You put the nerd work on it and the critters out there, and Square Enix will have to uh, listen. That's uh, that, that's my deal. Because there's like 4,000 of them now. Yeah, so, there's like 4,000 of them. It's great. So thank yeah. you. Not nervous. Tight, tight. <laughs> tight, tight. Guys, you're ridiculous. You guys are thank so, you so ridiculous. Much. This and and, and which, whichever one of my siblings sent me a letter, <laughs> I might have. What? Wow. To to wh- whichever one of Percy's many siblings. I haven't gotten to the end of the letter yet, but <laughs> but Percy's family has apparently been trying to contact. Is that a wax seal? That is a wax seal, yes, that is a wax seal. Yes, that is a wax seal. That's and, a wax seal. And a letter that I'm going to be reading tonight. That is a seven page letter. I'm very excited. That's amazing. <laughs> Nuts. I'm, I'm you guys are crazy. This is insane. Our life is weird. Yeah. It's super weird. It's so weird. <laughs> I love this it. Is this is like a so amazing. Thank you. 
Thank you guys for tuning in to Critical Role and yeah. the rest of Thursday's so programming. Uh, we'll be Love back you. tomorrow here on Geek and Sundry with So You Don't Have To, where Hector Navarro and Erica Ishii play Yay. the weirdest games we can find, uh, so you don't have to, or maybe you'll want to. I don't know. That's up to you and how weird you are. And then after that, we have Gather Your Party with live music, board games, and uh, Just Dance. So tune in tomorrow. Uh, from 4 to 10 p.m. We'll be here rocking out. Thank you guys for yeah. watching. And we really do love you so much. So this much. has been like the most inspiring a, thing that I think... There's a coke can blocking him, but Liam's saying goodbye too. Yes, this is the most inspiring thing I think pretty much any of us have been a part of. So, yeah. thank you. You're amazing. Have a wonderful night, guys. We'll see you soon night. next week. Thank we you so much. Love you all. Bye. Bye.